So aside from rest, relaxation, and a lot of work, uh, another reason we bought the farm was because my wife owns a company called All Things Elderberry, where she makes elderberry elixir and various other elderberry products. So not only are we building a house on the property, but this is the field over here with over 70 rows of elderberry plants, over 9,000 elderberry plants on this field right now. So let me take you up there. Let me show you what it's all about. So instead of buying elderberries from somebody else, we thought, ah, let's just grow the elderberries ourselves. That no big deal. So here we are up here on the big field. It's about five plus acres of elderberries. As I said, 70 rows, over 9,000 plants. So the rows start over here and go all the way down. So last October, all these plants were put in. Now, right now, they look like, they look like little sticks. But come late July, come August, these sticks will be about yay high, full of elderberries. So there are a bunch of different varieties of elderberry in the field here. Uh, this is called a Pocahontas. So this will eventually be here, maybe even higher. So come July, August, uh, we'll need tiny hands to come pick these, pick these elderberries, put them in buckets for processing. But for the time being, we need to mulch every single row, every single row. The mulch is gonna go onto the, onto the rows to prevent weeds from uh, sprouting up and killing the elderberry plants. So yeah. That's the next big thing, mulching. The great battles of our time, man versus nature, intellect versus instinct, burrito versus butthole. Here in this fortress of solitude, we reflect and ponder tough questions about life and ourselves. And the toughest question of all may be, what do I wish I could accomplish before I die? Mine eyes have seen the glory. The proverbial bucket list. Why is it called that? Do you have one? Should you have one? If so, what should be on it? Let's dive into those questions today on the number two show. You know, they've always said to think outside the box, but here, inside this box, we've had some of the most profound reflections. They say inspiration strikes in the most unexpected places. Sir Isaac Newton, an apple tree. Archimedes, a bathtub. Me, well, let's just say there's a reason I'm broadcasting from a bathroom stall. The bathroom. More than just tiles and toiletries, a vault of solace, a chamber of reflection. Ever think about how much history, philosophy, and yes, even strategy have been contemplated in spaces just like this? I'm pretty sure when Bill Shakespeare wrote to be or not to be, he carved it with the quill on a bathroom stall before he put pen to paper. How many of you have had those aha moments in the restroom? Think about it. You're all alone, free from distractions, and suddenly the answer to that problem you've been mulling over becomes as clear as the bathroom tiles. Recent studies, and by studies I mean a quick poll of a few of my friends, reveal that bathrooms are like unsung brainstorming chambers of the household. I'm pretty sure if we placed whiteboards in showers, we would have solved world hunger by now and probably perfected teleportation. But today we are switching gears to contemplate life's big picture, the journey. Which brings us to today's main topic. Follow me. Hey! All right. Okay. Here we are. Mount up. Let's Mount go. up. We have a lot to do today, guys. Yes. We have a long day. We're going to be together. Yay. I love We're going to be together. Yeah. Are we going to lunch later? I feel like we should. Don't glare at me. I thought of that, actually. Did you? Okay. I oh. brought my lunch with me. Uh, uh, I thought you were going to do something. Let's do a lunch. I had Joya's at a, at a business lunch yesterday, and I was like, yeah. All right. Okay. This is great. wonder what we would have, happen tomorrow uh, when Riz gets us lunch. We yeah. have Riz Show Live rehearsals after the show today. We're going to be downtown, or not downtown, down yeah, on Del Mar. Half town. 1130? 
half down. Yeah, yeah that's when the trolley starts. <laughs> Can I just so. say this? Hear me out. No, we're going to get there at 11.30, and we're not going to have... Everybody's going to be getting there. I think we should go to lunch first, fill our lunch bellies. first. And then go. Get Let the <laughs> promo team get set up. Let everybody load in, and then we arrive, and then they're ready for us. Okay. But we need to be part of the... We need to be part of the load in. I know, but yeah. I'm going to be there for... I have I have power tools in my car. I have, I'm going to be there all damn day. So I'm not going to have time to leave and go. We're going to run through this twice, and then we out. Okay. <laughs> How is the dressing we room out. situation going to work, by the way? Because we have John Hughes experience has a dressing room. Yeah. And then will we all cram in one? Or do you, does the queen get his do own? Do you need your own dressing room? No. Do you? No. Okay. I don't know how it's going to work. There's three dressing rooms up top. Two with the bathroom. Yeah, I would I would have thought that you had your own you have your own thing. Okay. Like you have your own room cool. to do whatever you want. That's where the chicks will be. Yeah. Yeah, you have the the chick room. Cool. You could do what you want in there. I'm going to go full out. I'm going to get some roses. Put them in the dressing room. Wow. You know? Yeah, from, it's funny. It's, it's my wife asked me. She goes, "What's the dressing room situation?" I go, "I'm, I'm learn, we learn's going to get her own thing." Yeah, it's so cool. Like you'll have your own, your own room. What you, know, you got to put makeup on, whatever you want to do. Yeah, many outfit changes. Yeah, there's going to be a point where we have to change outfits. A quick change. Oh. And uh, we'll have to retire up to our, you know, to our dressing rooms, and you know, you have your own. Yep. Okay. Cool. No further questions. I was asked what we want in our, you know, what we want in there. A writer? Yeah. What'd you say? Water. Cool. <laughs> I guess I will bring my own liquor. Well, I was uh, taken aback like, oh, nobody ever asked. Nobody's ever asked that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I guess if they never ask, we never answer, mm -hmm. they never buy. Hmm. I just said water. I said, just make sure there's water. Uh, you know, Yingling is a proud sponsor of, done, the, uh, of the show. Should have done my move, man. The socks. Socks. Fresh socks. <sighs> it's the move. Now, listen, we're not on tour. We're not on tour. I have we socks at home. After this experience no. tomorrow. You're yeah. right. No. You're I right. take this it's on the right. road. No. People now I feel wellness. dumb for writing concubine. Mm. Got a, got a Seems big like announcement. you guys weren't as demanding <laughs> as me. Oh. Concubine. Making yes, me look LB. bad at the pageant. <laughs> used to be... Uh, used to Who be, ordered the concubine? Used to be water, booze, bread, peanut butter, jelly, chips, salsa. Thank you. Thank you. Did you hear promo Matthew say, pull me aside the other day and go, hey, man, don't get too liquored up? Did he really? Oh, he yeah. He talk? gave you the I got the We've talk. We've done this a couple Why I dozen times. I got, I got the talk. <laughs> really? Yeah. Have you gotten all liquored up before? Our promo He's director. Always, he always gets a little loose. Well, yeah. 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 I'm never out of control. Not once. Not Thank once. Thank you, Moon. I got you back, man. Thank you. We have to do a shot before we go out there. Of course we do. Of what is the key here? Shh, whatever you're bringing. Okay. Water. Well, water. You know, water. Whatever. Well, no. Water and pre-workout no, for me. No fireball. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever you're bringing, except for that. I'll bring my high-end stuff and my low-end stuff. I'll bring something, too. No, I, I, I promised our promo director, Matthew, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to promise I'm not going to drink anything. Right. No, you always, I'm not going to get sloppy. I always, I've, yeah, I've always, always kept a, it together. You always had a cocktail. Well, I think he may be referring to the birthday show. Oh, I, at, yeah, I missed that. Park this at last music time? Park. I did hear you. Oh, were we little, had a good uh, time. I was a disaster. <laughs> but, but I all, but that's what that all was for. obligations were fulfilled. Yeah, I was going to say mm -hmm. every. You, we did a champagne shower after the. Oh yeah, I did everything. I was uh -huh. good. And you oh. bought everyone at the music park a drink. That yeah, nice. rats on me. And my wife's like, no. <laughs> Get the credit Sold card everything. Out. No. <laughs> no, so the plan is today, we'll do this show, uh, go down to Del Mar. Uh huh. Okay, if you guys want to do lunch before, something quick. Yeah, something quick. There's Soul Taco. There's something quick. I want to just park the car at the pageant and then whatever's in. And just walk. Okay. Whatever's and in. Okay, the that's fine with me, man. They still got a pita pit across the street? That place yep. is great. Yep. I love me a pita pit. You guys want to do pita pit? Let's do it. Sure. I love a pita <laughs> pit on a Friday. You're just like, right oh, that's, corner. Not, that's not going to cost That's a great they, spot, yeah, too. Are they going to be open, though? I don't know. At 11? I don't know. I bet. Yeah, Noodle House doesn't open until... Or, no, 11 they, they, they should be open by then. Yeah, I'm just going there. 
Yeah, oh, okay. Let no one. I offered to buy lunch, and you got like I'm gonna go go rogue. You're not going. You're not gonna pass up Nudo House, are you? Probably not. We'll probably go <laughs> there. <ironic>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get the shroom down. Go there. Yeah. yeah. I get the Hebrew hammer. Oh, that's my, uh, <laughs> I'm down I love for that we know the names. Hebrew hammer. Uh, yeah, I got the, when what I go to Nudo House, I get the Hebrew hammer. What is in that? It's a chicken. Like it's a chicken. Uh, like a chicken broth. Hebrew. Dude, hammer. it's delicious. Nudo House. <sighs> I might have to try a new one. Oh, Dude, the Hebrew hammer is the jam. Hebrew hammer, yeah, that sounds great. Chicken paytan? Pe sure. Sh show you chicken thighs, menma. Yeah, the chicken thighs are amazing. Ajitsuki tamago, bok choy, mm -hmm. black garlic. Yes, please. Yep. Nudo house? Yep. Done. Fine. Sorry, Peter Pitt, I love you. Uh, maybe Peter Pitt tomorrow. Time. But not like Because we're going to have like some, we're going to have like two hours in between the end of our VIP thing mm -hmm. and the show start. Right. Surprised to see a P Well, I guess... I I'm probably not going to eat anything. I'll probably be either having diarrhea or vomiting. Same. I guess there's a college down there, right? <clears throat> because Peter Pitt was always next to colleges. It was always like college town. Anytime I got out of the bus, I was like, oh, college town, there's got to be a Peter Pitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the standard. It was the embassy of, of college towns, if you will. Yeah. But I guess there's a college... We went to the Peter place before... Uh, uh, punk Rock Christmas last time. Peter Pitt is closed, y'all, says Ginny in the chat. What? Say what? Uh, well, well, there's a, there is a place a across the street that we went to. It's next to whatever the new yeah. um, putting place is. Permanently closed. Wow. What's the place that Joe Edwards opened up across the oh, street? Oh, yeah, it's right across. It's like the putt cosmic, putt. Yeah, it's cosmic, a cosmic golf. Cosmic golf. golf. Yeah. There's a place. There's like a Greek place right next door. That's not the Peter Pit? Like a, no, Peter Pit is a chain. It's like a college. Oh, like then a I'm talking about another. Oh, they, they got a My Friend? Like when you go in there, hello, like, my hello, my friend. Yes. What will you have, my friend? Here you go, my friend. Right across the street. Thank you, my friend. Right across the street. Hmm. Yeah, we call those my friends. Hello, my friend. Those are the best. Very exciting. We got a new, we got a new my friend across from Delmar Hall. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't look new, but it was delicious. Cool. Things are going well. Yeah. I think this is going to be. I great, had a great uh, I had a Yudo and fries. Delicious. Euro House. Is that yeah? That's what it's called. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking Pita Pit as in like uh, a Greek place. Oh, right. No, no, no. You know, it's, those are my friends. Hello, my friends. <laughs> well, I said, I know Learn Dragon ass today. I know uh, Rave Dragon ass today. <laughs> nah. We're good, dude. Well, Learn last night was at uh, John Hewlett's, our, our dear friend. Yep. John Hewlett had a, uh, <clears throat> had a roast. Yes. Life, death, and other scary things at the Sheldon. Yeah, I, from what I'm hearing, great success. It's a cool place, isn't it? It's a very cool place. Uh, walk up, I think it was sold out. Dang, um, that's great. John had a great time. He felt the love. It went long. Rafe and I did not leave until after midnight. What? So, that's hey. why, why didn't you just leave? Well, because my I had to get up there, and my roast was supposed to be at 9, 10, and then they were running about an hour behind. Oh, my God. So oh. I did not get up on stage until 10, 10, and then I How really, did you get that far behind? Uh, you know how this stuff goes. Like, people just are long-winded. They're not thinking of time. It goes by faster than you think. And then there were a couple of segments at the, fr at the front that were bulk-heavy, where those probably could have been cut down, to be honest, and that weren't very relevant to what was going on. You think you think radio experienced radio Savage. people would feel out the time and like not let it slip, you know, right? Because you've been on a timer your whole exactly. career. But also, like majority of people stayed. Like some people, you know, after ten thirty, I said uh, people started getting up and <clears throat> leaving in the crowd. Yeah. But majority of people stayed. And man, this was like a reunion for. Did you feel you like know, you had to stay? No, I felt like because I told the people that were running, I go, hey, after my segment, I'm out. And then um, they understood and they were fine with of that. Of course, yeah. You're you're a morning show person. But then. <laughs> One of my, my old producer, Carl, the intern, he was coming up and I really wanted to, I, he was there and we were having a good time backstage and I'm like, oh my God, I want to see Carl. You so can I see Carl anytime. Him. No. So I stayed for him and then there was one more segment after him and I was like, I'm just going to stay. So yeah, you're just having a good time. Out. Having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It was it, great. It is different though. It shows you like, uh, you know, you've been on stage a ton now, but, uh. You know, radio folks like they get they get the timer and they like they're really good at, at timing like this, but it's to a wall, mm -hmm. and you put them on a stage with like with uh, real uh, feedback, and it's a very very uh, different. You got radio people together that love to hear scene. each other talk. Yeah, <laughs> God. But, but you know what I'm saying? It's a different scene. Stage that stage and this stage are yeah. two completely different things. It is. It's all in person, which is different than what we do every day. Oh, cool! Room full of radio people. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And they're listeners. Yeah. <laughs> they're listeners. Awesome. <laughs> who I will say. Awesome. 
the percentage of blue hair in the room was high. Oh, yeah. And I was like, these people aren't going to make it home. I don't know how they're even hanging in here yeah. right now. They're all retired. They've never felt so young. Just sleeping in, man. Everybody was sleeping in. That makes Except sense. Except for you two. Yeah, everybody's retired. There are KC crazies, though, for real. I got a dose. I've never been at a live show where, I mean, I kind of felt like I was at a... <laughs> she is right. I, thought, I'm, I don't remember who was the first lady that went. Uh, Joy Gridnick, who uh, is the wife of Ron Stevens who put the thing on. Yeah, which is great. Uh, I didn't know what I was watching when I first sat down because she basically did a Seinfeld slideshow of her vacation. I don't know what it had mm. to do with John Hewlett. Okay. It had nothing to do with John. Here we are she in the uh, Tahiti. Yeah, I like I was watching. Yeah, it pretty much. She's like, here's a sign. From Ron and I went Europe. to the Grand Canyon There's actually last, a, uh, yes. last spring. Uh -huh. She's like, here's a town in Germany. It's called Effing Germany. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> the hey. next slide, and I was like, what the hell does this have to do with... I mean, it was funny, but I was just like, oh, this is already off the rails. I don't even know well, what... Well, Joy's off the rails, and everybody knows that. So she was on Casey in the 70s, and she and her husband, Ron, I mean, they made a huge living. They went out to L.A. and were comedy writers for TV shows in the yeah. 70s. And to this day are like... Part of St. Louis and, sure. you know, very successful. But, great. but the thing about Joy that is so great and I just admire is she just does not care. She, get up there, she got up there to... Well, she obviously didn't care about you having to get up early. My style person. Yeah. She obviously didn't care about the <laughs> run of Showtime. Well, I don't no, know who this I, is and I, I love it. how much time they actually designated for her. She took all of it. And that's fine. But then I think that backed everything up because... Everybody else went long as well. And, and again, this was the like kind of a roast of John Hewlett, who's been on the radio for 400 years. Yep. Casey, uh, the voice of the Cardinals for God knows how long. 36, 30, 30, yeah. Five, yeah, seven maybe. 35 plus years. But, uh, you know, well deserving of a of a night of honor. Uh-huh. And yeah. who was the special guest? Everybody's wondering. Uh, J.C. Corcoran. Whoa! So the they got him! The controversy there is J.C. lives in Florida, and he obviously has been fired from every radio station he's ever worked at, and he burns bridges, and he's been really butthurt in the past that he's not been invited to Casey events. And so, but the thing is, the ones that he has... Been, hurt. The ones that he has been invited to, he always, like, throws... All the managers <clears throat> under the bus, and it turns in it turns into something else than it needs to be. Last time I saw that dude, we were out, and uh, he came up to me and just started trashing. Oh yeah, our general manager. Yes, I go. All right, I, you know, it's what? a bad look. I'm uh, I'm out. Yeah, and so anyway, they had asked him, and he of course wanted to do something crazy, and then he said, "I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it." And then he did a like David Letterman uh, top ten list, which he kind of ripped off of Dave back in the '80s for his own show. And he did that for John, and it, it was cute. And it, it was just very quick. And I thought that was cool of him because he didn't, he, he wasn't he didn't mean. He didn't have to. Yeah, he didn't have to, and he wasn't mad, and he was celebrating John, which is what he should have done. Well, glad you all had a good time. Thank you. You know, Rafe, uh, and, and, and full disclosure, Rafe, uh, you know, I'd wondered, hey, do you want to you wanna go over there <laughs> together? And I said no. I tried. It's during the week. Well, and, <laughs> and I got to tell you. There was a moment about 10 o'clock that I was like, God, I'm glad he didn't come. He would oh. want to strangle me right now. Oh, yeah. Because I was like, I think uh, the right thing to do would be to go to honor John Hewlett. And you're like, John Hewlett will understand that he should have done this on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. I said, if this was Friday, no problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why they did it. Thursday night? Well, it's availability day? of the Well, sure. availability of the Sheldon. Sure. Mm -hmm. It was a great show. Yep. It was well, very wonderful. funny, but I was saying like the there are Casey crazies because I was like I've never seen people just interrupt the show so much. Yeah, to start talking to, to him. to just be like John. Remember that one time you fell off the balcony? <laughs> just like some guy, <laughs> like in the middle, like yeah, in the talking? middle of an interview, dude. Just like some random guy in Ford and be like, "Hey, John." <laughs> Remember when I met you in the Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell's it's going on, dude? <laughs> These people think they're yelling at their TV. I'm like, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they know that. I think they think they're at home listening to their radio, like yelling at the... And like even when Probably they... smoking grass. That's oh, what yeah. I'm... Yeah. It was also you know, funny, was like... Uh, Old timers. And drinking, man. There was a moment where his wife and daughter stood up. And they are, don't, they are beautiful women. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a touching moment where he's like, John's beautiful family. Ruth is his wife's name. Yes. He's like, Ruth, stand up. Or Olivia. I don't remember what the other two Abigail, are. Sophia. Stand up. He recognized. The daughter stood up, and the, guy, the old guy's up in the balcony. They're like, 
Oh, they're like, yeah, they're like, Cat oh, calling his geez. daughters at a live oh, show. And I was like, these people are insane. I kind of loved it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a hoot and nanny. Well, it's it's great because Casey has cultivated that culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you feel like you're part of the radio station. Much like, you know, our weirdos. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of you yesterday, actually, because I was thinking about this. And I go, one day you're going to have a roast. One day. There's going to mm. be a long time coming. It's going to be, I don't know. 30 years in? I'm probably not going to do that. Oh, we're going to do it. No, that's 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 not my style. What? He actually said this in the kitchen this morning. When we were talking about the show, he goes, yeah, that's not something I'll ever do. Oh, no, 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 you don't get a choice. He actually oh, said. Oh, yeah, I'll no show. He basically, in, in, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, Riz's usual line is never again. This time it was just never. Never. Yeah, let's not do that. You wouldn't want a retrospective of your career <laughs> no. one day? No, he's already been there. Everybody wants that. No, not everybody. All right. In all honesty, I don't want it. All right, well, you, the surprise party one day, you have no idea what's happening. You're going to walk in. I don't want it. <laughs> no, no, I don't want it. Don't, although you, today you is... You know, I got your back. Wait, he just that. said although. I, <laughs> we're good. We got today no is World Compliment Day. Nice. Hey, there we go. March 1st is World Compliment Day. Hey, you deserve one of those things. Yeah. But we're not doing it. It's great. Yeah. There's, today, your, there's your compliment. Today, World Compliment Day, it's a global initiative to create the most positive day in the world. So it's all about positivity, guys, today. You ready for it? Let's go. On the count of three. And to think you you blew all the positivity yesterday. You know what I mean? You were just like hanging out. I was out so compliment. positive yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of it. Do you, you have any left? No. None left in the tank. All right, man. Let's do it. You know my favorite compliment? What? Is a backhanded compliment. Hmm. Yeah, like I hated when you and Rafe started on the show at first, but now you guys have like... Kind of grown up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That, that's the one that we get the most, I would yeah. say. Cool. Yeah, I tried to list some of my favorite backhanded compliments. It didn't say what kind of compliment, you know, World You're Compliment right? Day. It could yeah, be anything, yeah. could be anything. Sure. It's just sometimes the way people... <sighs> yeah, I don't listen to the radio, but... Oh, that's always the greatest yeah. starter. Like, what, what, that yep. I never listen to... I hate the radio, but... Okay. Thanks for listening. I heard your show's really funny. I don't listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to the radio. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You look great. Have you lost weight? That's a backhand a back compliment. I heard of that Heard that last night, actually. Somebody came up to me and goes, hey, have you lost weight? And I go, I guess, yes, I have. Thank oh, you. See, I don't see that as a backhand, backhand compliment. I see that as a, uh, a tone-deaf thought aloud. How about, oh, your skin looks so much better. <laughs> that that's a that's probably a stinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look amazing for your age. Ooh, you've got uh, an exotic look. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I yeah. like that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I forgot my, my wife. My wife had somebody come up to her and ask, and this was the wording: "You're so pretty. Are you ethnic?" Oh, uh -huh. and she was like. Uh, like I mean, she. I don't think she even came up with an answer because she was just so. Like, no, I'm Catholic. She was so yeah confused by what that meant or could have meant from this person. You look great, fit but not too muscular. <laughs> 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 Again, like it's it's not like a backhanded compliment. It's just a ton, yeah. it's just toned up. Ah, it's uh, super yeah, toned yeah. up. Yeah, hey, thanks. Huh? I you think, look great uh, for just having a baby. Yeah, those are the kind of comments certain antivirus will give us every once in a while. Ants? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's an old ant. Wow, you always manage to surprise me with your fashion choices. Mm. <laughs> I've heard fearless. That my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you are fearless with your experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would take that as a compliment. I like that. Like You're, we like the whole, remember the whole the, the reason we call everybody weirdos is cuz to me that's a compliment. I think that's cool. And when, when we were doing the podcast, remember I used to do an intro early on in the days, and I, and I would say, like, you know, what's up, weirdos? Or, you know, hey, crazy people, or whatever it was. Those are, like, silly terms of endearment yeah, for, yeah. for my life. And we got an email that was so angry that I was calling him a weirdo Yeah. that it was, like, it made a big deal. And I was like, what? And I, I, got, I got upset, and I defended myself. I was like, yo, that's a, that's a term of endearment. Mm. I like being weird. I right. want to be weird. Well, let's turn it into a positive, which that's we have. What, that's what we did. Which we have. Oh, last night, Lauren, your presentation was memorable. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're so unique. Mm. 
Yeah, I admire your ability to think outside of the box, even if it means occasionally veering off track. But, hey, it was great. Whoa. That one was uh, personal. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, your singing voice is mm, distinctive. Yeah, very different. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Ray, if your sense of humor is uh, certainly one of a kind. Yeah, I get a lot of that dry. You don't ever know how to take that. I love your dry sense of humor. And I'm just like, okay. I think that's great. I think that's great. Anything uh, that makes you stand out, this is a little bit, you know, left or right. I don't think center. people know what that means, though. I think it's a catch all term for, like, yeah, yeah, not my sense right. of humor. You, you know meet, what I mean? Yeah, you need to meet my dad before you start. Uh, defining dry humor. Like he's, he's a dry dude. Yeah, my humor's wet, brother. So wet. <laughs> Sopping wet. My humor is moist. Oh, man. My humor's gushing. My dad's bro. saying things that, can make, that, that makes, the, that makes the, the moment awkward so he can laugh yeah, at it. Daddy, about. we're awake now. Nah. My Boy, dad says things so he can laugh about it an hour later. Oh, you have such a bold personality. It's impossible to ignore you in the room. You really make your presence felt. Ah, oh, cool. And you want to turn What? <laughs> what did he mean by what that? Do mean by, what do you mean by that? Mm. Your cooking is certainly unique. It's amazing how you could turn ordinary ingredients into <laughs> unforgettable culinary adventures. Right, Scott? Yeah. All right. That's a nice one. So, yes, World Compliment Day, but let's make everything backhand of compliments. <laughs> okay. All right. I get this one a lot, too, where somebody will be like, Man, I saw you nine years ago at Helium. You've gotten way better. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Yes, technically that is a nice thing to say. It is a nice but thing to say. You're also basically saying like, man, you, you sucked nine years ago. You know what I mean? Like there's an implication there of like, whew, it was rough last time I saw you. And you've actually. Yeah, you don't have to throw in that part. Yeah, you can just <laughs> like say. Like you can leave that part out. I had a fun at your show. You're hey, very you're funny. great. Yeah, that's it. You can leave out the other part. Yeah, that's the same thing with, with this show. A lot of the listeners here, and I love you all. Just kidding, not all of you, but most of you. And um, like even when we did the wrestling thing, we did a meet and greet at the wrestling thing, and some guy, in, you know, guy in sweatpants with like three oil stains on it, was like, <laughs> "I love you, Riz. Where's Moon? God dang, he's not here. I love him, King Scott. Learn, you're my favorite." That he got to me, and he goes, "You had to grow on me." Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I was like. You didn't have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I love you now. But, man, you had to grow on me. And I go, yeah, man. You basically paid 20 bucks to a charity to come in here and give me a backhanded compliment, yeah. which is hilarious to me. Hey, to him, though, you guys went on that journey together. We mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you went on that journey together. Well, when I autographed this poster, I just said, I'll sign this when you've grown on me. And I just look, <laughs> I don't know if he ever looked at it or not. <laughs> man, you're like a fungus. Yeah, man. You really grew which up, Which I man. get. It's, I'm an acquired taste. I understand that. No, you just I don't think, have to tell me that. I think to that guy, he thought he was genuinely saying something He did. Nice. I think people have lost the ability to be kind and just give a compliment. I think that that has something to do with, like, real time. Mm -hmm. I think we get to, like, write everything in a text now, and we get to look at it and edit it and think about it. So, like, when the filter, when it has to be a real time, I have to say something to you and... Personal, human-to-human -human interaction. Yeah. No, no edit. It's coming out. First draft. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> no one has a good first draft anymore. And sometimes you, you got to just let it roll off your back. But it is hard. No, sometimes. people sometimes forget, like, hey, human interaction. We're not in front of a keyboard. Yeah. I'm not sure they ever did. Somebody said that to me the other day in the hallway here. They go, is it my imagination or is there less of you than before? Oh. And I go, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I've lost a little weight. Is that what you mean? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just could have just said that. And I was hey, like, man, looking good. Yeah. <laughs> lost some weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's just an interesting phrasing. That's it. Uh, Lauren, as a woman, has anybody ever said this to you? The answer is you've yes. Got a, you've got a great smile. Use it. No. Ooh. Wow. Actually, <laughs> wow, right? No, no. Use it. Nobody's ever told me that, hey, you need to smile, smile more. more. I, and so I have friends that have had that be told to them, but I haven't. And I think it's because I'm always laughing like an idiot, you know, and like, I am actually always smiling. So, no. I've had people when I waited tables, because Moon and I have talked about this, a concentration fit. My concentration face is not a pleasant one. So if I'm busy, I probably have like resting, you know, a-hole face or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many people 
Like them, and I've heard people do this to servers, and it sucks. And if you do this to them, please stop. They'll be like, well, "You don't like your job, do you?" Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "You just look like you hate your job." And I'm just like, "Like tables, I'm not even waiting on, you know." And I'm, I'm like back at the thing, like trying to remember 35 beer orders that I just took. Mm. I'm like, You're "No, like, man, hey. actually, I." I'm having a pretty good time. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm, I'm, that I'm I in wasn't. The zone. Been here nine hours. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm been, I've been on my feet in a pair of Chuck Taylors for nine hours, and they're screaming. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember 35 different table orders. I'm sorry that I'm not grinning ear to ear. At the time, you happened to glance at me, you know, yeah. and it's like, but people, I feel like, and it happened to girls I worked with all the time too. I feel like when people are waiting tables, if they're not. And I get that there's hospitality and you got to be on, but like, you don't have to comment. And I have people do that a lot when I when I used to wait tables. They didn't tell me to smile, but they acknowledged I was not smiling. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Sir, my feet are bleeding. Uh, been here nine hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I'm not uh, the ray of sunshine you hoped I'd be. Right. Well, anyway, just be nice to each other today, okay? Fine. <laughs> That's it. Riz style or not. Riz style or not. Today is March 1st, guys. We made it. We're here. It's March 1st. We had the extra bonus day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, March, let's get into it. What do we have to look forward to in March? Moon's birthday and my birthday. Mm, both cool things. Yep. And my brother's birthday. Eight days apart. March 20th, right? Yeah, on the 20th, my wife's on the 19th. Cat the dog's birthday? No, mm -hmm. no. You Callie cool. the dog's birthday? Callie the dog's what? birthday? My wedding anniversary? Wedding sprang. Anniversary? First sprang. day of spring. Well, yeah. all right. So we'll we'll we'll, go, we'll start with daylight saving time. That starts up again Sunday, March 10th. Next Sunday, you jerks. Yeah. Sorry. So you'll lose an hour of sleep that night, but we will be staying light. We'll be staying uh light out later. Okay. Uh, the Oscars also going down March 10th. Jimmy Kimmel hosting. March Madness begins on the 19th, which is a Tuesday. Men's tournament championship game is on April 8th. Uh, the women's tournament final is set for April 7th, so get your brackets ready. Okay. And we'll be opening day March 28th this year. Cool. Cardinals in town. Is it? Is it? See. Are they opening the season at home? No, it's they're in April. The season opener for home okay. opener for us is in April. Yeah, April 4th. April 4th. All May, 30 teams April will be playing 4th be on the 28th. Uh, in movies, Dune 2 opens in theaters today. Oh, man. What's the tomatoes on that? Um, you know, I was just looking at the Spaceman tomatoes, uh, which is the Adam Sandler thing. Let's see. I'm going to watch Dune 2. 1 tonight. I heard a review last night, no spoilers coming, that said it's a near perfect movie. That's how I hear people. Except the one time. thing. At the end. Yeah, that's when they brought in the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, boys and girls, Dune too. the audience score and the critic score are the same at 95. 95%. That that's seems good. good. Oh, I haven't seen Dune 1 either. I need or we'll the watch Dune or It's anything. great, man. Yeah, 1 uh, is awesome. I it's remember, fun. like, uh, I didn't skim the book. I read, like, a like a shortened version or something because the book is... Pff, it's a dictionary. It's this, it's this big. Damn. And the original movie from the 70s was staying in... Um, yeah, and uh, Pat uh, Patrick Stewart's in it, I think, and a couple other people. I remember absorbing that as a kid, like two or three times. That and Krull, I loved those movies. Mm. Uh, this, like, dude, I know you you still haven't seen the first one. It's good. There's a lot missing, but I don't know how many parts they're planning on doing. But I really enjoyed the movie. Just as I don't know. I'm saying yeah. I, I want to see this, this Dune Two is getting so much hype. I want to see it in the theater, dude. Seeing so seeing Shai Halud one tonight in in this modern way. Uh, it was like goosebumpy for me. Also heard a review. Do not see it in IMAX because there's so much going on sound wise that it will mud it up. Whoa. Mm, heard that review really? last night too. Okay. Yeah. So Dune 2 out today. Kung Fu Panda 4. That's March 8th. Uh, the new Godzilla King Kong movie comes out the 29th. Uh, the Roadhouse remake. Oh, Heck yeah. yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. It's Amazon March 21st. Amazon. Really? Yep. I've been seeing a lot of work done for that. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been pushing that one I'm down, in all I'm corners down of, the, of the internet. Uh, let me see here. Uh, season 11 of The Masked Singer on TV, uh, March 6th. Uh, the game show Password returns to NBC on March 12th. Season 20 of Grey's Anatomy. We brought it back. On March 14th. Uh, as far as brand new shows go, the drama miniseries Apples Never Fall. It's Peacock on the 14th. The World War II drama We Were the Lucky Ones. That hits Hulu 
March 28th, and the holidays. St. Patrick's Day, the 17th. Oh, it's yeah. on a Sunday this year, so don't be surprised if your co-workers call on a Monday. I will be, because I'm Irish. Even though you couldn't come up with Ireland yesterday on European Let's not bring up the past moon. <laughs> uh, Purim is the 23rd. <laughs> Easter is the 31st. Uh, also, National Cereal Day, March 7th. Pi Day, or St. Louis Day, is March 14th. Corn Dog Day is on the 16th. Sweet. National Puppy Day is the 23rd. Aww. And the 25th is International Waffle Day. So, I love March. Me too, man. Me too. March is here. Welcome. We're already three months in to 2024. Well, and, you know, we we had planned this ratio live thing out. You know, before before the new year, you know, we knew the date, and I, you know, I've had March second circled on my calendar, mm -hmm. and my God, it's tomorrow. My God, hey, you know who really had a bad week? Um, headline: Man has penis bitten off and eaten by pet dog. Uh oh. At least <sighs> probably should have warned you about that headline. At least it wasn't a wild dog. Did the dog cut it off, or the dog just participated well, in the devouring? Well, there are some questions here. I know you guys want to hear the story. Yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. Was it a weenie dog? Or? Ah, oh, yeah. they said it was a dog about the size of a Jack Russell. Mm. About the size of a Jack Russell? So some Come on, sort Rick, of, you're better than that. Some sort a of terrier. Dog. Well, I gave Scott 10 seconds. I know. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> in you. Germany. Man suffers horrifying ordeal when his pet dog about the size of a Jack Russell bit off his penis and ate it. So neighbors... Called the cops. This happened early Tuesday morning because the dog just wouldn't stop barking. And this is at 2 a.m. Dog won't stop barking. 2 a.m. Neighbors annoyed. Get the cops over there. Cops get to the house. They hear pain groans coming from inside. They break down the door. They find the 66-year-old guy oh, no. in there. And the dog's there. Police quickly realized this man is in danger. Rush him to the hospital. Not Now, here's the... Here's the crazy part. Neither the man's penis or, quote, an instrument of the crime has been recovered from the scene so far. Oh. What, did the dog bury the knife? What's happening? Oh, like, what man. do you mean? Well, so, and, and here's the thing. The victim has been in a coma. They put the, they put the guy in a coma. Oh, my Golly. gosh. And they got to wait for the and dog he, to poop it out. He has been unable to provide information to the cops like they, he's not answering questions because the man's in a coma. Like, they put him in an artificial coma when he got to the hospital. Quote, and this is from the police chief inspector out there in Germany. The man has been put into an artificial coma by the doctors. We hope we can interview him soon. One hypothesis is that the dog, which is about the size of a Jack Russell, bit off the penis and ate it. Uh, but it's also possible a sex accident or a crime. Whoa. But they're leaning more toward, towards the dog biting the dong off. Did he have blood on its mouth or anything? How does this happen? How does that happen? Should the police chief's hypothesis be correct? It would not be the first uh, first time something like this has happened. I mean, how, again, how does this? It was what's what makes uh, what when they went into the house? What made them think of the dog first? Was there <laughs> was there a jar of jiff or something? Because it was him the, and the dog there, and that was it. And the guy had no no dong. Okay, and they instantly look at him and go, <laughs> okay. "You're suspect." What do you have to say about this? <laughs> wow, yeah, there's a guy and a dog, dog and no dog. I'd figure there'd be, <laughs> you know, probably blood. Right? Yeah, blood. there's got to be some. Right. What? Like you think you, th you think he's just looking like a wolf right there? Like he just you know <laughs> got into a carcass or something? I'm, I'm sure. Like when they lick it off themselves, I, 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 don't, would, I don't know. One would and think he's still a good boy because he got. The neighbors notified, Man. right? Mm. By barking. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Yeah, this happened to a guy in Austria, 61-year-old guy back in 2012. Uh, he was attacked by a loose dog, which also bit his dog off. You don't mess with loose dogs. The okay. guy had been working on his bike when he was attacked. Uh, he also rushed to the hospital where, after an operation, they were actually able to save his genitals. Okay, so this can happen with pants on. I say I, I didn't. I didn't really think that was. I mean, that's what it sounds like happens here. But I mean, that's like a like a. In the Austrian case, yes, but in this case, the guy's pants were off and the dong's gone. <laughs> oh, so his pants were off. 
when this happened. I'm the they, man's well, penis know. is gone. I understand what's missing. I'm just trying to put the clues together here. Like, how does a Jack Russell like take you down? Now, Jack Russell, that's the dog from uh, Frasier. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. And Problem Child. And yeah. <laughs> Very sweet dogs. Mm hmm. Why does everybody keep bringing up peanut butter? That's what I'm saying. Is like, there peanut like, butter all over these? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that, that's know. what I said. Was there an open jar of jiff I, on, on the. Uh, and today on the is also, by the way, World Peanut Butter Lovers Day. Yeah. It's true. That is today. Celebrate it in other ways. Yeah, don't do what this <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, don't Allegedly. celebrate that way. Don't do that. Uh, also, kind of making the rounds this week. I'm doing all my Friday leftover stories I haven't gotten to this week. Uh, there was a really bizarre incident out in Venice, California, uh, where a naked woman got into a fight with another woman on a boardwalk. So this all happened actually on Monday, and TMZ got the video of it. Uh, the video shows a woman in a blank, uh, in a black tank top Swinging some sort of spiked club at the naked woman. Hmm. Medieval stuff. Yeah. So it, was, it looked like a bat, but at the end of the bat, there were spikes. Was this not like a role play? Like, a, what do they call it? This was that? out in public. Live action role play? No, these two, these two didn't no, look like they liked each other. Oh. And you know what? Good on them. They're like, you know what, Patty? Come on Let's out. take it to the streets. The you woman want, you is want to go outside? completely naked. Oh, she is. One oh, woman. she is. The one woman was completely <laughs> naked. Up against a woman in a black tank top who was swinging the, swinging the spike club. Wasn't this in a Jennifer Lawrence movie? Game of Thrones on the boardwalk is what this sounds like. Shame. At one point when the woman in the black uh, tank top backs off, the naked woman appears to do some sort of catwalk. It's a whole thing. What? Like actual, like, like RuPaul? Catwalk. Moon's got the video up. Yeah, there's, there's the two. This is the one that was swinging the mace. See, I mean, that's, I mean, they're right on the they're right on the beach. Yeah, is that what that's called? Who a won? mace? I know a mace has like a chain on the end of it, right? Like chain with the ball with the spikes. Medieval chain with the ball. Uh, the, ball the mace, the ball, yeah, the mace there. is the ball with the spikes. Which one? What is this weapon called? I forget. Just a spiked I club. Have a spiked this, club. This, nah, there's got to be a cool. A morning name. star. Yeah, I was gonna say like spiked club. No, those 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 ancients had the coolest names for things. Ah, morning star. He didn't just make a weapon. Yeah, up. I don't really have much detail. A black and Decker pecker a flail. <laughs> There's a flail. That's something else. And a morning flail. star. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow, look at that. A dude. flail and a mace are the same. A look. morning star has it's a more of like a wand. Also, the naked gal had two of these things. I think she had two of them, and the other woman wound up getting one, and they went <laughs> after each other. A roundhouse your ass uh -huh. on the boardwalk. Yo, she's naked, but she's got a stride, don't she? Like, yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, like I'm coming after you. Like on a catwalk. Okay, naked woman causing a scene. Oh, my goodness. She blocked it with her hands. Yeah, naked woman causing a scene. Do you, uh, you know, do you attempt to take down the naked woman? Uh, as a guy, oh as man. a guy. Probably not. You just call the cops. Yeah, but the co she's, a, she's posing a danger to other people. Well, it's, sure. It's, it's you... And the naked woman, not you, Lauren. Okay. By the way, this I'm is Venice girl. Beach. So this is like, imagine, you know, you take your family, you're, you're out on the West Coast. You're like, oh, do we go to, do we go down to Mission Beach down in San Diego? Should we go up to, to Venice and like see the, see the mm -hmm. whole boardwalk, do that, or, you know, do that whole thing with the shops there? Yeah, let's go there. Oh, look, there's rollerbladers yeah. and there's naked say, hey. people fighting. I wish you had rollerblades on for this whole experience because that would be really cool. If there was... Like hot pink rollerblades and yeah. flail. Yeah. Venice Beach. And the is that, nudity. Is that's, that where they do like that? They work out on the yeah, beach? Yeah, Muscle Beaches yeah. over muscle there. Beaches that's over that's there. where we took our first like uh, photos, like the first uh, story of the year photos that we did um, that were on, you know, the beach. There's the posters and all that. That's right there on Venice. Ah. It's like that's cool. Tourist Central. They got yeah. tours going by there. Yeah, but uh, all right, Rafe, as a guy, you see a woman like that. She's, she's causing a scene. Cops mm -hmm. are not there yet. See it in your mind. See her. A, a danger to other families. I would uh, probably just strip down naked as an act of solidarity. Uh huh. And be like, look, hey, now we're both nude. <laughs> oh, you trying to tame the beast? Yeah. You know, like meet her where she's at. That's what I thought. I'm probably just going to strip down naked and be like, let's go under the boardwalk. You know, drop the weapon. Let's just hang out let's and figure out. Figure you out drop your let's weapon. Figure out what's going on with us. Mm hmm. <laughs> Let's figure, maybe you're let's the maybe I, I I see, I see that everyone else is clothed and we're not. What's going on with us? <laughs> this, this, and maybe if she felt like she had a friend and a partner in what was happening, she'd calm down. 
This gal's issues are not. That's getting, how you de-escalate, my friend. Yeah, not getting no, solved right. in a day. You're right. We gotta. It's you get. You have or that is also how you get maced right into testicles. I don't know. One or the other. What a risk. Yeah, I think you. Either have, way, a good story. You have a future as a <laughs> as, as a hostage, hostage negotiator. negotiator. <laughs> hey, what's going on with us? So I, I know the drill. They're going to send a robot up to the. No, it's actually a naked man. <laughs> it's a naked man with a bullhorn. <laughs> Out of everyone on this show, you are the hostage ne negotiator on this yeah, show. It's time to call him the naked negotiator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the never uh -oh. nude negotiator. Uh oh, naked the, the woman on the boardwalk. Nude. Let's get the naked negotiator. That's what I talked to you about, too. Like, you don't know how hard this was for me to get to where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to take off three pairs of Daisy Dukes that I had on underneath I my never, regular pants. I never take off these jeans and boots, but I will for you. I mean, I leave the boots on. I'm not I, crazy. Yeah, wise. why do I find the grossest part of that whole thing is a woman walking around barefoot? Well, because yeah. it is the grossest <laughs> part. On Venice Beach, dude. Yeah, that's nasty. Yeah, there's needles there and stuff. <laughs> never there mind are. the... It, Labia exposure. It's Never mind, you know, the just woman walking around naked, right. uh, you know, swinging a spiked Look club. Look at that lady. Put some shoes on. Yeah, come on. There Have some respect labia? for yourself. Put shoes Who's on. Who's that lady? Her body's beautiful, though. I mean, from She's, the, I'd like to see that. say, that's why parts. I wouldn't have an issue if she had weapons and you had to tackle her. This is the kind of gal that would be okay to tackle, her. you know? Who's she that was ugly. Labia? Yeah. Who's that labia? Thank you. No one acknowledged Who's what a beautiful labia? song that was. Are there, any uncensored, labia. are there any uncensored pictures of her? Oh, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. We got safe search on. No, because all, all, you know, you just see the pixelated uh, version from Maybe that's TMZ. her outfit. No, I don't think so, man. Not coming she's up on my rock, computer. She's got a rocking body? I'd say. Well, darn it. So that happened on Venice Beach. Um, the irony here is just top-notch. Uh, some drunk idiot went to a strip club in Port St. Lucie, Florida on Tuesday called Body Talk. And uh, he wasn't tipping strippers. So they confronted him. Hmm. And he was bragging. He'd been, well, he was, he was bragging the whole night about how much money he makes. But he didn't want to tip. Told them there weren't any signs stating it was mandatory. Hey, when you go to a strip club, you know... You know the rules. Yeah. They are. You got to tip. Oh. Uh. Don't touch the dancers and tip. Well, yeah. But, but that's one of those, you walk into a strip club, you got to have some extra, you know, extra money in your pocket for tips. Right? Yes. So yeah. one of the women who works there picked up a stack of cash and slapped him upside the head with it. Hmm. Her name is Victoria Jones. I don't know if she's a stripper or works there in some other capacity. 28 years old. She told the cops that the guy had also been insulting the strippers, claimed she just tossed the cash at him in a, quote, non-aggressive manner. Security footage just showed her hitting him with the cash, though, striking him with an open hand. What a jerk. So she's it? facing charges for misdemeanor battery. <laughs> this guy comes into a strip club and is just berating the dancers. Yeah. Get the hell out of here, man. Get the hell I'm out of here. I'm on her side 1,000%. Yeah. Because it's not like she threw, like, a drink or something sharp. He could have taken the money and run. She's like, get the hell out of Slapped here. Slapped him upside the head with cash. I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, you go to a strip club, there's certain, there's a certain expectation coming from, uh, you know, that goes comes from the customer to the dancers. Sure. Yeah. You, know, you got to have a stack of ones with you. Yeah, as a former dancer myself, I won a tips that night. Yeah. Yeah, made, made a lot of tips money. that night. You made you, tips that night. Did you get to keep that money? Yeah. Of course that's so did. cool. Yeah, that's how I was able to buy the house in the Caymans. Yep. <laughs> no, it was your down payment for the Overland house. Mm, yeah, it was. <laughs> you it was bought like, the I trampoline move, with that money. I'm moving up to Trampoline City. That was a great mm, night. So, so King Scott stripped down at uh, Scarlet's. Because mm -hmm. he's red-haired. Okay, and then we went to go see uh, Def Leppard and Journey over at Bush Stadium that night. What a night. What a yeah. night. I'm jealous. What, I, I, I remember I rolled in with, the, I rolled in with a whole bunch of... People. Oh, I think yeah. My husband was there. Was well. Was Tim there? I think he may so. Have been. He, yeah. was no, he didn't know we were coming. I remember he was already there. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Works there on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here doing recon, just making sure, uh, clear the perimeter, making sure everything's safe. Scott, you a, good? You that good? That was a fun okay. night. That was fun. That was All right, so here's a random Friday question. Um, who'd win in a fight? A 70-year-old or a 13-year-old? The 70-year-old. Who would win in a, in, a, in a physical 
fight. Ooh, I think people that win fights have a certain wisdom about them. They either know how to fight, like they know where to hit and how to block and what to do. Um, I think, yeah, the seven-year-old probably had been in plenty of fights already. Yeah, and, okay, there's two things at work here. One, old man strength. And we get that about, about this age. But I don't think old man strength goes away. But there is a huge disconnect between how fast you think you are and how fast you are. Yeah, reflexes. After a, uh, after yeah. a certain age. So you get a 13-year-old that's got enough, uh, He's got, uh, let's uh, say, enough uh, fire in him. Yeah. And he swings the right way. No, a 13-year-old's got video game reflexes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he right? swings the right way, and old man's going down. And yeah, it has old nothing man to do stays with on his feet. He's probably in good... He's in good shape, but once he goes down, I think... Uh, yeah, this was a big This was a big question online. A pe many people weighed in. 60? I say the 60-year-old wins. 60-year-old wins. 70? 70 is I say the, the 13-year-old's yeah. got it. I'm is saying 70 because the 13-year-old's going to go, ugh, because old people are scary to a 13-year-old, right? So they're going, I don't want to be touched. Well, they're in the Let's just they're assume they're fighting. The Let's just assume... Yeah, yeah, they're in the ring now. They're on the they, ring. They're, they're like, in the they ring. No, fight. I know, but that's still, like, I don't want... If, when I was 13, I didn't want to old person near me like that <laughs> so I'd be, you know wow <laughs> i'd be like nah. i know what, i know what you're saying and then there's also like a respect your elders thing where i wouldn't want to punch there is no there's yeah, no, yeah, there's yeah. no oh, respect no, no, no. here life, in this life, hypothetical yeah oh. real world is out of the we, we got it's a fight to the death yeah get in there fighting and survive to the and now, I think it, I think the 13 year old is doing a jump kick to try to break a hip because he's he's read the stats oh yeah it of course depends on the 13-year-old you're talking about, like what kind of 13-year-old, because I've right. seen some really wimpy ones. <laughs> and which 70-year-old? <clears throat> yeah, a lot of 70-year-olds are not pushovers these days. No, but I'm no. taking the average, I'm taking the average 13-year-old. And it, dude, my son has a friend who's six foot four at 13. This kid is enormous. Yeah. Everybody thought he was in high school when he was over. We're like, oh my gosh, this this is still a middle schooler. That kid can kick anybody's ass right now. Period. I don't care how old you are, you can't fight my, my, my son's friend. Yeah. I'm taking the average 13-year-old these days and the average 70-year-old that's maybe taking care of themselves, maybe not. Doesn't matter. Average okay. and average, 13-year-old wins. I think so, too. I'm not agreeing. I think the 13-year-old wins. I, you got to go for the legs first. You jump take out the jump legs. kick to the hip area. Yeah. You take out the legs. Yeah, because the average 13-year-old is a pretty solid teenager. Yeah, and they're made of rubber still. Yeah. Now, now they got some size on them, but they're still fearless and made of rubber. Like, and yeah, they never go outside and are a little scared of things. But oh, seventy is the new fifty. So, no, it's the seventy-year-old all the way. Punk ass Se kids. Well, don't okay, know what's Dylan's coming. saying the seventy-year-old has a much higher pain tolerance. Oh no, I think a thirteen-year-old wins that. Well, the bones are bones. Thirteen-year-old is probably more flexible, and yeah, the pain. More you know, they resilient. haven't had pain. You know, after you turn 40, everything starts going downhill, I've heard. So, you know. I'm going 70-year-old, too. Old really? age and treachery will always overcome youth and skill. Mm. Take it to the bank, brother. Dang. A 70-year-old's fighting for his life. That 13-year-old's still like, should that's I beat up an old person? I don't know if this is right. The 70-year-old's like, I'm going to take you to heaven okay, with me. A, Doesn't got a, nothing to lose, either. That's you know a good what I'm point. Saying? Fighting for the life. That, I, throw that in the mix, too. I didn't think about that. Let me tell yeah. you something. I worked at a nursing home for a while. And there were some dementia patients in there and loved them to death. But don't turn your back. Turn your back on a person. Don't turn your back on a disease. Because right. I had an old lady named Virginia that tried to stab me with a butter knife one time. And, dude, I had to James. I feel like I was in a James Bond movie fighting. <laughs> and she had freakish strength because of the fear. This was a tiny little lady. This is Virginia. She tried to give me cookies that she'd already, like, sucked on out of a tin. Yeah. And be like, oh, hey, Billy, are you still in the Navy? She thought I was her grandson, half the great sweet lady. Loved her. But every once in a while, she thought, you're an intruder breaking in her house. And she would, I, I served her her meal, and I turned my back on her for a split second, mm. dude. And she was like, ah! She was coming at yeah. me. And I literally did the thing where we, like, lock wrists. And I was like, da 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 Yeah. And, uh... I was trying to hold back because I'm like, I know that this is like an 80-year-old lady who's well, fresh, yeah, fragile bones. Fragile. And she was like, ah! Ah! she was, Dude, she was so strong. And I just, I, and I think that the seven-year-old is going to have some tricks up his sleeve. He's not going to fight clean. The average weight for an or average she. man drops 10 pounds between 60 and 70. 
down to about 190. Okay, so, so everybody's, I mean, everybody's giving us well, like, no, it's deterioration. We're not talking about no, leaning out. Leaned we're out, talking bro. about deterioration. Leaned we're out, 70 year old. We are talking about thinner bones and, <laughs> and liver spots. You know, we're talking the average. So, like, somebody's like, uh, you know, Brandon's like, Hulk Hogan, 70, of course, is taking a 13 year old. We're yeah. not talking about, of we're course, not talking Hulk about that. Hogan. No. Yeah. But we, you've seen that numerous times where people, even older net, that look like they're or guys and look like they're in terrible shape. They get jumped by a kid and they beat the crap out of them. Oh, I love seeing those videos. And yeah. You can find them all over Twitter of an old man, you know, taking on a you know gang of kids. Oh, I'm not saying they can't do damage. I'm just saying fight to the death. I'm you got you, you got you got more to lose. You got more to lose. Well, know. 65 percent of people said the 13 year old would take it. Nah. I think it'll be close. They must have pulled 13-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no 70-year-old taking a... Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm just... 70-year-olds aren't taking polls. When's the last time you lived with a 13-year-old? Like, Riz and I got, got him in the house right now. I think they're, I think they're, I think they're winning it. Because that's the time where it starts to get they, scary. You go, oh, my gosh. Get, at least it's going to be close. <laughs> at least it's going to be close. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. Now, what, what about 13, fight. 13 v. 80? Game's over. Okay, yeah. 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 13 v. 80. 80 year old definitely wins. That's 80, though. I don't know. I know my grandpa was probably, and I'd say he's average. He wasn't like a, I mean, he was a tough guy. He was a union bricklayer his whole life. He used to go for walks with a stick with a nail on the end of it and pick up cans on the side of the road, mm -hmm. pick up litter. And one of my friends in high school, <laughs> and it's like a T-top Camaro, came tearing ass around a gravel road and almost hit him, and he stuck his stick out, and he scraped the whole side you know, just a reactionary yeah. thing, and he scraped the whole side of his car. Of his car, and this kid Ronnie backed his car up and was like, "What the hell do you think you're doing, old man?" My grandpa reached in and grabbed him by the hair of the head, pulled him up out of the t-top, and broke his nose, <laughs> and then sent him on his way. And the cops came to my my grandpa was old, dude. This guy was in his prime. He was 16 years old, pretty. I'm pretty. telling you, old guy strength will catch you off guard. The average old yeah, maybe guy. Yeah, maybe I'm under underestimating. The strength maybe. And adrenaline. But but the speed, no. But, you they, know, I they, mean, they, I don't, I don't they know. They still hey, think they're as fast fine, as they were I, when they were yeah, 40. Yeah, but I don't know a lot of super coordinated 13-year-olds. You're still awkward at that stage. I don't care what you're built like. A lot of 13-year-olds, you're still like, your head's too big, your feet's too big. You're just, you haven't quite learned. It's like you just got this body. You don't quite know how it operates yet. I think learn, you, man. I think learn hit to respect your elders thing, though. And I think it, it, a lot of, there's probably a lot of 70-year-olds that are pop 16-year-olds. There's not a lot of 16 year olds that would pop back. That's what I'm saying. But if they did, well, I'm, this is a this is a different scenario. This is a fight to the death. You've been instructed uh, well, to I'm beat this to old announce, man's ass. Announce uh, the Riz Show ever uh, first ever fight night. Oh my god! Which will be coming up uh, on March. <laughs> Starring John Hewlett. March yeah. Yeah. We hit a Our sons, 70 year old uh, yeah. you know, You're weighing in at 190 Mark pounds <laughs> with hollow bones. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Hollow Man. <laughs> In the old the human liver spot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, racial fight night will be the you know the undercard is the thirteen year old versus seven year old. The main event that night is how many th uh, third graders can you take on? Yeah. So <laughs> a thirteen year old will show up with awesome. a VR headset on, <laughs> and yeah. two paddles in his hand, and be like, "I'll take you." You know, this is real life, dude. All right, one uh, one more thing here. Another huge. Huge thing in the news this week. Um, somebody tried to scam kids with a very lame Willy Wonka experience. <laughs> Has anybody seen this story? I, I saw heard, this a few oh, minutes ago. Oh, my God. About it, yeah. <laughs> Do you have the audio of this guy? <sighs> this is great. You want me to put it in crap? I got, I'll, I'll get okay. it. Cause the guy who they got to play Willy Wonka? Yeah. His, how he explains it's great. Okay. So, so for all the concerns about AI... One thing that we all have to remember is this. It doesn't take a lot of effort to make it seem like there's a lot of effort. Okay, so there was something called the something called Willie's Chocolate Experience that was supposed to happen in Scotland last weekend. So it cost like 45 bucks a person. It was advertised as an immersive walkthrough experience that made you feel like you were in Willy Wonka's factory. And did you see any of the literature for this? No, I did not. The images they used to promote it looked like, looked lush with lighting and design, like something you would see at Disney. But apparently th those were just AI-generated gen pictures. 
Oh, my God. So when parents and kids actually arrived, they sold hundreds of tickets to this thing. Okay. It was a mostly empty warehouse <laughs> with a couple props sitting around that looked like stuff from parade floats. Amazing. Oh. Well, maybe Wonka outsource now. Okay, fine. It's not what it would visually what it's supposed to be, but you're going to a Willy Wonka experience. You're expecting a lot of candy, oh, right? Yeah, the schnozberries nope. taste like schnozberries. Nope. Yeah. At least one. The experience was less than ten minutes long, didn't feature any candy, let alone any decor or immersive interaction. One person gave this review underwhelming was an understatement. Embarrassing doesn't even cut it. I paid for Willy Wonka and got Billy Bonkers. Some people didn't even get that. And apparently there was so much backlash that the organizers pulled the plug on the whole thing, put up a cardboard sign that said event canceled. Some parents were even even so pissed they called the police. Wow. Not just because they felt defrauded, but because they, they were worried about it being safe. Organizers apologized, blamed the disaster on a holographic uh, technology not arriving on time. They gave out refunds. As for the police, I don't know what role... <laughs> they played in getting the event shut down or or it's you know or closing it down but the best part is there's a one shot that you can see and it's kind of the dining area and the tables don't even match or anything there's nothing like what about the saddest, and then there's a little the, tiny bounce house way in the corner all by itself the saddest looking oompa loompa oh i didn't see him the woman it's a oh, woman really? in like a green like <laughs> in a green wig uh, well here's the guy they got to play willy wonka but anyone who bought tickets to this event, people who are expecting a magical chocolate experience uh, and got me in a top hat in a warehouse in Glasgow. So the first red flag for me was when I was cast as Willy Wonka. Um, anyone who looks at me and thinks Willy Wonka and not Umpa Lumpa is out of their mind. I give off major Umpa Lumpa energy. It was an absolute uh, mess. Yeah, Garrett, it's, this is the Umpa Lumpa that looks like she's operating a meth lab. It looks like oh, one of the characters is yeah. Wes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wes Borland. Like, this woman pops out from behind, like, a mirror, and she's got a silver mask on. She looks terrified. That's she's not like, even part of Will the Willy Wonka story. That's an AI. Like, if you ask AI to write part of a Willy Wonka yeah, story. That's what popped up. Yeah. Wild. <laughs> Wes Borland comes out from behind Yeah, Wes Borland from Lip Biscuit. Just, Dude, you gotta see I mean, I the banner kind of barely hung up. <laughs> the banner just looks so terrible. Kids were crying. I think, you know, they got uh, a jelly bean, no chocolate. Ooh, a, a, a single jelly bean? One single jelly bean. That's worse than giving somebody a single Pringle. Here you, you go. go. What, what? I want almost a flavor in my, in my yeah, mouth? Yeah, listen, if I'm going to a Willy Wonka thing, you're expecting candy, right? Nothing. Handfuls of jelly beans. You get nothing. 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 <laughs> you get get nothing you get nothing you lose good day sir <laughs> yeah enjoy kids also just looked up on urban dictionary what a schnozberry is and whoa. is it a schnozberry or a snozberry i looked up schnozberry that's ch yeah way different yes a bug nah worse worse just go ahead and google that I can't talk about right. it. Isn't it a snoz? Isn't it S a snozberry? Yeah, S N O Z Z B E R R Y. But a snozberry. Does that have something to do with your nose? No, it has something to do with your penis. Oh, no. no. And it's a filthy joke that they said is in the movie. The snozberries take like oh, snozberries. To... Yeah, but in the movie they say snozberry. Yeah, yeah, but here it says snozberry, the filthiest joke ever hidden in a children's movie. What? what? What's, the, what's the joke? Grape snow cone. Yeah. It's your Alan Jackson theory come to life, dude. <laughs> yeah, so okay, it says Wonka declares, lick an orange, it tastes like an orange. The strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. We laugh because snozberries is obviously a fanciful fiction, fictional word, and nobody knows what they really were. Except that Roald Dahl, the book's author, knew exactly what snozberries were. They're... What? <laughs> oh, dinglings. So he says. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, let's shout out the team members member of the day, which is brought to you by Hot Shots, St. Louis home for Blues Hockey, <laughs> from Dupo, Illinois, Nathan Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Nathan. Oh, team members member of the day, uh, Nathan has been a longtime daily listener ever since he was a kid. Remembers listening to the show with his dad on commutes to school. Love that. Love that. Uh, loves the originality of the show and how it feels like a long conversation and get together amongst friends. 
Uh, he even converted his wife into a daily ratio listener. Nathan Garcia from Dupo is our team. Riz, remember the day. Get the super sweet team. Riz, remember the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up on 057thepoint.com slash team Riz. All right, we will take our first break of the morning. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Uh, somebody's asking at Riz Show Live, do we have to say presented by the Fast Lane? No. <clears throat> I think we've addressed that before. No. Nah. All right, up after the break, uh, we'll crown the official Craigslist Freak of the Week and then learn we'll get into crap on celebrities. 709, traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Looks like down on 270, we have a right-hand shoulder block due to a stall vehicle. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a 44. 44 southbound just before uh, exit 5B, so pretty much 270 and uh, 44. Uh, we also have a severe delays in three lanes blocked due to a crash 270 northbound just after Dorset. Your point forecast, early rain and snow mix, high of 51. Right now it's 34 at the point studio. All right, what do you got? More from Alex Van Halen. It's Aliens, man. What's happening at Flavortown and new in theaters, record stores, and we're going to get into some things that The Rock owns that... I, I'm, I'm going to have you guys guess what The Rock owns. Okay. All of his trademarks. All right, we got that. We got your crappy birthdays, the porno birthday, and the Craigslist Freak of the Week winner all next day there. What's going on? It's Liv, and I am joined right now by Hailstorm. It is Point Fest 2022. Yes. So stoked Woo! to have you guys here, back from the dead, back here in St. Louis. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, she said it. Round two. Literally Round back two. On the dead. Roll credits. <laughs> yes. The only storm today is going to be Hailstorm. Yes. Oh my and gosh. We guarantee it. Yes. <laughs> now, what I wanted to bust out. Why I have my iPad here. Uh -oh. And health, guys, take your health back in 2024 like I did in 2023, rolling it over into 2024. We were talking about backhanded compliments earlier, and I got one courtesy of Victory when someone said, hey, am I seeing less of you lately? And that was their way of saying, like, you're slimming down, you're looking good, Uncle Porksteak, keep up the good work. They just didn't know how to say it without making me want to cry in a corner. Now, Victory can help you slim down. If that's your goal, if it's not, that's okay, too. Maybe they can just help you feel better and have more energy. you you got all kinds of treatments there from semaglutide to custom testosterone treatment to vitamin deficiency treatment to red light therapy. So you can even go in and get a vitamin-infused IV, which Learn King Scott and I have done, and you feel great afterwards. They've got all kinds of stuff there that can make you feel like your best, and they invest in your treatment and your success the same way they did for me. The only reason I can lift every car in the parking lot above my head several times on my way in is because of Victory Men's Health trademark. This may not be a completely true statement, but... They will make you feel better, and there's no reason for you to wait. I know we're all Midwestern males, and we think, oh, well, I'll just walk it off. Well, maybe not, man. There might be something going on with your body, and the only way to find out is to invest in your health. And now they have four locations instead of three. They have the Sunset Hills location that's brand new, the town and country that we all go to, and one in O'Fallon, Illinois, and O'Fallon, Missouri. So wherever you are, there's one close to you. Go right now and make an appointment at one of these facilities at victorymenshealth.com. That's victorymenshealth.com. So uh, here we are, our very first Ho Ho Show of 2017, our Christmas show. Uh, you will be our first band that we will see, two thirds of Biffy Clyro. Gentlemen, how are you? Oh, it's really well. great to see you. Really well, and after that introduction, we're very excited uh, <laughs> to be opening up the Ho Ho, the Ho Ho party. Ho -ho, the, yeah, ho -ho, yeah. the Ho 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 party. The ho 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 party. And I feel like, even if I don't know if you know the Rise Against guys, and I know that musically you guys might not necessarily be in lockstep, but I feel like this is a really great rock and roll show. From you know, rock bands are a little bit different. Do you know those yeah, guys? Yeah, we, we we don't know them not personally. We, we, we've we've <coughs> shared many festival bills in Europe with them. Those guys have been around for such a long time, and we, we hold them in the highest regard. So I think to play a show with them is a real honor for us, you know. And yeah, you maybe not uh, musically uh, akin to each other. Sure. But I think there's a little bit of a crossover yeah. there. And, we don't uh, we don't really f we don't fit bang on with with anyone really. With many there's bands. always there's always 
like a slight discrepancy going on <laughs> sure. in, the, in the music world. So Rise Against is about as close as it gets, to be honest. But I would think that would kind of work for you yeah. as well, because then you can kind of be on a lot of different lineups, uh, on a lot of different bills. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we, we, we find ourselves playing in heavy rock festivals and almost more mainstream pop festivals and kind of everything in between. And but we either kind of stick out like a sore thumb for the right reason or not. But we, we, we quite like that. We're, yeah. we're at home whenever we play. Very good, very good. Well, it's it's really a pleasure to have you back in town. Um, we were supposed to have you uh, a little bit earlier on this year. Uh, unfortunately, that was not able to happen. Um, but um, from what I understand, from my sources inside of your camp, we've infiltrated it, by the way. You're big, gun, you're big Guns N' Roses guys? Oh, we love yes. Guns N' Roses. And, and so you were excited to go to where the riot in 91 happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 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 that's it. It's a... Uh, We've been kind of reliving some of our youth this year. We played some shows at Guns N' Roses in Europe, and we were we were going to go to the shows anyway, yeah. sure. you know, just yeah. as fans. But to get a chance to share a stage with them was amazing, and to be here is <laughs> yeah. a double special. I remember a bit of that day, or the, the following day, because I had to I had to go to summer school that year for right. math. It was wow. bad times in that grade. Horrible. It was, it was awful. It was <laughs> and uh, I remember this kid that sat next to me in this math class who was like seemingly 60 years older than me. Like he looked yeah. just huge. And he was like, I was at Guns N' Roses last night <laughs> and there was a riot. And I was like, you're nuts, you're man. Like, yeah, you're yeah, nuts. Yeah. And like, nah, man, I'm a freshman, but I'm not an idiot. Yeah. And so then I get home and my dad is just like, son, did you see what happened at the amphitheater? Wow. Guns N' Roses, yeah. they tore it up and blah, blah, blah. And that has just legitimately been a a, a consistent storyline here, you yeah, know, since really. I was in the in, in the well, ninth grade. Well. But they came back this summer. They made it up, and, and you know, did, did, did they talk about it from stage at all? Did they mention the riots? You know, I, yeah. I did not. He did. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody would know, it would be <laughs> <laughs> when you you know when you're on a bill like that with a band like Guns N' Roses that you hold in such high regard. Um, you know, I'm very guilty at my job when I meet bands that I really like. Um, uh, I definitely get nervous. I definitely talk faster. Mm. I'm sweaty. Mm. You know, yeah, it's yeah, real yeah, kind yeah, of unpleasant. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, that's what you guys do. You know, your pros like their pros. Do you get those same kind of butterflies if, if you run into Slash or whomever? Oh. Is it is it like a big deal or, or yeah. is it just like I think yeah. I mean, I think when you see that I'm, top hat coming towards you, not, <laughs> you don't feel, you don't feel the same as when you're you know like meet, meeting other guys in bands. You, you definitely get nervous if it's, if it's your heroes. Like yeah. I, I've I've kind of. You can't think of anything to say. No. Suddenly you can't think of anything to say. Your mouth goes dry. You can't think you're trying to act cool, but you're right. definitely... How are you today? That you're definitely sure, relaxed. You know. But I have to say, we, we played a few shows with, with Duff over the years, and, and all of the guys really welcoming. Yeah. They really made us welcome. They really made us feel like part of the show. And I mean, you know, as a, as, as, as a band going out there to play for that audience, They've been waiting 20, 30 years to see Guns N' Roses. Sure. The last thing they need is three guys with their tops off shouting at them. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of there, you, as long as you don't start throwing bottles of piss at you, yeah. you know that you're doing quite well. And luckily that didn't happen. But mm. no, just a huge honour. And, and you can learn a lot from people like Duff. You know, one of the biggest stars on the planet, but he's got time for everybody. Mm. Right. He's got mm. a story and he shares himself with people. And I think he seems genuinely interested in people as well. Which yeah. It is something that you can take you can take a lot from. Well, I've heard great things about Slash too. Yeah. Like he's like just like a pretty normal guy, yeah, yeah. albeit an absolute guitar hero. <laughs> yeah, all at the same yeah, time, yeah. you know that you you brought up something that I find to be uh, very interesting. Um, uh, so I watched a lot of your, your videos online. I've seen a lot of performances over the years. I've never gotten a chance to see a live and get to do that tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that. You guys are very secure in yourselves and playing without shirts on. <laughs> if, if I said right now, tops off interview, uh -huh. I think you would probably be comfortable with it. Maybe you don't, no. I'm not asking you to do that. No, you wouldn't no, be. No, it's just, just through the rock and roll of yeah, it all. The, the, I mean, the necessity of yeah, it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not like we, we, th we think we look great with our shirts on. That's <laughs> not at all what it is, because none of us go to the gym or anything. Um, we, it's more of a kind of, it's a defence mechanism, but it's also, it kind of breaks the barriers down between you and the crowd in a, a certain way as well, because you can't feel any like dafter or, or more, more ridiculous than when you've got your shirt off. You yeah. feel very exposed. And so it makes you fight a little bit harder when you get on the stage. You're like, I look. RV, I was talking to people the last couple of days about Byerly, because uh, that's what we're doing for spring break. We're using Byerly's rental services to... Take the family down to Disney World, and we are saving so much money. Instead of flying, we are doing the uh, the adventure style. And I'm telling you, my son and I went to the RV show, and uh, he got to see 
uh, a version of what we're taking from from Byerly, and uh, he's he's more excited about the adventuring in the in the RV than he is about Disney World. I'm sure he's going to love Disney World, but we are so excited for the experience. Again, this is a cheaper way to travel, so my my wife and I are thrilled because we're saving money. But at the same time, like we get some extra days of just absolute fun. And Byerly RV is the center of the RV world. They are there for all of us when it comes to sales, RV sales, service, parts, storage, RV rental services, even a YouTube channel. Now, my concern about getting into the RV world is I don't have a place to put it. I don't have storage. Well, they got that covered. A brand new 88,000 square foot indoor climate controlled storage building and deals on that, plus a new outdoor storage lot on the property. So all things RV are covered by Byerly. We are so fortunate to have them in our backyard right here in Eureka. Byerly RV, the center of the RV world. Check them out, ByerlyRV.com. Well, here we are backstage at Point Fest with Greek Fire. Hey! Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Hi Donnie. So, uh, so guys, how'd it go today? Well, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it, it went excellently. Yeah, man. You know why? Because, uh, so we had, just to fill anybody in, we had a bunch of technical difficulties. All right, welcome back to the program. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The socials at R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails, Riz Show, 1057thepoint.com. Instant feedback through the 1057thepoint mobile app. So it's Friday. We got your Friday fail stories. We've got Rafe's e memoriam. We've got a little game we'll play today called Just Two of Us. <laughs> and you know what this music means. It's time for the Craigslist Freak of the Week, and it's time Yay. to crown a winner. Now, Learn read three ads for us yesterday. Based on your votes, one of the ads moving on to the Freak of the Year tournament. And it was kind of close between two of them. One of them we say goodbye to right away. Uh, we got to say goodbye to uh, nominee number two, Rob Thomas, with 6.2% of the vote. Rob Thomas is goodbye. a rich geezer living in, uh, I think it was Leeds, somewhere in England. And he wants to be robbed, so to speak. He had about uh, three or four slang terms that we all had to look up. But they all mean basically getting robbed. He wants to Joe in the bathroom while you... Clean out his Robin entire blind. flat. Take him, yeah, rob him blind. Take him for all he's worth. Yeah. Well, we say goodbye to Rob Thomas. In second place, your runner up. I'll, I'll say that the winner had 49% uh, of the vote. The runner up, 44.9% of the vote. The runner up was nominee number three, Jamie Quivers. I can't believe it. This is who I had winning uh, because this guy likes to climax only through the art of. Of archery. Mm. Yes, getting into athletics and, uh, and events like this is the only thing that turns him on. He's an expert archer, and uh, the whole process turns him on. So he wants, he's going to put uh, things on your head and shoot arrows all around you, and that's what's going to do yeah, it for what, him sexually. That's what arouses him. All right, what that means is, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the Freak of the Year tournament with... 49% of your vote. It was nominee number one, Coma Lisa. Once in a lifetime sex experience, woman for man, 42 years old, London. I have a surgery scheduled in March that's going to keep me laid out in the hospital for a couple of days, and I'm taking this opportunity to have a little fun on the side. After my surgery, you will wash my entire body. Make sure you don't leave any crevice unscrubbed. Please lift up my flaps and get in there real good. I don't want to get a yeast infection from the filth of the hospital. Once we get me out of the bath, we will wait for the nurse to come and change my bandages and wound dressings. Next, you will then need to rub me down with oil, head to toe. Wear gloves so that all of the oil absorbs into my skin and not onto your hands. Pay attention to my flaps. After we get me all oiled up, you will then put my pajamas on and go down to the cafeteria to get me a snack. Nothing garlicky. When you come back, the lights will be off. Now it's time for the fun. I'm going to act like I'm in a coma. You then need to mount me quietly and sex my lifeless body up while also not trying to make a scene if we have any roommates or nurse staff in the hallway. I can sign a document of consent before we get this on the books. I want you to feel the freedom to go as wild and dirty as we possibly can while this opportunity comes our way. How often do people get to have sex in a hospital room after surgery? Not often at all. Everything is in play, including the dirtiest of all places. 
This will be a one-of-a-kind sex experience that we will not forget. Please send a photo and a little bit about yourself to get things rolling. Big, beautiful woman, Ashley. There we go. Coma Lisa. We'll be moving on to the Freak of the Year tournament. And thank you all for your votes. Thank you. What a competition, huh? Thank you for casting your vote, as we say every week. Uh, probably the most impor uh, important vote you'll cast mm. all year. For sure it is. All right, today, March 1st, what happened on this day? 152 years ago, in, uh, in uh, 1872, Yellowstone becomes the, uh, America's first national park. 92 years ago, 1934, I'm sorry, 1932, somebody creeps onto the estate of Charles A. Lindbergh, climbed a homemade ladder, placed a ransom note on the windowsill, and kidnapped the Lindbergh baby. It was called the crime of the century. A $50,000 ransom was paid, but Charles <laughs> Jr. was not returned. 73 days later, the remains of a 20-month-old boy found in the woods near the house. Awful. Dead of a fractured skull. After a two-year manhunt, police arrested 35-year-old uh, German illegal immigrant Bruno Hauptmann, who was convicted and executed as a direct result of this case. Kidnapping became a federal crime. 83 years ago, 1941, the first U.S. commercial FM radio station goes on the air in Nashville, Tennessee. That's right. Oh, yeah. What were the call letters? WNBC. <laughs> uh, 56 years ago, 1968, uh, John, uh, John Cash. John, John Cash. Hello. John Cash. John, John Cash. Cash. Mary, he's uh, June Carter Cash. <laughs> June Carter. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, June died on May 15th, 2003, and uh, Johnny died four months later on September 12th, 2003. You guys like Walk the Line, the movie with yeah. Joaquin? And yeah, I thought it was great. I love that yeah, movie. Yeah, it was good. It great. was really good. I, was I think like, the Dewey Cox story was even better. <clears throat> I was yes. a, huge, a huge Johnny Cash fan, and when they cast Joaquin, I wasn't sure. Because mm -hmm. at that point in his career, he wasn't Joaquin Phoenix yet. He wasn't what he is now. He was coming off like Gladiator. That's it. He was the bad guy, and I'm like, they got the bad guy from uh, Gladiator? I'm sorry. He was in Parenthood, and he was excellent. Well, yes, he was, he was like great 10. in Parenthood. Yeah, he, yeah, he blew up that theory just now. <laughs> he was 13 years old. He, he was, was unbelievable. But, but I, no, I do think he was he was most famous for, for the Gladiator role. Right. Comments. Yeah, and I mean, he wasn't like the most likable guy in that. And I was no. like, man, this, they picked this dude to play like. An American icon, and, but I thought he crushed it. He it was did great. A, I thought Reese was really good in it, too. Uh, 51 years ago, 1973, Pink Floyd puts out Dark Side of the Moon. 45 years ago, 1979, the Coca-Cola Company introduces what as a competitor to Pepsi's Mountain Dew? Mellow? Spra uh, oh, Mellow Yellow? Yellow, Mellow Yellow. Yellow. Oh, yes. God, dude, Mellow Yellow was the best. Man, Mellow Yellow the coolest was... race car, too, in NASCAR. Yeah, they did, dude. Yeah. Mellow Yellow was Mountain Dew without the, without the stomachache and fewer bubbles. Mm -hmm. God, dang. It was like Is that they, around anymore? It's like they cranked the yeah, syrup so. up a little bit. Wow. Right? I think Mellow Yellow is still around. Sure. Gotta be. Okay. Well, it turns 45 today. 33 years ago, 1991, The Doors hits theaters. That's with uh, Val Kilmer as uh, Jim Morrison. Man, that that hit, you know, as I was getting into high school, mm -hmm. and everybody became a Doors fan. Everybody mm -hmm. had that poster of Jim with the shirt off, with his arms out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either that yeah. one or the Michael Jordan, the same pose poster. <laughs> uh, like every school had one kid in like jack boots and a green trench coat. That was, was scribbling really I the am doors. the Lizard King all over every desk <laughs> in the school. That was I thought he was the first guy to discover the Doors. Dude. Uh, Scott, you know why you remember the Mellow Yellow for uh, for the NASCAR stuff? That was Cold Trickles. Yeah, that, yeah, from Days of Thunder. Yeah, Days of Thunder, yeah. Did you say that? No. no. But oh, Hardy's, okay. I remember Hardy's had them as toys, and so I went to Hardy's a whole bunch to try to get every one of those cars. Like, yeah. And, right, then, so what, and then Kyle and, Petty drove So what, what did, the, did the poster say? American Poet? Is that what it said on it? <laughs> I or, don't remember. Or was it just, I know we had the necklace on, it was shirtless. Yeah, it had kind of like a, a small bead necklace that was right across his chest. Yeah. Gorgeous. And uh, 29 years ago today, 1995, REM drummer Bill Berry had to leave the stage during a Switzerland concert after collapsing from a ruptured brain aneurysm. Damn. Whoa. Middle of the show. He did not die. Uh, and that's what happened back in the day. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your Crab on Celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best, flush the rest, brighthouseco.com, 636 600 188 
The official blurb for Alex Van Halen's upcoming memoir, Brothers, has been made public. It says, in his rough yet sweet voice, Alex recounts his brother's childhood, first in the Netherlands and then working in Pasadena, California. He also shares tales of musical politics, infighting, plenty of bad boy behavior, but mostly... His is a story of brotherhood, music, and enduring love. There has never been an accurate account of them or the band, and Alex wants to set the record straight on Edward's life and his death. So this is going to be good. Um, uh, yeah, well, an account from his perspective. But he's as close as you get, right? This is his uh, I'm brother. sure if Michael Anthony wrote a book, it would be from his perspective, and that's pretty damn close, too. I, but Michael Anthony was not in the family of Van Halen, and he was not probably there when Eddie died. And I, I really do think that if you're an Eddie Van Halen fan, this is going to be the book. Of course, about Eddie Van Halen, but about the band. Sure. I'm sure every one of those dudes has their own perspective. There's no right one. Sure. Possibly. It's all collective with that. I'm saying just for Eddie Van Halen. For Eddie life. Van Halen, yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this book will be out on October 22nd. There will be a 720-minute audiobook. We still don't know if it'll be in Alex's voice because nobody knows what he sounds like. That's right. Um, in other book news, <laughs> Tom DeLonge of Blink-182 has announced another novel inspired by his passion for UFOs. Trinity is going to be published on June 11th. DeLonge wrote it with A.J. A. J. Hartley, his collaborator on the Secret Machine series. And he says, this story takes place around the seminal uh, UFO event that I believe happened. Although the location may have changed, the importance of what I believe transpired remains. Hey, um, I'll listen, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest Blink-182 fan. Yeah. Uh, I understand their their place in you know, modern rock music. Sure. And I do I do enjoy you know some of their songs. Uh, Adam's Song. Love it. Lo that's Damn that's, it, love it. Adam's Song is, is a, a fantastic song, probably my favorite Blink mm -hmm. song. But... Uh, yeah, again, I understand their, their place in modern rock. Um, Travis Barker was interviewed by Rick Rubin. Now, Rick Rubin's got a podcast called uh, Tetragrammaton. And it is a great interview. Is it really? Like, if you really want the history of Blink-182, mm -hmm. of, fr of course, from Travis's perspective, perspective right. he really goes into it. I and about their when they broke up a couple times and how people wouldn't... Sh like, he said that they broke up once because Tom just... They were start to starting to rehearse for a record. Tom just didn't show up, wow. and they were like, "We're done." Wow, that's it. Mark Hoppus is the nor most normal one in that band, right? <laughs> like it when seems you like it. when you look at those three guys, you go, "Who's the most normal?" But even here? he got. Remember Travis Barker and uh, Tom DeLonge did a project called Boxcar Racer. Oh yeah, hmm. yeah, and left Mark Hoppus out of it. Right. Mark Hoppus was plenty butthurt. I'm sure about that, and he goes into that stuff. So if you're a fan of that band. What's the podcast called again? T Rick Rubin's podcast. Yeah, Rick Rubin's called Tetragrammaton awesome. or Tetragrammaphone. Check that out. Right, one of those. There's a new trailer for a weird movie called I Saw It on TV. The film features cameos from Fred Durst and Phoebe Bridgers. We have that up on the blog. It opens on May 3rd. Kind of a weird... Um, oh, God, what was that? Uh, what was that movie uh, about the kids back in the, the day where it was like something about Film 88? Um, oh, this is a period piece movie. Like in the 90s, like 80s and 90s. Um, it's very odd. It looks like it's a sci fi movie, but it, it's kind of like Stranger Things. So mm. if you're into that and you like Fred Durst, What's and movie Bridgers, called? it's called I Saw It on TV. Pretty cool trailer. What does Fred Durst have to do with it? He has a cameo in it. Oh. Hey, you got to remember in, the, in that Blink thing, like in, in every popular band, especially a band that's that big, there's always a backlash point where they're uncool. It's uncool to like Blink 182 at a certain time. And during that period, this happens to every band. During that period, not only did they have. Boxcar Racer with Dave and those guys, they had plus 44. Plus 44 was after they broke up the first time. Right, that's what I'm saying. But, but like, there's all these things, then Angels and Airwaves, like, there's all these things that, that people, you're, you're kind of in this lost period and you're not sure what to do. And you're like, I still want to be creative, but this creative doesn't fit with this band. And now this well, guy and, wants and, to do something and anyway. He goes, and he goes, uh, he really spills it all. Like, yeah, cool. it's a, as it's far a, as like feelings go. It's and, always a difficult time because everybody's feelings are so different during that period. But, again, if you really want the definitive history of Blink-182 mm -hmm. from Travis Barker's perspective, yeah. it's a great I'm, listen. Okay. I listen, I to, the, I listen to the whole damn thing. Does it talk about the Aquabats a whole bunch? Oh, yeah. He, he mentions them. <gasps> Guy Fieri's Flavortown Festival that was uh, supposed to be happening on June 1st and 2nd in Columbus, Ohio, had uh, Greta Van Fleet as the headliner has been canceled what? due to unforeseen circumstances. I remember when we announced this festival, everybody got pretty excited. Flavortown. Well, Flavortown, man. It's a place I want to live. What happened? 
So we have no clue. There is a uh, flavor town, and I think it's the airport in Cancun. <laughs> I mean, it's literally like an area. It's called Flavor Town. I think it's Cancun. It's one of those touristy, you know, you're leaving. Right. And it's like a whole wing of a... Uh, of, uh, like a tiki bar? Like what? what of a terminal. And there's like different restaurants. <laughs> nice. Um, and I walked in, I'm like, whoa, this is Flavor Town. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This I want to live here. I love Guy Fieri. How could you hate Guy Fieri? I know. I don't like How his you, glasses. It doesn't matter. But the I like him. The man just wants to spread joy. He's so tan and so spiky. Now Newark Airport has a flavor town? Newark That's Airport. That's not the one that I went to. New Terminal A adds Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Kitchen and Bar. This just happened last month. Wow. Oh, Can we get wow. one at the St. Louis Airport? That'd be cool. <laughs> What are you Would asking that help for you something cool? Hey, maybe with the new uh, the new improvements they're going to do, we get a flavor town. Yeah, here. I wish we get a flavor town at St. Louis Airport that I could walk by that's closed at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Yeah, I'll. Uh, <laughs> I'm from the Show Me State. You show me something. I'm fighting Lambert, good. dude. You yeah, show I'll me tell you what I'm showing you. I'm airport. showing you a gate pulled down at 6 p.m. That is yeah. a real issue. That'd be so sad. Hey, you that's guys nothing. complain, but I'm just grateful that you, that you finally started using blue duct tape for the seats. That's true, Scott. You know, it looks Always a little nice. the positive, buddy. Right oh, you're right. All the seats are all torn up mm -hmm. in certain ways. And they have that weird <laughs> tape that you had well, on the school bus. Like, you know, it's upholstery. Dave Grohl is among the guest stars appearing on the new St. Vincent album, All Born Screaming. The new Foo Fighters drummer Josh Freeze also plays on the album. It's due out on April 26th. The lead single, Broken Man, is out now. You can hear it on our blog. New in record stores and streaming today, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden titled his first solo album in 19 years, The Mandrake Project. Uh, Liam Gallagher and John Squire of Stone Roses team up on a self-titled album. Uh, new Year's Day's first album in five years is called Half Black Heart. That is out. And Zach Sabbath, The Black Sabbath tribute band with Zach Wilde cover Paranoid and Master of Reality on Doomed Forever, Forever Doomed. Zach Sabbath. Zach nice. Zach Sabbath. Isn't that cool? Um, TV, let's go there. So the booth from the season finale of The Sopranos is being sold on eBay. If you want this, uh, the bidding was over $50,000 last night. Uh, it is from a real New Jersey restaurant called Holstein's. Um, movies out today. We talked about Dune Part 2. That's out in theaters. You already know everything about it. Uh, Outlaw Posse. This is a Western that is set in 1908, starring Mario Van Peebles, which I love his name, as an outlaw who returns to Montana to reclaim a treasure in stolen Damn. gold after years out in Mexico. Van hey. Peebles, dude. I ain't heard his name in a long time. I think he directs and stuff like that. I think he's more behind the camera now. Hey, a new music, too, and I found this out yesterday. Um, uh, well, I, I, my my buddy Trevor, who is Steve Lucas, Lucather's son from Toto, he's he's been in a bunch of different bands. He's a shredder guitar player. He's been in this new band called The Effect. And yesterday, I, I saw an article. I had no idea his drummer was is Phil Collins' son. What? So it's Phil Collins' son and Steve Lukather's son. And it's like it's awesome. Trevor's amazing. He's like shredder guitar player, like his father. It's very if you like that kind of '80s still like guitar rock stuff. Phil Collins' son. And Steve Lucas. It's, it's called the effect. The effect. E F F E C T. You know. Okay. Check it out. I wasn't Phil Collins' son like kind of filling movie? in for him. Yeah, I thought he was in a different band too. I had no Phil idea. Phil Collins' that... son was filling in for him when Genesis, I think, did their final tour because yeah. Phil couldn't play the drums. I knew that he was playing, and I knew that he was in a, a different rock band. But when this band started, I I just didn't know that he was in there. Let's also give another so shout yesterday. out for the two SG. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yes. Record out. Uh, Action figures came out Appreciate yesterday. It. How are sales? Figures. Are they good? I guess I don't know. I, I have no access to the that part of their website. What? Mark's in charge of all that. Mark's in charge of financing. Yeah, I know it's a little oh, scary. Well, we got uh, an he's email. He's a banker though by by trade. What's the email? <laughs> Moon. Somebody said they bought a copy. The reviews are in. Mm. The uh, reviews are in. Yeah, yeah. We got a body. copy. I know. I know at least one copy has been bought, so that's good. You want me to get into the emails? I downloaded that, it, Scott. That was our that was our leading leading yeah. email. Well, I think while we're you know Two. while we're bringing it up. Okay, here it is in music reviews. Feet lifter. Checking in. The guy who loves. He wants the crotch The guy cam. who learns. The guy who loves to learn. us, feet lifter. Okay, the subject is, I bought the album from 2SG. And the body of the email is blank. Right. That's yeah, that's what review. I saw the title. And Take it. I bought the album from 2SG. Take there it. is your mu hey, music review. That reviews. is a great review. I'm going to post it everywhere. I bought the album from 2SG. <laughs> Thank feet you, Feet lifter says. Blank. I bought it. Okay. <laughs> hey. At least it's, you know, it's close. That's a sale, man. Yeah, it's close. Guys, I don't find Austin Butler attractive at all. This is the guy who played Elvis in that Elvis movie. Yeah, we've been watching him in the uh, in the uh, Masters of Air, Masters of the Air okay. show. And um, he, 
he's got this kind of classic look where it works. You put him in a bomber jacket and, and whatever. Yeah. But man, he does have a really interesting look. And he does look like Elvis, even he when he's not playing like Elvis. Elvis. Well, let me tell you this. I've not been attracted to Austin Butler at all this entire time that I've known of him. But until, until I saw the trailer this morning for the new Bike Riders movie. It's a film about a Midwestern motorcycle club starring Jodie Comer, Michael Shannon, Norman Reedus, and Tom Hardy, who has a terrible accent in this trailer <laughs> and in this movie. Always. Oh my gosh, he looks so silly. You're telling me this is where you think he looks I attractive? I am having a conundrum. L he looks like... <laughs> <laughs> I like dirty, raw Austin Butler. Um, this takes place in the 1960s following a fictional Chicago motorcycle club called The Vandals. And the film is based on a 1967 photo, booth of the, or photo book of the same uh, name by Danny Lyon, which is one of the most celebrated works of journalism about motorcycle club culture. Now, my dad, I grew up around I a motorcycle huh? club, okay? Like, all my baby pictures are me on my dad's Harley, like, you know, no helmet. And so... I have, like, there's a deep love I have for motorcycle clubs, and so I guess that's where this is coming from. Uh, this okay. looks like a pretty boy cosplaying a... Uh, yeah, right, oh. right, right, right. Yeah. He does have a very cool, like, Angel classic... Guy. He yeah. does have a classic look. He can play those I period pieces. He's like a he's new a James Dean. Get not as cute as James Dean. Not as talented as James Dean. But he's got something of James Dean up in that face and that hair. Up in there? Yeah. Huh. Anyway, bike riders will hit on June 21st if See, you're into that. Look, 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 look. look. And I think they both look cool. But Tom Hardy... Looks natural. Doesn't have to try. Yeah, no, I know. He's, 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 he's like not trying. Yeah. I Austin wish he'd try Butler more with, with his, his accent. With his bed head. You know, like every, <laughs> Hardy. every hair is, is uh, you know, in place a certain and way. I, and I heard he's a nightmare to work with, and that makes me even... Tom Hardy's awesome. I feel like he picks roles based on how bad the accent he can be. <laughs> <laughs> Everything he's done is What like, is his accent? Rawr, 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 rawr. And then he did the one uh, Lawless or whatever with Shia LaBeouf where he got had his throat cut. <laughs> I was like, I think he picks roles based on, can I mumble through this entire movie? Even Mad Max Fury Road. I'm like, what did oh. he say? Yeah, right, right. He doesn't and, even talk hard. And, 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 and Venom. And Venom. He's and, got like a weird cavewood kind of yeah, like, accent. Like two or three right. accents. Well, this it almost is, sounds like Bobcat. We're having Chicago Tom Hardy served up in this film. And it's bad. So okay. is it that bad? Oh no, I do. I I, just, I don't know why I love I like him so much. Tom I love that guy. Elizabeth Hurley also thinks she is gorgeous. She participates in a steamy scene with her female co-star in the trailer for her upcoming movie called Strictly Confidential. Mm. Um, Did you see who directed it? No. Her son. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that's uh, directed <laughs> that's his mom in well. a lesbian scene. All right. And All right. so. There's like kisses Lucky. of entire bodies. There's makeout sesh. So kisses you, of entire bodies. Wait, what is it? Who's this? Elizabeth Hurley? Elizabeth Hurley. Hot yeah. ass Elizabeth Hurley. She's how old? It. She's how old? 50 something. I think she's maybe 60. She's gorgeous, man. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey is leaving the Weight Watchers Board of Directors after being a member since 2015. Uh, so this is no coincidence since she announced a few months ago that she's been using the weight loss drug. Uh, Ozempic. Ozempic, yes, which pretty much goes against every tenant of Weight Watchers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so a Weight Watchers executive says Oprah will donate all of her stock to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. It was valued at around $18 million, but since her announcement, the share price has unfortunately dropped. Um, it's an effort to, quote, eliminate any perceived conflict of interest around her taking weight loss medications. It doesn't sound like there's any ill will, though. Oh, and the, st the stock tanked. Yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Oprah says she will continue to collaborate with Weight Watchers and be an advocate for weight health yeah. and obesity. Did it issues. tank because of that, or does she think it was going to tank anyway? No, so it tanked. She it probably tanked because of her yeah. saying she will not uh, seek re election to the board. But, you know, Oprah. But did they tell her to get off because she's on. She said she will not seek re election to the board. Because of the Ozempic? I don't think anybody tells Oprah anything, yeah, honestly. Tells I think. Oprah. I think she was like, I need to, somebody probably mentioned something to her and she's like, I will leave. But the fact of, you know, Weight Watchers is all about doing it yourself and self-control right, 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 right. and Oprah like, screw Just it. Bypass that. Screw it. Stab me in the leg. I yes. like my face too much. <laughs> hey, Weight Watchers, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just injected right there in front of them at the board <laughs> meeting like, Oprah, you're being pretty... Oprah, you're being a bitch. Yeah, you're kind of putting it right in her face. It's probably branded, though. Hey, Oprah, she looks Oprah good. Zempic. You know, she looks Oprah good. Oprah Zempic. That's oh, right. Oprah Zempic. Mm -hmm.
Mm. And finally, uh, when Dwayne The Rock Johnson joined the board of TKO, the company that owns WWE, they gave him the rights to his nickname, The Rock. But it turns out he got a lot more than that. They also gave him the IP and trademark rights to a whole bunch of his classic nicknames, catchphrases, and put downs. And I was just wondering, you know, we've all loved The Rock at some point in our lives. Can you name any of the other things that you think that he would possibly yeah. have ownership Woo! of? Right? Okay, that's not him. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Yes, point for Riz. Uh, does anybody know any Rock? Hey, uh, fellas! Hey, I'm The Rock. <laughs> Let uh, me just list it out uh, for you. Is that going to be better? Uh, oh, yes. cool. Are we talking like slogans? Candy ass, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. got he's, candy uh, ass. Uh, doesn't matter what your name is. Uh, can you smell what The Rock's cooking? He's already got that. Uh, the people's elbow. People's elbow. Oh, yeah. People's elbow. Uh, the, uh, let's see what else. What's How about the, uh, the rock right bottom? Say your prayers. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that's fine. Hogan. Rock okay. bottom is the rock. Rock, rock lobster. Way to go, Rafe. No rock lobster. Uh, uh, <laughs> rocking around the Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, let's see. What are some of his other? Uh, he's well, he's side, also turn it sideways and stick it up your candy ass was a catchphrase of his. He's also trademarked uh, the game rock paper scissors. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Okay. Rudy Poo. I, I don't know these references. The Brahma Bull. Uh, yeah, yeah. The People's Champion. The Great One. Know Your Role and Shut Your Mouth. I'm sorry, The Great One? Yes. So he has trademarked The Great One? Yes. So it's, I now can't put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, what about, what, what, what's Gretzky supposed to do? Uh, you did, not you use this. That from, wow. from, from The Great One. You can't do that. He also trademarked The uh. Most Electrifying Man in Sports and Entertainment. And then finally, Jabroni. So you yeah. can't use Jabroni anymore, you guys. And you use it often. Damn it. Man, well, I just, can't, boycott. I just can't put it on a t-shirt and sell it. Well. That's your crap on celebrities. Thank you for enduring that. I'm half asleep. <laughs> yeah. right. We're almost done. <laughs> that was celebrities. <laughs> We're almost done. Ever right there. <laughs> celebrities celebrating a birthday today. Justin Bieber is 30. Kesha is 37. Lupita Nyong'o, that's uh, Nakia from uh, Black Panther, is 41. Mark Paul Gossler. That is oh, Zach Morris. Zach Morris. He's 50. Jack Davenport, Commander Norrington on Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, he's also in Smash. He's 51. Javier Bardem is 55. George Eads, that's uh, Jack Dalton from uh, MacGyver, the, the OG, OG one, I believe, is 57. Zack Snyder is 58. Booker T is 59. Oh, Tim, Booker T. Booker T. Hulk Hogan. Yep. Uh, Tim Daly is 68. Uh, he's uh, Tia, Tia Leone's husband on Madam Secretary. He's also on Wings. And uh, he is the voice of... The once the voice of the animated Superman, Tim Daly is 68. Ron Howard, two first names, is 70. Catherine Bach, that's the original Daisy Duke yep. on the Dukes of Hazard. Catherine Bach is 70. Uh, Dirk Benedict, that is Starbuck from the original Battlestar Galactica and Face on the A-Team. Face is 79. And Roger Daltrey of the who? 80. Oh, he's 80. Learn is right. Wow. He's 80 years old. All right, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Kami Andrews. Happy birthday, Kami. She's been in 173 fine films, including All-Star Big Boobs, Army of Ass 3, Ass Factor 4, The Big Black Beast 1. Do you know how difficult it is to be an all-star in that? <laughs> she earned it. I mean, they're all so You're great. Right. They're all so great. How does one become an all-star? They must well, be... Well, she was an all-star after... She was an all-star after this movie, Big Bodacious Tatas 3, <laughs> Big Rack Attack 6, Black in the Saddle Again, Bomb Ass White Booty 2, Feeding Frenzy 5, Learn's Favorite Liquid Gold 11. I love that movie. And who could forget a role in 2005's Who Let the Hoes Out? Who? 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 Two, two. Who oh, let the horse out to? Two, that's what I said. <laughs> Kami Andrews is 49 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays. And that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Rafe. Yes? We'll have this week's e-memoriam where we have to say goodbye to some folks, unfortunately, but got to do what you got to do. It needs to be done. It needs to be done. Rafe's e-memoriam after the break. It is 7.48. Friday, traffic and weather, it's The Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. It's time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Exit ramp from 44 westbound uh, to Lafayette is uh, blocked due to a crash right now. 
It's also three lanes blocked due to a crash 270 northbound just after Dorset. Your point forecast, early rain and snow mix, high of 51. Right now it's 35 at the Point Studio. So let's start off with an easy one. Okay. You have this incredible career with Everclear, right. made all of these records. You've had, I would think, multiple opportunities to do like a solo record, but you're going to put out a solo record for seemingly the first time in your career. For not seemingly the first time. The first time in your career. Why now? Well, I mean, you know as well as I do that Everclear has been my baby from the beginning. Ripped on your future. Imagine transforming your life and career in just a couple months. Not years, months. And it's all possible in three easy steps with Centric. Step one, decide to make a change. You've got the power to rewrite your story starting today. Step two, dive into Centric's accelerated tech program. Whether you're into coding or cybersecurity or network administration, Centric has you covered. In as little as four months, you could get the skills you need with hands-on training that sets you up for, uh, for real-world success. And step three, step out and start your new career. Centric's not just about learning. It's about launching. Launching you into a career that's as dynamic and forward-moving as you are. And here's the best part. You choose how to learn. On-site or online, day, evening, or flex option, Centric's flexible learning fits your life, not the other way around. With new programs starting all the time, the right moment is whenever you're ready. So change your life in just three easy steps today by going to centric.com slash Riz, C-E-N-T-R-I-Q dot com slash Riz. <laughs> it's like Blake-20. Yeah. Good to go? Yeah. All right, we are uh, very, very excited about this one tonight. I have to tell you this, Amy Lee. Amy Lee from Evanescence. Hi. Peabody Opera House show tonight so it was so great when we announced this particular show because it was almost like a firework that went off twice because people were like oh evanescence is coming back and they'd be excited and then oh it's with an orchestra Ooh, you know cool. what i mean people yeah. were so excited about awesome. this and playing this beautiful peabody opera house it's the it's the perfect place for it you've got to play some pretty great venues during this run with the orchestra right that's right it's been uh, a whole new world normally you know, what we gravitate towards and what I want is like no seats in the house, like no built-in seats. We have people standing up, it's rock and roll, you know, everything about it is this whole different vibe. And this time for the first time and you know, I don't know, over 15 years, it's like, okay, we need like classy, beautiful <laughs> theaters with seats and we're going to make a program and I might wear some fancy clothes. It's going to be all different. It's been really beautiful. We played some historical places. One of my favorite theaters um, in, in my hometown in New York is in Brooklyn. It's called the King's Theater. And we just got to actually play there after, you know, I'd only been there seeing other things that I'm a big fan of. I saw Bjork there. I saw Eric Badu there. Um, and it was such an experience. Really, it's been very fun and and fun in a different way like a, almost like whoa like out of body experience kind of cool thing to do this because it's not woods.com that is the website i want you to check it out uh what what awaits you there well a special offer from woods basement systems the all things basement tea experts they do it all basement waterproofing foundation repair maybe you got some leak issues maybe you got some moisture issues down there you want to have that checked out by the pros crawl space repair mold prevention egress windows and concrete leveling now i needed concrete leveling bad my front porch was uh was down in the mud this thing was sinking turns out the uh, previous owner was just like um, you know, having it, having it jacked up like temporarily and every single year it was going down. I didn't know that. This thing created a horrible problem for me. It was a safety hazard. It was a horrible curb appeal. So I needed it done right. I needed it to go, uh, you know, this is like a, a, an expansive problem. So I called in Woods to have a look at it and they said, okay, yeah, we can do this with concrete leveling and piers. So it's fixed forever. And they did just that. They fixed my settling uh, front porch and they can even fix your settling driveway if that's one of your issues. Uh, they raised highway slab eight inches, so they can do your project, I assure you. Go to moonloveswoods.com. You get a special offer, whether it is the basement waterproofing. Maybe it's leaky uh, basement issues. Maybe it's raising your driveway. Well, there is a deal waiting for you. Moonloveswoods.com. Prevent further damage. These problems aren't going to get better with time. They're going to get better with Woods because the problem's going to be fixed forever. Woods Basement Systems, the all things basement the experts. Special offer at moonloveswoods.com. 
Will there be celebrity guests on this show? Who does number two work for? Have you ever wondered what your boss's bathroom routine is like? Well, me neither. But we might find out today whether we like it or not on the number two show. In the wild ecosystem of the workplace, there's a unique species we've all encountered and have to navigate. The boss. Ugh. Just as David Attenborough would guide us through the behaviors of lions and gazelles on the African plains, let me take you on an office safari. You won't need binoculars, but perhaps a strong cup of coffee or a sneaky sip of the flask you keep in your top drawer, Frank. That's right, Frank. We all know about the whiskey. Get a handle on things. From the prowling micromanager to the elusive Captain Cryptic, here's a glimpse into a few of the bosses you're bound to run into during your 9 to 5 jungle adventure. Hey, can we get a cool graphic right there? Like a, I don't know, like a cutaway to like a guy in a safari hat that's like, Welcome to the jungle! And it's like, rawr, like a big jaguar noise. No. Okay, moving on with the monologue. The micromanager from hell. Stalks your every click like a digital big brother. If they could, they'd probably control your mouse pointer from their office. Personal space? They ain't never even heard of it. They want to camp out in your ass like it's Yosemite. The Ghost Boss. Paranormal edition. Woo! Sightings are rarer than Bigfoot, but their cryptic midnight emails haunt your inbox and are damn near as blurry and unclear. You may never see them, but their passive-aggressive notes are proof enough that the truth is out there. Woo. The parent boss, but not really. They drop outdated slang, dab unironically, and think that TikTok is a brand of smartwatch. They're hip, they're cool, and they're dying to tell you a dad joke that will toe the line of getting HR involved. In a world where your boss could be a friend, a foe, or a complete enigma, navigating the workplace becomes a dark comedy in and of itself. Each day is a roll of the dice, a game of chance, or a slow descent into corporate madness. But, welcome to the jungle, and don't forget your coffee. Welcome to the jungle! Rawr. What the hell, man? Where was that graphic when I asked for it at the beginning of the monologue? Well, today we're flipping the script. We're trading in that luxurious radio studio for something a little more... intimate. <laughs> My guest is the voice that wakes you up, shakes you up, and probably makes your morning commute bearable. It's the one, the only, the man who usually is number one, but today finds himself in the number two spot. Scott Rizzuto. Hi, Rafe. Hey. How's it going, Riz? Well, I'm just sitting in the stall here reading. You go-getters out there ready to step into a career that's more than just a job. Hotshot Sports Bar and Grill calling all leaders to join their A-team in creating the ultimate party scene in St. Louis. Now picture this. Leading the charge at the best party in town while catching all the action-packed sports and getting paid for it. Yeah, and Hot Shots knows how to treat its managers right. We're talking competitive starting salaries, perks like employee discounts, awesome benefits, sign-on bonuses, and let's not forget about the best part, endless Hot Shots, tacos, and wings. Where else can you work and enjoy epic game nights on the clock? So join an industry leader that's been dominating the scene in St. Louis since 1990. Become... Part of the Hot Shots family and live the dream. Leading the charge and throwing unforgettable parties day in and day out. So, are you ready to dive in? It's as easy as a few taps on your phone. Submit your application at hotshotsnet.com slash jobs and gear up to join the management squad at Hot Shots. We're not just a workplace. We're a community, a home for sports fanatics, proud partners of the St. Louis Blues. Don't just watch the game. Be a part of it. Apply now and score big by leading the Hot Shots team to victory. Time to save some green. Go visit my good friends over at Mount Top Motor Company out there in Troy. They have an incredible lineup of cars, trucks, SUVs. In fact, you can see the whole, whole inventory right now at mounttopmotors.com. And to top it off, no payments for 90 days. They have some of the best financing around, all kinds of ways to save some money. And what's amazing about them is they're just down to earth. It's a no pressure environment. So you're going to find the right car. You're going to enjoy the process because they're amazing. A shout out to our friends over at Hat Launch. Let me see one of those hats there, Rafe. 
Uh, t- oh, boy. Sorry. <laughs> 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 the exploder just kicked in. Dude. Yeah. Uh, holding up to the uh, to the webcams here. Oh, those are cute. Yeah, yeah. These are the hats that uh, the VIPs tonight will be getting, or tomorrow night, at Riz Show Live will be getting. Nice. They're are 10, 10 years of the Riz Show hats. Because we'll be celebrating 10 years come April. Congratulations. Wow. Mm. These are special. I, I'm sure we'll put these on sale at some point. But, uh, yeah, hot launch. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Look awesome. Hey, I know, uh, you know, learn your dragon ass today. Yep. Downright delirious. Yeah. More so than normal. Are you going to make it? Yes. I have a whole plan. Like, we have. What's your plan? We have rehearsal later. What's your, <laughs> we're gonna, we're, What's a plan? Here's what's me you, on you, a Friday. Uh, <laughs> what you, what you, what you, what, what? I'm going to leave here promptly after I edit some audio. I'm going to go straight to either Starbucks or whatever coffee that has a drive through is available. I'm going to get myself a oat milk shaken espresso. Um, yeah, we have a Starbucks right here. Yeah, I'm going to be all over it. They don't have a drive through They don't have a drive through though. So you have to actually interact with the human. And then okay. I'm going to proceed to <laughs> chug that Venti all the way to the pageant. And by the time I get there, it will have hit my bloodstream. Mm-hmm. And you'll and be good I'm to go. And I'm on the moon. Not this moon, but the actual moon. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're on top of moon. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm on your shoulders. Let's all right. go. Hey, if you are listening to us right now, you're blasting the radio because you don't want to miss a word we say. Thank you. Thanks for taking us that seriously. But if you are, if you got us, I mean, to 11, you ripped off the knob just because you're, you're dragging ass, you're tired, you need us talking to you to stay awake, you might have a serious health condition. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. A study found people who employ, quote, alertness strategies, especially when driving, are more likely to have sleep apnea. Hmm. Rafe, do you have sleep apnea? I am, yeah. I'm sure I do. So, uh, researchers polled people with like sleep cured. apnea, and uh, and then people who didn't. So, researchers studied people who have it and don't have it. And the ones who did have sleep apnea were far more likely to use three or more strategies to avoid dozing off while driving. Man. And the most, the three most common strategies were blasting the radio, driving with the windows down, and chugging coffee nonstop. <laughs> Me in a couple more minutes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't drink coffee when I was younger, and I remember when I was, uh, I mean, I have multiple jobs now, but when, when I was younger, I had a whole bunch of jobs, and then I'd go all the way to Belleville for uh, for band practice and all this, and I was, like, constantly just exhausted, and driving mm-hmm. um, became dangerous, like, a lot. And the, the old classics of put your hand out the window and make an airplane, you know, do oh, this yeah. thing. I would do that on road trips. We were always, like, driving to Springfield for a show and then coming straight back and doing that kind of stuff. And one of them that I found was not good for me was blasting my favorite heavy music, like all my metal bands. Mm. Dude, it's metal peaceful. put me to sleep. It put me to sleep. So really? I would, that's when I fell in love with, like, Celine Dion and Josh Groban and all these, like, like oh, really? those kind of things. Because reverse effect? Because it, it would keep my attention. For some reason, metal I'll, just lulled me to bed. Listen, I'll be honest. In the morning, driving in, you know, I, I do. We, I'm telling you, it was a weird phenomenon. Us little baby, I, I, don't I, say a word. Was, I don't know if it was, like, the simplicity of it or, like, the repetitive nature of it. Like, it just lulled me to sleep. And mm. I Because I, I remember I was, I was coming back from Belleville on, on a practice, and I was blasting Zayo or something. And I was like... I, I found myself getting to the next verse and going, oh, my gosh, I, th- I think I dozed. I do employ sleep, you know, uh, alertness strategies when I come in in the morning. I don't have sleep apnea. I just have lack of sleep. Yeah. Uh, I think. But uh, yeah. I, I have to listen to uh, listen to people talking. Mm. Like, yeah. if I listen to music in the morning. No, that's a bad idea. Not for me. I'm listening to Juvenile back that ass up. Mm. Wait, wait. You're saying you listen to music I in listen, the morning? No, I don't listen that, to music. That's what I'm saying. It, it's like when you're tired, your favorite music almost kind of zen, zen zone. You ever hear this one? Hold your debit card out your window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or your that's phone. A good now. One. Oh, my God. Now it's your Hold phone. your debit card or phone out your window. <laughs> oh, That'll dude, keep no you way. awake. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely That'll keep a good you one. awake. <laughs> but people, uh, you know, they chew gum. Uh, shifting around in your seat is a is a alertness strategy. Uh, yeah, people will will eat. People will pull over to take a nap. People will splash cold water on their face. If it's wintertime, uh, turn the heat off and just be cold. Yeah, you know, because then you're all tense yeah. up like this. And or you could do the Dumb and Dumber thing where you smack your face a few times. Yeah, that's the that's the Jeff Daniels you know face slapping technique. Yeah, number one thing in times. the old days, smoking cigs. Whoo. 
You want to stay up for a long ride? Just start ripping darts, dude. You'll be buzzed well, out. Well, just start lighting one after you yeah. one off the next one. That used to get me through some long car rides back in the day. Where yeah, I was me too. Just ripping darts one off the other. I actually just looked, staying high, baby. I actually looked forward to that. Me too. Like you just light one cigarette off the next, and wow. then your car just stinks. Car stinks. Stinks to hell for Breath like. The world is my ashtray. I'm throwing oh, cigarettes disgusting. out the window. I love Yuck. it. So I miss that. it. I, I miss love it. it. I hate oh, it. I miss oh, man. it. I hate it so much. It's disgusting and grosses me out. But it but used you to be cool as hell doing it. I, that's true. It and used to be the go-to stay awake move. Is lighting one cigarette off the next, just yeah. chain smoking. Yeah. If you wanted to get real wild. Listen, if you regularly, what? You just, you know. I called parliaments. Parliaments had the cocaine holder in the, oh, yeah, yeah. In, in the filter. Yeah. P-Funks. Yeah. Smoke one of those, you could drive cross country. <laughs> <laughs> no stops. That was my cigarette of choice. Parliament? Parliament. Oh, yeah. Ooh. P-Funks, yeah. baby. Uh, Parliament lights. <laughs> Hey, if you Different if you days. regularly do stuff like that, like you know the alertness strategies to make sure you don't fall asleep at the wheel, uh, you might have sleep apnea, and you are not getting a solid night's sleep. No, and sleep is so important for all health, you guys. We got to do better. Okay. Well, yeah, that's just good night. Take a nap real quick. Yeah. Good night, Learn. Good night, everybody. All right. Uh, while Learn's napping, it's time <laughs> for this week's e memoriam. Ray Williams. Oh, this week's E Memoriam brought to you by me, the coolest guy in St. Louis who's going to make a bunch of people mad real quick. For those of you who don't know, the E Memoriam is a lot like the Oscars in Memoriam, in which we say goodbye to folks we lost this week because of opinions we had, topics we discussed, emails we received, or just because they're completely guano crazy. But either way, we're going to get to it and say goodbye to some people we're going to miss dearly. Starting off, this is a sad one to say goodbye to for everyone in this room. It's the 2SG's record-breaking longest album tease. Mm. Oh, yeah. <sighs> we over. have to say goodbye Sorry, this man. week to one of the best marketing campaigns in rock and roll history. Thank you. Thank you. We no longer have a multi-year teasing campaign with literally no details or updates regarding an album release. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 2SG's album... Action Figures is available on all streaming platforms as of yesterday, which means King Scott can no longer tease it out. Sorry. Who knew that 2SG stood for two solar gyrations, a.k.a. two goddamn years, which is exact amount of time spent by King Scott vaguely promising a new record. <laughs> so bye-bye, King's publicity company, Zero Information Marketing Incorporated. <laughs> Until the next campaign for the next 2SG studio album due out in 2027 or 2028 starts, which we presume is approximately next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. It did take two years to fill up that balloon, and today yeah. it was deflated. Download yeah. the album today. Hundreds of thousands of dollars as well to get that. If you're sad about it, just download the album. Bye-bye. Next up. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Bassists. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> We pissed off a lot of bassists this week when we made fun of how little their opinion matters when it comes to a band. When we reported that the Rage Against the Machine bassist was more like lean against the wall and wait for Zach to tell me what to do. Yep. In fact, bassists matter so little I gave up halfway through writing this. And so bye bye <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. I lost interest. Oh. I started researching what bassists do and completely lost interest, so... Uh -huh. Just uh, sit in the corner, slap the bass, and wait for somebody else to make the creative decisions. Mm. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> religious and non-religious people who were upset over Jesus' penis. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. I upset some folks during a relatively relaxed and open conversation about our beliefs in ghosts, the afterlife, reincarnation, miracles, karma, etc. at all when I wondered aloud if Jesus had a big unit. It was simply a thought that, you know, perhaps it was just simply a thought that got out, okay? And that perhaps I brought up that maybe, just maybe, he was able to walk on water because he could balance on his giant hog deep below the surface as his feet skimmed across the top of the water. <laughs> what? Apparently, there are quite a few folks who believed he had a moderate to small penis. And I, for one, 
would like to go on record that I did not share this belief. It is my firm belief that when the stone was rolled away and the OG ghost, the original ghost of all time, Jesus Christ, came strolling out with his big old phantom wing trailing behind him and ascended to heaven like a boss, baby. And it is my firm belief that if there is an afterlife and a heaven, that I'll be in the back of the line and Jesus will come to the gates and say, Hey, did one of you guys start a rumor that I had a huge penis? <laughs> to which I will proudly raise my hand and be like, You're you damn right I did. <laughs> and I will presumably skip the judgment line and hang out with Stevie Ray Vaughan and cool Jesus on a fast pass. Mm. Or I will deeply regret what I just said. <laughs> Either way. Oh, you're cutting the line, bud. Our apologies. Well, let's hope. Bye-bye. While we're on the subject of penises, guys with long, thin penises. What? Sorry, my dudes. <laughs> with the skinny twizzlers. With the... <laughs> With the thin wizards. <laughs> but the research is in, my brothers, and long live the tuna can boys. <laughs> we upset some skinny johns this week when we unveiled scientific research that solidified 2024 as you're the chode, baby. Woo. <laughs> Women don't care about length. The results are in, and all they care about is a little bit of girth. So for all you, uh, for all you guys out there sporting big, big old long telephone poles. <laughs> Tree stump boys are in town. <laughs> Step aside. <laughs> She's about to have a seat on the stump. Oh, God. Bye bye. <laughs> seat, seat on, on a stump. stump. Nice. <laughs> you know what? In hindsight, I wish I'd edited that. Yeah. Out. But it's out there now. It's out there now for everybody. And finally, Enjoy. I would be remiss if I we didn't say goodbye to something Riz is ready to. Put out the pasture. Childhood dreams. What? Uh-oh. <laughs> we have to say goodbye this week to any children with hopes and or dreams after Riz oh mercilessly God. eviscerated an eight-year-old child who didn't nail the national anthem perfectly at an Indiana Pacers game. Okay, it wasn't her. It was her parents. It was her. Our fearless leader took the brave stance of brutal honesty in telling children they suck hard as hell. And have no business pursuing things that they find fun or interesting unless they have perfect innate talent. Mm. He reminded us that there is no way any value in encouraging a child. None. Don't encourage them to try or face their fears or help them develop a sense of resiliency or self-confidence in the face of failure. Bye-bye, babies. Unless you're in the top 1% of promising youth, Scott Rizzuto would like you to turn off this program, give up on your life, and go work a soulless job where your ugly lack of talent won't be on display <laughs> for the rest of the world to shield our eyes hey, from. listen, by eight, she should be working. Okay. So, <laughs> double double down. Down. Not saying so, working. Double down, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> and now on to the real RIPs. We lost a few, a couple wrestling legends this week. We lost one of the original four horsemen, Ole Anderson, brother of Arn, keeper of the axe. One of the legendary four horsemen of the WCW. It's sad to see him go. We also lost Virgil. Sidekick and eventually his own thing with the billion dollar man, Ted DiBiase, from the peak of WWF yeah. in the 80s. And he looked good and just uh, the guy used to come out in a bow tie and just cufflinks. And he looked good. Yeah, that Riz, was it. Riz doesn't like a bow tie. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, but on okay. Virgil, though. And Virgil, <laughs> it was okay. Virgil, yeah. He just had like the Chippendale thing going on. It was nice. We lost Virgil and. This sucks for everybody, uh, uh, and especially the comedy world. Mr. Richard Lewis. We lost a comedy legend this week uh, when he died of a heart attack. Complications from Parkinson's disease. He was one of the funniest dudes, one of the pioneers of comedy. Uh, really started the genre of therapy comedy and uh, uh, self-deprecation and exposing, uh, you know, raw nerve and real parts of your life on stage and not just hiding behind the jokes. So R.I.P. Richard Lewis. And that concludes this week's E. Memorial. All right. Rafe Williams, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. We'll come back with your Friday Fail Stories. Uh, we'll start off with, uh, oh, the insurance claim that was thrown out. Oh. For just 
one of the most ridiculous reasons I've ever I've ever seen. I can't wait. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. It's 813 Traffic and Weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Uh, severe delays and increasing delays due to three lanes being blocked because of a crash 270 northbound just after Dorset. Your point forecast, early rain and snow mix. High of 51. Right now it's 35 at the Point Studio. What's going on? It's Liv, and I'm in the Four Brothers Mead tent, joined by a few of the members of Papa Roach. How's it going, guys? I'm great. I'm great. Yeah, great. I'm great. Good to be here. Point Fest again. Yes, and I know we're like, doing it. you're a Point Fest veteran. This is my first one. Oh, really? And the guys were telling me, he's like, you know what? Jacoby one time came over here, took his pants off into the whole interview in his underwear. Damn, I don't so even remember So you are a that. bit overdressed. Damn. <laughs> It's yeah, that's part of my Are we yeah. gonna roll the clip, <laughs> dude. I gotta see this. I, f I totally forgot that. <laughs> Apparently, it happened. That I know. I do look good with my pants off, though. <laughs> but yeah, that sorry. would push ticket sales for tonight. Totally. We're so excited that you guys are here. So, as your kid showed interest in hockey, and they've asked you about it, but you know that it's expensive to get into, and you're wondering how. Can I get my kid to try this without spending a fortune? Well, I have some good news, and all thanks to First Community. They've teamed up with the Blues, and they have the Little Blues program, which is a hockey program for kids who've never played ho organized hockey before. And what's wonderful is that it's a reasonable cost. You get everything included with, your, uh, with the payment there. And so you kids get six weeks of on-ice instruction, and you get all that equipment included with the registration fee. So that means the helmet, the stick, the pads, and yes, even those skates, all included. So you're going to save a fortune. You're going to get your kids in there, and they're going to find out if they really want to continue hockey or if this is a great six weeks of learning and uh, having a good time because you're going over the Centene Ice Community Center there where the Blues practice. So you're going to be on the best of the best with the best of the best. And it's a great way to get your kids interested in that and find out what they're into. So swing by any first community. Ask them about the Little Blues program. Again, they're located everywhere throughout St. Louis. So go to First Community. That's firstcommunity.com. This is Rizzuto. Not only is he rich, but he also has a lot of money. And he's looking to invest in the next big idea. Hi, my name is Riz, and I have a lot of money. I mean, almost too much money. So I'm looking to invest, and I've asked the fellas to come on down to my office and pitch me their ideas. Do they have what it takes to be in the biz? Meet King Scott. By day, he's the producer of the number one morning show in St. Louis. But by night, he's not at work anymore. Interesting. He says that despite all of his shortcomings, his one long coming is his knack for decent ideas. Hello, I'm uh, King Scott, and I'm here to pitch my business idea to Riz, and I know he will definitely invest in this. It's a revolutionary business idea. It's going to change the world over, and I definitely have what it takes to be in the biz. Sorry. Sorry. Hey. Take a seat. Uh, hello there. All right. Yeah. Make sure you speak into the microphone. All right. Yeah. I definitely will. Um, can I move the mic a little bit? Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, hi. I'm uh, King Scott. <laughs> I'm so honored to be on RizViz. I mean, a big fan. Love the show. Uh, hi, Gary. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I uh, I got a lot uh, great. I got a really wonderful item, and you complain almost the biggest complaint I think in your life is your chair. And I actually did a study recently with the Pew Research Center because that's all they do is chair research. That college or high school students, sorry, their number one complaint in school that's holding them back is chairs, and that's why I'm gonna show you something that's gonna revolutionize everything. And it's making the most comfortable thing mobile. 
And uh, I I'm pretty excited to show you what I have. It's the Rizu Toilet. Rizu Toilet. Great product. Uh, just what? Just a couple weeks away, and uh, that means rain is on the way. And we take our roofs for granted. We know our heads are dry, so everything must be okay up there. But, oh, you don't know. You, you Have you put a ladder up on the side of the house and climbed up there? See what's going on? Shingles out of place. Even if I was up there, I wouldn't know what's going on. Happy Roof Company, local company. If you have a leaky roof, old roof, damaged roof, or ugly roof, the Happy Roof Company should be your first call. Over 50 years combined experience, roofing, siding, gutters, Financing available, A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, free estimates, competitive pricing, cost-effective solutions on flat roofing, metal roofs. And if you call today, they will have somebody out to look at your issue within 24 hours. That's because, again, Happy Roof Company, they're local. At least get them up there for an inspection because that little problem now could become a costly problem down the road. It's the Happy Roof Company, 314 Six six five three zero zero one. That's three one four six six five three zero zero one. Online at thehappyroof.com. It's the Happy Roof Company. They put the happy in happy endings. It is a very, very big day in the land of uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper fans everywhere, and I am so unbelievably honored to be joined today by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea St. Louis is saying hello to you. I love St. Louis, and I fondly miss the raucous nights, the Mississippi nights that we used to have over there. And um, hello to everybody. Love to one and all. Man, it's it's really great to hear your voice, but also, too, it's wonderful to have a new Red Hot Chili Peppers album that is out today. And John Frusciante back in the Chili Peppers. Flea, can you kind of talk to us a little bit about how he got back into the, to the fold with you guys? And I know that you guys had maintained a friendship even when he wasn't in the band. We're all right, folks, time for Funny Fan. Hail Story! People thought they had the perfect plan, but somewhere along the line, oh my God, that perfect plan went completely sideways. Yes. And it became an Uber. No. An Ultra. Don't you dare. Don't you dare I say it. Let's do it, Rick. Mega. Oh, yeah. Okay. You sound like Failed. Nice. Thanks. And your Friday Fail Stories are sponsored by... Moritz Royce Jewelry, the official jeweler of the Rizzuto Show. If you deal with chronic, debilitating pain, there are some things you just can't do. Like throw a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> okay. You're not oh, wrong. <laughs> wait. Wait for it. I'll tie it all in together. So a 36-year-old woman in Ireland was in a car accident seven years ago. Her vehicle was rear-ended. She filed a personal injury lawsuit for $825,000, claiming Ooh. she was left with a disabling condition. Aww. She claimed that she had constant back pain, constant neck pain. She couldn't work. Um, and in fact, she couldn't work for more than five years. She also couldn't play with her kids. She couldn't carry out basic chores. She couldn't even take out the trash. And the case has been tied up for a while, and Recently, uh, the court was shown a newspaper photo from 2018, less than a year after the crash, showing the woman participating in a Christmas tree throwing contest. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> She's actually heaving a large spruce tree in the photo. Wow. Wow. The healing properties? I think you owe the government $825,000. Yeah. Uh, the woman Oops. said that yeah. even though she may have looked happy, she was in excruciating pain at the time. Judged in by it, case thrown out. <laughs> it was horrible pain. Fail. But I couldn't just let that other gal win. See if you could find the picture. Okay. Do we know okay, if she so won the contest? I think so. Oh, good. Good for her. Okay. Uh, look up Christmas tree throwing contest. Insurance <laughs> the best, should man. come right up. That lady was chucking it. I saw a photo you of her. You see a picture of this? And I'm going, what? I had no idea such games existed. Oh, it's Ireland. Probably everybody's hammered. Somebody thought it was a good idea to throw Christmas trees. Right. They're heavy, Does her though. pants say, I just can't? <laughs> I, can't I mean, the photo, she, I mean, 
she don't look like she's in any pain. All right, here, uh, here it is. Oh my goodness, that smile. Yeah, she's got <laughs> to pay back that eight hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I think oh, she's yeah. doing all right. Yeah, doing all right. The tree healed her, man. This is good. This was in the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a dope. Uh, what a dummy. Some criminals are thinking on such a higher level that it's difficult to understand what their plan was. 24-year-old guy in Nebraska walked into a quick shop convenience store early Tuesday morning, demanded money. He had a hostess cinnamon roll box on his right hand. <laughs> <laughs> now, the clerk was worried he might have a gun in the box. So, yeah, here's the cash. Here's everything from the register. The cops tracked the guy down on foot, searched him, and found a handgun, the cash, and 4.1 grams of methamphetamine. Now, that explains the, quote, higher level of his thinking. But seriously, what was the point of the hostess box if he did have a gun? I don't know. He was arrested on multiple felony counts, including robbery, possession of a controlled substance, and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. Fail. So I'm thinking, like, finger guns. You know, you have your finger in yeah. your pocket because you don't really have a gun. Uh-huh. But he had the hostess box over his hand. <laughs> right. Well, he and, didn't but he did really gun. have a gun. I don't know. He's reasonable. Sus. Hey, man, he's seen uh, Terminator 2 one too many times. You know, he's got the box of roses. and got the Oh, movie. yeah. Yeah. Now, great teachers find new and creative ways to help kids learn. And sometimes really bad teachers do, too. So a high school in Albuquerque, New Mexico, is dealing with a lawsuit after a chemistry teacher thought having actual sword fights was a good idea. What? Yeah. Uh, she was doing a lesson on metal and melding brought actual swords to class. One was a thin European style rapier sword, like a, I think like a fencing like sword. Fencing type thing? And the other was a samurai sword. She had uh, the kids rearrange the desks into a fighting ring, started a timer, and had kids battle it out for two minutes. Predictably, the kids got a little too into it. Uh, a 16 year old girl ended up with a serious gash on her right wrist. Oh. It severed multiple nerves and tendons. She had to have surgery. Oh, my gosh. According to the lawsuit, the teacher yelled, I'm in trouble. Yep. Told <laughs> everyone to delete footage from their phones. Nobody called 911 for 30 minutes. Whoa. Fired two months later. The girl's family is seeking an undisclosed amount. That was... She just panicked. Failed. I mean, absolute yeah. panic. Oh, my Rafe gosh. Rafe talked about that where... You know, if you're the uh, boy, or if you have multiple boys in the family, you spend most of your childhood trying to not get in trouble. Yeah, figure Don't out stories. Yeah. Figure out like, oh, oh my gosh, delete oh my those gosh. pictures. Get our story straight. Yeah, there's 25 percent of your childhood is getting your story straight. Yeah. So like it's it's almost like a, it's like a thin, almost like a pirate sword uh, rather, rather than a fencing sword. Maybe think like uh, the Three Musketeers. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, that type of sword. But I also yeah, but love, they do fencing uh, with those, right? I don't know because the fencing is like is like almost the not thin, like bladed. Yeah. yeah, it's it's and it's got the little dot on the end. I'm not, I'm sure, you know, fencers are going to yell at us. Yeah, it's called a foil. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah, it. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> this thing looks much yeah. scarier. This uh, this pirate scarier. sword, a rapier, <laughs> rapier. A uh, woman from California told the cops that she stole an Amazon worker's van last week because she quote just needed to get back to San Jose. <laughs> Are you going? I got places to go. San so cops in Palo Alto got a call uh, just after 3.30 last Thursday afternoon from an Amazon driver who said somebody had stolen his van loaded with undelivered packages. Hmm. The worker had left the van while making a delivery with the keys in the ignition and the engine running. I know that happens a lot on my block. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably I, the standard, right? Because they're, they're flying. I see they're them flying. physically running. Now they got the big, like, electric ones. Yeah. With the cool headlights. Yeah. Kind of look like toys. Yeah, and I'll see the Amazon drivers. I mean, stop the car, open up the slide, you know, sliding side, mm -hmm. bolt out, go back in. Let me say this about Amazon drivers. Friendliest of the delivery drivers I've noticed. Like, I'll go on a walk sometimes after work, and I'll see people getting packages delivered, and the Amazon drivers are always so sweet to wave and smile at me. And I've I'm got like, some great you. drivers on my street. Uh, I find the friendliest are the are is my UPS and FedEx really? guys. Yeah. I don't see so anything. nice. Anyway, so as uh, as this guy was returning to his van, the worker saw it being driven away. Uh, investigators worked with Amazon dispatchers to live track the stolen van and found the woman getting out of the van after she parked it at an Amazon facility in San Jose 
about 20 miles away, which was nice of her to put the car back. She's a driver now. Wow. Uh, 36 year old uh, Elena Flores arrested, booked into jail for felony vehicle theft and for committing a felony. Well, while out on bail for a felony. So. Fail. Just needed to get back to San Jose. How did she know where to get to the Amazon? Like, was there a GPS that was going, turn left? Maybe. She's like, I'll just follow this. <clears throat> hmm. But your brilliant plan is to steal an Amazon van, which you know is tracked. Is tracked. All right, headline out of Tampa. Florida man tries to steal plane and immediately crashes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you have to look forward to. When I moved to, to, to Florida. I'm not moving to Tampa, though. The movie's made it look so easy. Who knows so where easy. you're moving, dude? Every time we have a Florida man story, you're like, oh, that's not where I'm moving. That's you, not you're where eliminating I'm mov- every city in Yeah, Florida. I know where I'm moving. <laughs> but to Boca. Boca Raton. Del, 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 Del Vista. Vista. Del, Del, Boca Del, Del, Del Vista Boca? Del Vista Boca. So that happens. Welcome so that- to America's penis. <laughs> Florida. Florida. You're going to be on the underside? Of I'm going to be on is. the Atlantic underside. Yeah, dude, that's, <laughs> the ri- that's rhino tough. <laughs> no, I'm going to be on the Atlantic side. Oh, okay. That's the... Sensitive. <laughs> so last Monday, 43-year-old Bruce Plummer, uh, man, he broke into two planes at a small airport. He can only get one of the planes to start. Officials later found the plane off the runway where it crashed into a fence and pole. Caught on surveillance video getting out of the plane and uh, leaving the side of the crash. Now, here's Bruce's downfall. Cops found a gun and a tactical vest along the perimeter of the airport. Gun registered to Bruce. Okay. <laughs> Cops go right to his house, arrested. He just, he just couldn't get it up. Couldn't get it up. No, nope, indeed. Uh, been charged with burglary, armed burglary, grand larceny, and possession of a bulletproof vest during a crime. Fail. Oh, I didn't know that was a, They're uh, illegal. a charge. Oh, yeah. Bulletproof vests are illegal? It said well, vest during, during a crime. crime. Oh. Because yeah. I guess... Because I guess that means hey, you're planning, you're planning on more. a shootout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's good to know next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make yeah. notes, Scott. Yeah, Scott, I'll not be notes. doing. When I'm loitering, I will not be wearing that. All right, just before 5:30 last Wednesday at a grocery store in Akron, Ohio, a guy wearing a mask and a black hooded sweatshirt approached the customer service counter to buy something. He then told the clerk he had a gun, threatened to shoot the clerk while demanding money from the register. One clerk sounded the alarm, causing the suspect to bolt out of the store without any money from the till. And without collecting the change from whatever he bought. So, in essence, this dummy lost money during a robbery attempt. <laughs> Failed. We all have our bad days, man. Uh, an Indiana man was arrested Wednesday after he allegedly tried to buy a Porsche from a dealership with a $78, uh, sorry, $78 million check. <laughs> and then refused to leave when he was turned down. So, this dummy, 21-year-old Connor... Connor from uh, Bloomington, Indiana, walked into the St. Matthew's Porsche dealership with a $78 million check in hopes of buying a new Porsche. Dealership refused to sell him the car. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get cash back and everything. Connor then allegedly walked around to the back entrance of the dealership looking for car keys. Refused to leave until the dealership sold him the Porsche. Scared he might do something reckless, employees called the police. Guy was arrested, faces one count of criminal trespass, one count of disorderly conduct. Through their investigation, police said they found that he had attempted to do a similar thing the day before at a Land Rover uh, Rover dealership. He tried to buy a Land Rover there with a $12 uh, $12 million check. Failed. (laughs) There are good cops and a couple bad ones. Here's here's one of the bad ones. Uh, 33-year-old police officer, Columbus, Mississippi, lost her job after she was caught shoplifting while on duty. Her name is Robin Connor. She was working and in uniform. And last Wednesday, when she was uh, walking out of a Dick's Sporting Goods store, she had a $140 pair of shoes with her. An employee saw it happen, called 911. Robin was still in uniform when fellow officers got her into custody. And this part's got a sting. They took her to jail in her own police car. Oh, wow. wow. That's special. Failed. That is awesome. Anybody curious as to what shoes they were? I want to know. I'm thinking a pair of like... uh, Like boots or something? Like hiking boots? Yeah, hiking boots. I kind of see that too. A pair of Timberlands. (laughs) Uh, The city council held a special meeting the next day and unanimously voted to have her canned. Uh, the chief of police called the incident embarrassing for their entire department. <laughs> so she's out of a job and now is facing misdemeanor shoplifting. She get to keep the shoes? 
Can you, no. Can you imagine? Doesn't can you imagine being the the employee has called and be like, hey, yeah, hey, we just got robbed uh, by a cop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is weird. And finally, I don't know about you, but from everything I've heard about fentanyl, I wouldn't even want to touch it. No. Let alone hide it inside of my body. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody ballooned it. So a 33-year-old guy in Florida named Robert Whitaker has been sentenced to seven years in prison for a nasty habit that got even nastier in a police car. So Robert was arrested last year, and the in-car dash cam caught him reaching around to his backside and messing around with something. Ooh. Mm. He had <laughs> hidden bags of fentanyl inside his rectum, and he was reaching back there to get them out and then stuff them into the cushion of the cruiser. You know, where the seat belt goes yeah. into the seat. From one cushion to another. He <laughs> jammed 32 grams in there. So he had 32 grams of fentanyl Damn. up his butt. Maybe fentanyl wouldn't be so poisonous if they could carry it another way. Uh, he was caught because he didn't get it all. At the jail, they did a full cavity search and a, quote, chunk of purple powder fell out of his anus. Wait, it's purple? I, 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 don't I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the cop That's car. not mine. <laughs> it also sounds like a unicorn, right? The cop car was so messed up from the fentanyl, and you know, you know that it, the the end, you know, uh, and that it needed to be taken out of commission for three months to wow. be professionally cleaned. Failed. Yeah. Thirty-two grams. Thirty-two grams up his butt, and then more because a chunk. Of Zero hemorrhoid pain, though. Yep. Yep. Really took care of it for him. And those are your Friday fail stories. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all who failed this week. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, and uh, let's give away some stuff. Woo-hoo. We've got, I can't believe we've got two pairs of tickets left for Riz Show Live, which is tomorrow, completely sold out, courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch. We've got a couple pairs of tickets left to go see Primus and Cody Cambria, August 3rd at St. Louis Music Park. And we have a couple pairs of tickets left to go see a sold-out Beartooth show at Pops on March 10th. After the break, we're going to play Just the Two of Us. So here's how it goes. We'll get you on the phone. You pick two Riz Show members. Everybody's in play here. Mm-hmm. Myself, Moon, Learn, Rafe, King Scott. Rafe will then read five questions. We'll write our answers down. If we match three of our five answers, you win your choice of tickets while supplies last. Should we have a patient zero? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Patient zero in play today, so we'll pick a random caller and have them be patient zero. They'll hang on through the entirety of the game. If uh, zero matches get done, patient zero will win. All right. 314. 324-3833 or 618-398-3833. It's going to be interesting to see Learn play today because she is... Why am I getting singled out? Because... Rafe was with me the whole time. He's Because I don't hear him moaning and... Uh, You hear me moaning? Every once in a while I hear... uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's orgasmic. As if every movement you make today is a struggle. Man, I'm having a great day. You are having a great day. I'm here... I'm in a ready, good mood. Ready to go. I mean, people, I'm I'm golden, dude. It's a Friday before Let's the go. rest of live. Let's go. All right, uh, just two of us. 314-624-3833. 618-398-3833. We'll play next. Am I really moaning? I'm sorry. I don't Every know. once in a while. Here. Oh Does anybody God. else hear it? Like Shirley a- tried to throw me under the bus there. That was kind of... <laughs> Pretty well, messed up, dude. I am insecure and sad about well, being. Well, you got to dry dock some exploder, lady. You want some? I got some. We should make. If I would love to watch her take it live on the air and then go immediately to the hospital. What's my heart rate at? I'll take it. She would oh, go okay. immediately yeah, to the hospital. Somebody who measures their heart rate every every fifteen minutes. Yeah. We don't need her having. Exploder. I would have to take her to the ER as soon as we got off the air. Our Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather. Mooners coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. we got three lanes blocked, two to a crash, 270 northbound just after Dorset, and it is creating severe delays. Your point forecast, early rain and snow mix, high of 51. Right now it's 35 at the Point Studio.
All right, so where it's, see, I, I actually made up a word this morning, and I'm so happy about this. Now, the last year and a half of all of our lives, the word synergy has been like kind of a gigantic joke. Like, there's all this stuff happening all over. You're just trying to make it work for the day. Yeah. But it seems like, Amy Lee, front woman of Evanescence, that you have a very synergistic year ahead of you. The album is out now. The, the single doing great, the big tour with Hailstorm later this year, this feels like synergy to me. And I bet you for you, it's finally like, oh, great. We're finally here. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, you know, part of last year and this time, um, something that's felt really good is just to keep going, just to go, 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 go harder. Don't let it stop us. Don't let anything hold me down. Like just yeah. this feeling of, I can't waste a minute. I don't want to waste a day. We don't know if we have tomorrow. So it is time to just do what we were born to do. Um, so kind of taking that attitude after the initial sort of like, ah, frustration and heartbreak and just frustration. I mean, you feel good. It's good for your mental health. Uh, if your resolution and yeah, we could still, it's, I know it's March 1st, but we're still working on ourselves, our, our New Year's resolutions. If uh, your resolution is for more self-care and, and, and building your confidence, Parkrest Plastic Surgery is here to help you out. It is their mission at Parkrest, which is right down the street from the radio station here in, in Creve Corps. It's their mission over there to provide the highest level of care to help you achieve your cosmetic goals with natural looking results. Dr. McGuire, Dr. Kaplan, both treated patients from all over the world. Both have helped lead vital clinical research that has led to major changes in the plastic surgery industry. People still come to Creve Course from all over the world to be treated by Dr. McGuire and Dr. Kaplan and experience the way Parkrest approaches plastic surgery. They are there to build back your confidence and support you on your journey. If you're looking for a mommy makeover, if you're looking for laser hair removal they do that to hydrofacials to permanent makeup to radio frequency micro needling if you're looking to get rid of those uh, stubborn fat pockets they got you at parkrest plastic surgery book a consultation do it today parkrestplasticsurgery.com parkcrestplasticsurgery.com So here we are, Wayback Point Fest. Goldfinger, Sh everybody. Shaka. Yes. Hey. Yes. And so here's the thing, okay? John, first things first. Seen the band a million times. Phenomenal band. You've changed members here, but now you've got a goddamn all-star team going on with our buddy Mike, and then we've got Phil here and Moon, and it's just... Phil like, and Moon. Phil you know, it's funny. He's never called me that. I've never, wow. never called once. you that ever. And I'm sorry, but that <laughs> no, was the fine. first thing that popped into fault. my head. It's <laughs> Moon was telling me to, because, you know, we've, I've, known, I've known Moon a long, long time, and yeah, uh, yeah. I've watched him transition into this amazing front man of, the, of Greek fire. It's just an incredible transformation that we've made from nice. when I first met him with this, like, afro yeah, out yeah. to here, and just like this <laughs> kid straight out of college. Did, actually, did you go to college? No, I did not go this to college. This kid straight out of high school. <laughs> right, right. Like, did you go to high school? I did go to high school. I even finished with a kid. <laughs> okay. Well, it's it's really Me great too. to yeah. have you guys. But how does how does Mike get in the equation? How does Phil get, uh, Moon get in the equation? Like, how do you decide these guys? Because I know you obviously with the work you do as a producer, you're. I mean, there's tons of musicians everywhere that yeah. that, that you can get to be a part of Goldfinger. Um, I, th I think the first time Goldfinger played with MXPX was probably 1996 up in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Radio Not show, yeah, radio and show. I remember like I think same thing. I mean, Mike was a teenager when I first saw him play, yeah. whenever that was, and and I've known him for forever and ever and ever. And I watched MXPX grow from like an opening opening band into like headlining bigger than Goldfinger. It was like amazing watching. These are you know, look at this guy. I mean, he's such a handsome guy, great songwriter, great <laughs> voice, great bass player, everything you know. And so when we just started talking one day, you know, when Kelly joined Buck Cherry, it was sort of like I had tours booked, and I'm like, who would be my First choice, right. my Carrera would be choice one, and I called him, and it all worked, and here we are. How about that? Here we are, still doing it. Woo! And Great new record, by the way. And you, well, and it is. <laughs> the, the knife is fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and I told Moon this, like, I don't buy CDs anymore. I'm a download vinyl guy, but I was buying something at the record store, and they had the knife like right there at the display, and I was like, well, I got to get this, and it's fantastic. It's everything that I want in a Goldfinger record. Thank man. you. 
How do you download vinyl, by the way? I don't download vinyl. <laughs> I just want to know a, because there if there's some new technology you know, on the radio that you know about, I need to learn. Well, it's good to know that I'm getting crap from you after just meeting you for the first time. That's fantastic. But you know what I mean? Like, like I don't really buy the records anymore, but I really wanted to hear it. And, and Put the Knife Away is such a great song. And, and so talk about the Goldfinger record and how that works these days. I mean, obviously, a, a, a gigantic chunk of these ideas are yours, but talk about how Mike and, and Moon weigh in and, 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 and make it the Goldfinger record altogether. I had a lot of the. You have to spend your entire tax return on tires at an R and R Tire Express. You don't have to. Tax time is deal time, so R and R Tire Express is actually matching payments all month long. This is incredible. All through, uh, you know, now to the end of March. You pay one week, they'll pay one week on new tire and wheel installs. This is uh, this is the way to go. Pay-as-you-go programs that fit your budget. Once you experience the R&R service, you will never buy tires the same way again. Remember, the only part of your car that's touching the ground keeping you safe, the first and last part of, uh, of, uh, of being safe there, are your tires. Think about that. You can pay more, by the way, than the minimum uh, to get it paid off quicker and save money. You can pay weekly, bi-weekly. They're going to work with you. They'll even work with your time budget because they know sometimes it's hard to get in there and do different things. But you can call them. You can text them. You can Google them. You can visit any of the four area locations. And don't forget, r and service repair. They'll even replace a tire at no cost while on payments. It all comes with that r and experience. r and Tire Express. Everybody needs a little r and r Check them out online at rnrmidwest.com. Well, here we are at the uh, Chaffetz Arena gigantic show tonight with the Killers, joined by uh, Brandon and Ronnie. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. All right, welcome back to the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Uh, it's Friday, and uh, I guess this is useful info for a day like today, or planning on hitting it hard this weekend at some point. Uh, your ability to describe how plastered your your friends are is about to become more robust. So a study found, bless you, the English language has 546 different words for being drunk. What's the one you use the most? Probably hammered. Me too. Yeah, hammered. Hammered. I'm, you know, you know the classics like hammered and wasted, wasted and tipsy and or the variations, Shmammered. trashed and smashed, smashed and loaded, or oh, the more formal inebriated, mm. intoxicated, belligerent, <clears throat> blitzed. I like the British pissed. Pissed? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we could say that word. I was... How about bladdered? Bladdered? Oh. <laughs> or a mullard. I never heard that, but mullard. man, that, that really makes it visceral. Bladdered. Yeah. Like, yeah, because well, you always got to pee. It, it almost hurts. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote down some, some Three words. Sheets. Um, Three sheets. I'm getting bladdered. Three sheets. Three sheets. How about piloting? I'm sorry? What? Piloting? Pil that, are you saying is that, uh, piloting? Piloting. Is that a knock on pilots who get drunk? <laughs> no, I never. <laughs> Piloting. <laughs> Not me. Oh, oh, Next time, buddy. Don't say that stuff. My wife is on a plane right now. <laughs> Full of loudmouth soup. Uh, one like one word though. Uh, a word. A word. Not terms, but not like, tanked. Fish faced. Can't say it on the radio. Sauced. What's my sauced? Corned. Corned. Never heard that. Skunked. You can only say corned if you're drinking a corned beer. You're only corned if you're on. Bush. These are actual British. British. And English, you know, terms yeah, yeah, yeah. that are he was in cold. the dictionary as <laughs> other words for being drunk. Uh, cabbaged. Um, <laughs> sozzled. Sozzled. I've heard yeah. that one. Isn't he a character on Sesame Street? Fuddled. Another character? Skunked. Squiffed. I think half of these terms were, were, were made while the person was in this state. Yeah. Stonkered. That's what he's trying to heard. Schnockered, I've heard. Is that Stonkered. the same thing? Schnockered. Uh... Schwasted. How about that one? <laughs> Snookered. Slap happy, craptapulous. I'm sorry, crapulous. Mm, crapulous. Crapulous is a. I don't want to have that kind of. Jeremy. <laughs> what oh, no. is that? That's a word for being drunk. Jeremy? Jeremy. No. How do you spell that? J E R E M I E D. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yep. <laughs> a list of woes. Oh, no, that's Jeremy Ed. J A J E R E M I E D. Jeremy. Huh. Wow. It's kind of a cool looking word, to be honest. It is. <laughs> I'd never heard that before. Trousered. 
Blickered. Mm. Got to watch yourself. Some of these are hard to say sober. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, give away some stuff. Like used in a sentence, I promised our promo director, Matthew, Matthew, I will not be jeremy at Riz Show Live tomorrow. Right. <clears throat> okay. Why did, I saw that conversation and you had both hands behind your back and your fingers crossed. Is that, what does that mean? Shh. Shush. It's just how you stand. <laughs> you just put your finger up to Shush. raise your mouth. Shush. <laughs> All right. It's time to play just the two of us. Okay. So. You guys uh, on the phone will pick two Risho members. Rafe will read five questions. We'll write our answers down. If we match three of our five answers, you guys on the phone will win. Your choice. We have two pairs of tickets left for Risho Live, which is tomorrow over the pageant, courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch, who made those awesome 10 years of Riz uh, hats. Uh, we got Primus and Coney Cambria tickets, and we got Bear Tooth tickets. All right. And, oh, let's pick a patient zero. Learn, pick one through six. Three. Three. Scott Josh from Freeburg is patient zero. That means if we get zero matches, Josh wins automatically. All right, let's go to Tim in Maryland Heights. Tim. Oh, I got to put this on. Hey, Tim. Hey, good morning. Hello, Tim. All right, pick two Risho members. <laughs> uh, let's go with Rafe and Learn. Rafe okay. and Learn. Okay. Two people who got the least amount of sleep. Good call, We're buddy. We're the soul twins, so it doesn't matter. All right, you Sounds guys good. got a mind melt uh -oh. here, so you're doing it for Tim. Here we go. All right. Here we go, Tim. A breakfast food. An 80s pop star The grossest ice cream flavor. Disgusting ice cream flavor. Huh. It's a tough question. Yeah, this is yeah. a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. I'll be looking at each other's papers. Hey, I no. can't. I, I can't, can't see even anything. See that far. I'm blind right now. <laughs> Car brand. <laughs> I thought there was more. Yeah, brand. there's Car. more. Car brand. Okay. brand. Car brand. <laughs> By brand, I do mean brand, not the name of the car. I know what you mean. Okay. I'm in your brain right now. <laughs> All right, fifth and final one. Dinosaur species. A dinosaur. Cool. This is oh, going to be five, four, five. Yeah. Four, oh, for five. Also, this confirms if we are actually best friends. I'm just going to yeah. say, if we oh, get five boy. for five, then this is it. Moon, Wait, you got to unnecessary okay, pressure on this, but okay. Here we go. For Tim. Right. Okay. Oh, yes. sorry. Hey, I forgot I'm hosting. A breakfast food. <laughs> Three, two, one. Eggs. Waffles. Oh, toast. All right. Eggs. Well, hey, wasn't toast. toast is another good one. <laughs> I was talking about waffles the other day. I thought you were going to go there. No, I didn't go there. Right. An 80s pop star. Three, two, one. Madonna. Madonna. Oh, okay. I wrote Michael Jackson down. Wow. You're I cool. almost wrote Michael Jackson. I started an M and almost wrote Michael and then changed. There goes like patient zero. Yeah, patient zero. Sorry. Grossest ice cream flavor. Three, two, one. Pistachio. Rum raisin. Pistachio. That oh, both of them are so good. Oh. Those are, yeah. There are. Rum raisin is disgusting. Is there a bad one? No. Uh. I love pistachio ice cream. <laughs> Why did you say almond raisin? Rum raisin. <laughs> Never had it. <laughs> That's because it's disgusting. The only old people get it. Two more. Uh, car brand. Three, two, one. Toyota. Oh, man. Oh, this is oh my God! Comes down to this. Comes this, down this. This friendship comes down to this. this is and five it. is a give me. A give me. Is it over? <laughs> is it a give me? <laughs> yeah. Got a good run, pal. Oh. A dinosaur species. Three, two, one. T Rex. T -Rex. There we go. Oh. Yes. I had Larry King. I thought. Knew it. Congratulations, Tim. Woo, Tim. She goes. Oh. I knew it. I knew you guys could do it. Thanks, Thanks Tim. Buddy. What do you want? Uh, race show ticket. Race show live. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. See you All tomorrow, right. buddy. All right, Risho live tickets for Tim. Uh, one pair left. All right, Jordan. Hello. Morning. All right, pick two people. Uh, can I get Riz and Rafe? Riz oh, and Rafe. I'm back up. The R and R Express. All right, R and R Express. All right, lock Hang it in. Uh, Dude, do we're locked in already? So. Look at me. 
a fast food restaurant. A type of body of water. A type of body of water. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. A country in Europe. A Disney movie. A family board game. You guys both have this weird tendency to stare at each other for just like about a second too long. Yeah. Every yeah. time it's just like a just a little bit awkward stare, and then you both look down and write your answer. Mm, yeah. That's you both bro go, ESP. <laughs> yeah. It's because like there's, weird... there's a little thought bubble in between us. Did you see any spark? Like, no, there's no like sparks. There's, spark? no, there's, no, there's no facial expressions. There's just these two statues staring at each other, and then they write an okay. answer. <laughs> All right, Moon, count it down. Here we go. Okay. Playing for Jordan. All right, Jordan, a fast food restaurant. Three, two, one. McDonald's. McDonald's. Way to go, you guys. Nice. All right. Next up, a type of body of water. Three, two, one. Ocean. Ocean. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, ho. Oh. The I'm boys are locked I'm in, dude. I'm surprised to have heard that answer from either. Ocean, really? We I live in a lake. river town. I almost said lake. We live in a river town I, as I far thought, from an ocean as you can I be. I thought ocean immediately. Well, hmm. we're locked body in. Body of water, right? I'm thinking the greatest body of water. We're locked in, dude. We're space docked. All right. For the win. Bad term. A country in Europe. Three, two, one. Italy. Italy. Oh, I should have said Italy. I forgot who I was talking to. I said England. Okay. You cocked your head to the side and it, made, it felt very English. Nope. It was very My cockney. bad. All right. A Disney movie. Three, two, one. Lion King. King. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Leo. Uh, Jordan, congratulations. What do you want? We did Great it. Great work, fellas. Uh, can I get rich show ticket? You got them. That's it. We're done with those. All right, just for fun, a family board game. Three, two, one. Monopoly. Monopoly. We had it. We had it no matter what. That was a done deal. I was going to ask you, have you played Phase 10 with your family yet? Yes. Would you guys enjoy it? Uh, no. So me, the girl, and my wife played. It was great. Good. The boy was like, ah. Did anyone call math. anyone a slut yeah, during did this? Did anybody get called a no, slut? No, it was actually a not pretty right. tame game. Okay. I want to play. I want to, uh, all of us to play it sometime. Face Town was great. Thank you. It. We You're played welcome. it over the holidays. Good. All right, back to you. Uh, Matt in Jerseyville. Good morning, Matt. Morning, guys. All right, Matt. Pick two people. I uh, go Moon and Learn. Moon and Learn. Moon and Learn. Let's go, pal. Great combo. Put all my, right, hang put on. My breakfast down. Man's putting his breakfast down. All right, breakfast is down. Number. Oh, oh gotta start the music. Start the music. All right. Moon and Learn, a Starbucks coffee size. No need for a stare. An action movie star. Hmm. An African country. An ancient civilization. <laughs> and finally, a mythical creature. A mythical <laughs> great job. Two, oh, two acceptable oh, answers for that one. Yep. Do you need a. There is a right one for you. Number four? Number four was uh, an ancient civilization. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping Feel you good? don't. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm, I'm hoping you don't. I'm hoping you jump a little bit. Okay. Like, I think you're going to jump, you jump a little bit. over in my boat, you know? And well, we... I'm trying to jump in your boat here. Okay. All Let's right. go forward. I'll, I'll yeah. count it down. Yeah. All right. Scott go. Rizzuto, count it down to Starbucks coffee size. Three, two, one. Venti. Venti. Let's go. Okay, Venti was the right and number one answer. I've been wrong there. Uh, was she grande? Yeah. Well, she just mentioned Venti, so That's right. I'm no fool. Oh, I'm in her boat. I just knew how tired That's she true. was, and Venti was the only way to go. All right, an action movie star. Three, two, one. Arnold. Yes. Is there anything else? Automatic loss. <laughs> Number three, an African country. Three, two, one. South Sudan. Africa. Oh, darn. See, I thought you were going to say Egypt, Egypt or South Africa. Sudan. Well, we need you know where the big here. dongs are. Sudan. We've covered this. Yes. Sudan. All right. Ooh, an boy. ancient civilization. Woo. Three, two, one. Egyptians. Mayans. Oh, 
man. I thought we were in Africa. I, 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 I had Africa. Egyptians, and then I was like, oh, no, I don't know if that was going to count. No. Yeah. Would count it? Sure, yeah. Uh, number Mayans. one answer was the Incans. Uh, number one was the Mayans. <laughs> Two is Incans. Two is Incans. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Oh, sorry, man. Number ones. All right. Sorry. Comes got, down to this. Oh, we got, sorry. Brother, we, we got two already. No. no. Hey, if oh, you get sorry, this. Yeah. We got Venti and Arnold. You hung up on that guy? Venti and Arnold. If we get this, he doesn't want us to win. You see this? He doesn't want us to win. Wow. Matt, I hung up on you back. I hung up on Matt by accident. We'll oh, see if you if, hey, you understand. You got to get this, this. If you get this wrong, it don't matter. You're a true Aries. I'll tell you that. Two home runs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm not an Aries. I'm sorry. She is. It's because I didn't You're guess Grande. We got this. Okay. Because I didn't guess Venti. I crossed yeah. it off my own list. Okay. Well, stop that. Anyway. Well, sorry to hear that you were wrong. It comes out of this. Mythical creatures. Oh, my God. There's two, two choices there's here. Only two, there's there's only two choices, one. But, but one makes the most sense. Three. Two. One Luck unicorn. Dragon. God dang. Oh, unicorn. It it's a unicorn. Luck it's a uni dragon, unicorn, Bigfoot. Dragon. One answer. Oh, no. I had dragon. Loch Ness or Monster would dragon. have been the number one answer for Moon. Oh, see, I, about I, had, story. I had dragon and unicorn. I thought Sound you were a unicorn horror. gal. Don't you got a unicorn over there? No. <gasps> that's Did the one that exploded. Unicorn? That's the one that's butt exploded. Oh, no. Yeah. I got a cat well, well, okay. here. Well, I'm so sorry. I thought we were going to have a little. Hey, you got hung up on hung up on that anyway, so. Crud. Uh, Courtney, hello. We were off to such a good start. Hi. 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 All right, Courtney, pick two people. I'm going to go Moon and Riz. Okay. Moon and Riz. Okay, hang on, Courtney. All right. Here we go. Moon and Riz. I'm a sorry state. I let you down, Learn. I'm sorry. I'm me too, but how? All I'm right, sure. let's move. We got to move on. Lock in with the lock in with oh, a little short, shinless Italian. Oh, a state? A, no, a state other than Missouri or Illinois. I didn't get to finish. I'm sorry. Oh. A state other than Missouri or Illinois. Okay. A famous video game. An app on your phone. Uh. Old school Nickelodeon cartoon. A comic book villain. Wow, you were very quick. Yeah, you just got to go with the go with the zingers, the number yeah, ones. Go with the you right go answers. With the number ones. Trying, it, you play Family Feud, feud here, and it's I'm like I mean, I'm trying to go for the number ones. Yeah, just don't don't even the, go for me's. Sometimes I go for you's. Sometimes I go for me's. Sometimes you just go for number one. And today, it's well, I don't one. feel like we. I feel like we got three out of five. I don't feel like we got five out of five. Watch, oh. Watch. Wow. Us. Learn, yeah. you count it down. Watch. Here we go. State other than Missouri or Illinois. Three, two, one. New, New York. York. Oh, I put Greenbrier. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> it's a state. Not I'm a actually state. surprised by that. I thought we'd go with a bordering state. Well done. Uh, famous I would, I video would have, I would game. have had it been one of you guys. I like how you didn't go for so I will admit, I went, on, I went Riz's on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I didn't go you. <clears throat> I went to your home state. Famous video game. Three, two, one. Pac Mario Man. Brothers. Oh. Mario Brothers, number wow. one answer. Pac-Man, Pac old 45 answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> app. On your phone. Three, two, one. Messages. Ways. Ways. Number one answer. No. For this person over here, yeah. It's messages. It's on everyone's phone. You're right. I don't even know if I would count that, as an, app. that as an app. That I wouldn't comes, even think of that as an app. That but you're you're right, phone. but it, I don't think of it that way. I don't either. Hmm. That's on you. Old school. Oh, I do not. I don't <laughs> think right. about this one. I don't think if so. If you get this wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of the booth. He's <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have the one and only answer. Uh, there we go. Okay, old school Nickelodeon cartoon. Three, two, one. Ren and, and Stimpy. Stimpy. Thank right. God. We all Woo! I would have accepted that Doug counts. or Rugrats. That counts for two. You guys actually <laughs> counts for two, baby. This is it, right? Mm, this is the easy it. one. Is it? Yeah. There, come on, you can't get this one wrong. A comic book villain. Three, two, one. Joker. Joker. Woo! Who's saying? You got that wrong. Good. Lex Luthor. I almost, I almost wrote Lex Luthor. Lex now. Luthor, also an acceptable answer. Woo! Congrats, oh, Courtney. Oh, Hang oh, on. Man. Good job, boys. All right, one, uh, one final contestant here. Uh, Kristen, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey. hello. Uh, pick two people. Uh, I think Moon and Learn Need a Redemption. Moon yes. and yes. Learn. Right, thank you. One more time. The redemption arc. This. Okay. Patient zero. Hang tight. A common household chore. A famous horny cartoon character. 
a famous horny cartoon character. Type of sport where judges score determine winners. A sport where the judges score determines the winner. Worst pizza topping. The worst pizza topping. The most famous world capital. The most famous world capital. Okay. Moon's ready. I am ready. Learn's ready. Point me towards Danger Hazim. I am ready. Hello. Hey. Riz, count Here it down. Here we go. A common household chore. Three, two, one. Vacuuming. Vacuuming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, we always... How is laundry not number we one? We always I... get off to a, a uh, good start. A famous horny cartoon character. Three, Two, one. Pepe Jessica Le Pew. Rabbit. Oh, Pepe. Pepe Le Pew. That's, that's a great answer. Pepe Le Pew, number one answer. Uh, was she horny? I don't know. Giggity. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She presented. Bragmeyer, number two answer. Acceptable answer. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, type of sport where judges score determine the winner. Three, two, one. Gymnastics. Diving, Diving was my next guess. Diving. Dang it. Also, what have you accepted? Skating. Figure skating or bull riding? Okay, you gotta, the worst. Hang on, you got to sweep out here, guys. Got to sweep out, guys. You started strong. You started strong vacuuming, and then kind of sucked. Yeah. Okay. World's worst pizza tapping. Three, two, one. Sardines. Sardines. Woo! Man, yeah. somebody was going to try to be cute and go pineapple. Good I job. Accepted, base hit. Base hit. I would have accepted anchovies. Anchovies, I've never even heard of sardines. It's I think the they thing. both got it wrong and thought they were saying anchovies and said <laughs> sardines, which is true, really cool. Yeah. Now, I remember uh, Looney Tunes basically taught us that sardines are nasty. Remember yeah. he was always like yeah, opening those Little things. Rascals. But it's the same. Little Rascals taught me that Limburger cheese and sardines are to be avoided by children at all costs. All I know is we are locked in. Lock it in. Lock it the up. most lock famous. It up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Hang on. I'm scared. It's locked. Ready. Uh, ready here. Be not afraid. Be not afraid, young lady. The most famous world capital. Three, two, one. Paris. Washington, D.C. Uh, what the hell's wrong with you? Paris. London, no, I England, DC. Paris, France would have been. D.C.? I, I mean, yeah. how, dude. Not a bad answer. Tra I'm travel the planet. The... How often do other uh, other cultures talk about Washington, D.C.? I, I don't know. Think, I... I think Paris and London yeah, and Rome London. would have been wow. the three. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say Paris and Tokyo are probably the one and two. Then London. Yeah. I, I didn't even know up. Tokyo was capital of Japan. I thought it was a city. Man, I, uh... Last time I checked my I'm watch, out. <laughs> it still said America. I'm bummed out. I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm American, dude. Jessica Rabbit. Uh, Hell yeah. Well, Rabbit. hey, you know That's what, Scott? I of. Matter of fact, I, I changed my mind. I'm taking her side, <laughs> dude. <laughs> she made a compelling <laughs> argument. Scott, give our patient zero tickets to something. Hey! All right. The queen is feeling generous well, you today. Know, he didn't get first pick, so he didn't get rich live tickets. But let, let's get him something for hanging on. How All nice right. are you on a Friday? This is great. Diving. Dang. Am I nice? Don't run out of your nice before tomorrow. I'm thinking after the break, we'll play the butthurt game. Fine. <laughs> let's, and we're back. <laughs> let's aggressively stamp out this cigarette. Well, today is World Compliment Day, so let's... Uh, let's not. <laughs> let's not. Positivity Day, too, right? No, it's, it's World Peanut Butter Lover's Day. Okay. And... World Compliments Day. Okay. And Butthurt Game Day on the Riz Show. Awesome. So just, just a couple rounds. And here's how we'll do it. Okay. You can't give an ex exclamation. Fine. A I what? will not give an, ex an exclamation. Exclamation. I don't want to know anyone. <laughs> an exclamation. Marble mouth over here. No disclaimer either. No, no, before you Do you mean an you explanation? Yes. He, he means explanation. Expl an exclamation is like, yeah, hark! <laughs> Nay, you got me confused. I'm not going to yell it. I just want to know what I can do. And, and I'm no an longer allowed to explain it. So I can't. <laughs> an I may not exclaim. This week has been too long, hasn't it? It has been. Listen. <laughs> hey. Just say a name. This is what basically just what say you're saying. Okay. No before or after. No disclaimer before. Oh, uh, yeah, oh before, um, I love you. but And then you say it. I wish I could I mean, be ex myself. Ex, uh, ex, uh, explanation. 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 There's Got a it. PL. Exclamation. You want some of my pro ah, protein shaker, it. man? No so explanations, no exclamations. <laughs> you want some apple? I, I, I saved the best part for last. You see I got this? Low no sugar. incantations. 
I got a disease. Explanation. Thank you. Listen, it's been a long week. I've lived four lives this week. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I think the best way to go into Riz Show Live where we need to all be on the same page, firing on all cylinders, connected and happy with each other is to play the butthurt game to close out the last hour of a Friday show. Here's a good idea. Let's all get drunk. <laughs> I'm down. I'm there. No explanation. Ex uh, yeah, just names. You trying it again? Yeah, I'm you trying. Keep trying to redeem yourself. Like, just stop it. Explanation. <laughs> just stand there and let it pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 908. Got a meatball in your mouth yeah. or something, man. <laughs> 908. Race show presented on the fast lane. Traffic and weather moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at WWTRaceway.com. We got severe delays up to 30 minutes. Three lanes blocked due to a crash 270 northbound just after Dorset. Uh, your point forecast today, early rain and snow mix, high of 51. Right now it's 36 at the Point Studio. Uh, also, some of your emails, if we have time. Next. So uh, here we are, way back, Point Fest, and uh, the first band of the day is a band that... Uh, through the course of my life, I think I've seen your band six times, but we've never chatted and said hello. It's just strange that that wouldn't happen. I know you mentioned Mississippi Nights. Yeah, uh, yeah. We talked on the phone the other day. And yeah. I remember the club well, you know. We used to have great shows there, but it's like anything these days. You know, stuff doesn't stay around as long as you would think it would. So. I, I remember something specific about this show, and it's a little creepy, so I'm going to go ahead and warn you. So, <laughs> so where I was standing at Mississippi Nights, they had the back door open, and I could see directly into your tour bus. Dude, Arch Madness tips off for the 30th consecutive year. It's all happening Enterprise Center in just uh, just a little bit. Thursday, March 7th through Sunday, March 10th. Tickets are available now at archmadness.com. The final weeks of the, the Missouri Valley Conference regular season, they're incredible. Something to keep an eye on with five teams within reach of the regular season championship, the number one overall seed in Arch Madness, and... You get to watch one team earn its spot into the NCAA tournament. And right now at archmadness.com, there are some incredible deals waiting for you. Tons of tons of different packages. Go check them out. They got the uh, Deuces Wild package. Two single session tickets, two regular beers, two hot dogs, all included 120 bucks. That's incredible. Plus the American Heroes package. I love talking about this one. It's the U.S. servicemen and women and first responders can show an ID at the Enterprise Center box office uh, and receive $25 tickets for Thursday and Friday or $30 tickets for Saturday and Sunday. Incredible deals await and a lot of action. And I mean, Arch Madness has been incredible for these 30 years. So get in on all the madness. Archmadness.com. What's going on? It's Liv, and I am joined right now by Hailstorm. It is Point Fest 2022. Yes. So stoked Woo! to have you guys here. Back from the dead. Back here in St. Louis. Absolutely. Yes. She said it. Round two. Literally Round back two. on the deck. Roll credits. <laughs> yes. The only storm today is going to be hailstorm. Yes. Right? Oh, my and gosh. And we guarantee it. Yes. <laughs> now, what I wanted to bust out, why I have my iPad here, uh -oh. is I've been a fan of yours for a while. And I kind of talked about this a little bit with the struts, kind of watching your style change over oh. the years. Oh, boy. <laughs> and that's something I've definitely noticed with you guys. The first time I ever saw you was in 2011. Ooh. And I don't know if the camera will be able to pick this up too much, but I got Lizzie here. Oh, yes. This is wearing a white corset, like an American yep. flag Ma bra. American flag bra that I sewed myself, thank you very much. And, and then think like Polka Hot Dot. Topic skirt, fishnets. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm, <laughs> yes. Hot Topic it, was so hot back then. This good. was, what is it, 2011? Yeah, 2010 2011. and 2011 were, uh, I feel like I, I couldn't decide. Okay. So I just wore everything. <laughs> like, yeah. do I want a corset? Do I want boots? Do I want leggings? <laughs> yes. Do, yes. do I so want a skirt? Do I want to wear my bra on the outside? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Incredible. So, like, you know, being able to watch you guys change and RJ have some pictures of you, you had, like, long hair. Oh, I look the same, hair. right? Yeah. I'm totally the same. <laughs> totally the same. So as you guys, you know, grow as a band, like, do, are those conscious decisions to change the style, or do you think it just kind of happens with just maturing uh, yeah, well, well i wouldn't say i wouldn't say maturity <laughs> um that's we can definitely take that off the table but i think it's just the natural evolution of things i feel like every couple tours feels like a different lifetime so you almost sure. have to like evolve 
And so, and and obviously, like I have a lot of really awesome rock star friends, and so sometimes we'll play a show, and be like, oh, I think I could pull that off. Where do I find that on the internet? Like, yeah. you know, get it somewhere. So Josh's style is the only one that's matured. Josh is very consistent, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, fair. I, I've made some bad choices. <laughs> our, 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 our lighting d designer gave you a great compliment. He said, Josh doesn't just throw on clothes, he dresses. Ooh, Ooh, that's true. I like that. I yes. like I that. With purpose. Clothes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Back from the Dead is out. How different would this latest release have been had it not been for the pandemic? Um, it would be a totally, completely different record. Yeah, it wouldn't, um, wouldn't have happened. Yeah, or or like it wouldn't that. have yeah, or it wouldn't have happened, especially in in mid forties now. And uh, if you're in your mid forties and you want to turn back the clock to the man you saw in the mirror five, ten, or even fifteen years ago, book an appointment with Mentality. Mentality Health. You got two locations: Chesterfield, which is uh, my location, and South County. Now, what's going on inside? I know you want to feel sweet every day. You want your workouts to be great. You know, maybe you're you've got fat. You just can't get rid of. Maybe you're you're not the same man as you once were in the bedroom. These are all symptoms of low T, signs of low T. So get to Mentality, have them do a blood draw, see what's going on inside, and then they'll customize a treatment plan for you. Maybe you're vitamin deficient. Maybe you are, you know, low T. Unlock your peak performance through innovative hormone optimization. Prescribed by doctors, backed by science, testosterone treatment made simple. Or maybe it's the uh, peptide therapy you need, or maybe it's uh, some glutide. Again, customized treatments based on what's going on inside you. Mantality Health, book an appointment, mantalityhealth.com, mantalityhealth.com. One oh five seven the point AO. Let's go. It's Live Maddox. Broadcasting live from the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. And I am joined now by the one, the only, Jelly Roll. Yeah, How baby. How are you, howdy. sir? I feel like I'm back home, man. I love St. <laughs> Louis. It's one of my favorite cities in America for dozens. You know, we're talking about those new uh, shopping carts over there at Schnooks they're trying out. Oh, yeah, where they, you don't have to check out? Yeah, so I got some more details because uh, you guys had questions. So Schnooks brings a new element to the grocery shopping experience. So the shopping carts with these, uh, they're AI-powered smart carts. Schnooks Twin Oaks off Big Ben near 141. I think they're going to roll them out to the Lindenwood location and roll, Cottonville location. Roll them sure. out. Yeah. You couldn't resist. So how do the carts work? So in the lobby of the Twin Oaks location, the carts will have their own individual aisle for customers to access before heading through the main entrance. Uh, once you select a cart, a monitor will ask if it's your first time using the cart first or if you time. need instructions. Looks like we got ourselves a first timer. Uh huh. After that, shoppers can enter their Schnooks Rewards account, uh, which they can also link with the Instagram, uh, I'm sorry, Instacart app to set up a payment plan. <coughs> After that, you stroll through the grocery store, put items in the cart as you please. For items with a barcode, sensors are built to recognize an item as you place it in the cart. After you select the desired barcode item, a sensor will flash green and produce a noise that acknowledges, hey, you're buying this. <laughs> <laughs> I wish hey, it was your voice. It's yours. Now, for items without a barcode, yes. like produce, you will need to type in a proper four-digit code. After you select the desired non-barcode item, you put it in the cart, and then the cart will weigh it for you. It wow. has a scale on it. It's got a scale. This nice. thing's got it all. I love it. That, that's my old schnooks, too. I'm going to go, and I can still go there. I'm going to go check this thing out over the weekend. Yeah. So once you're finished up, uh, I guess you enter your payment option, and then you're done. Love it. That's then nice. you're done. Uh, carts allow customers to bag as they go or bag at a small station after you buy everything. That's what's up right there, too, because, like, if you think about it, I wish I could bag as I go because I bring my own bags, and then you all the, you're going it's in so order. So much easier. Produce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're getting every. You're getting the frozen stuff at the end, and then I'm gone. That's amazing. Yeah, and and okay, so you could you have the option to bring the cart outside to unpack the groceries into your car, but you got to, you have to then return the cart to the lobby. Oh, okay, so you gotta walk it. Oh, you gotta good walk luck. it back. 
Good luck. And this is where the disconnects are coming. <laughs> yeah. And this is where the trouble begins. And this is where this is how this whole system is gonna yeah. be is gonna go off the rails. First rainstorm and that cart's outside, it's gone. Goodbye. <laughs> oh man. Like we have all this modern technology. Can we make a pact right now that we will listenership involved like raise your right hand like you promise to bring the magic cart back in so we don't ruin that. I hear my promise. Foolish I woman. Promise. I, promise. I, promise. I promise. I promise to do it. Uh, I, I hear like parking them on islands too much. But this is where the we have this great technology mm -hmm. and now I'm going to be a lazy ass right. and go ah, ah but my car is here and the store is there. <laughs> it's freezing. Yeah. So so many. Many. Is tough, man. I will raise my right hand and promise you how dare you raise 80% of people won't do oh, this. I oh, say yeah. you would. I'll do it. But it I'll won't matter. It. Well, they just put like a cover over the cart corral thing. No. Don't ruin Return them. them. For us. Done. And Return one day, them. one day there will be a hub out in the parking lot. They'll make that eventually. This is Maybe. just the first this run. This is the pilot program. The yeah. only way they'll do it is if you scan your card and there's like a fine for like they charge you 100 bucks or something for not returning. Like Aldi's. It. I'm all for it. Well, it's got to be more than a quarter, though. <laughs> I'm all for it. It's got to be more than a you quarter. Don't get your if quarter you do back. not return your cart, if you leave it outside, you will be fined. I guess it won't be long till cart technology is there, where you take it to the car and you let go of it, and it rolls itself back into. We the... have, yeah, we could do it. Yeah, like the uh, the little vacuums. Yeah, when you like hit, a Roomba. Yeah, like you hit the Roomba, like go home, <sighs> and then it's like it has to search. And how does it know? For hours, <sighs> and it's still searching, and you can. How just, does it know? What if there's like a like a track and a hook, and it went all the way through the, just the center of the uh, parking lot? So you just all you got to do is walk it over to the to the track, and it just goes boop, the cart hooks trolley? it, and then it just trolleys it in. I love that Joe Edwards can fund it. <laughs> Rallies it in. Cart can it can ding seven cars on the way in. Just walk it back. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just, just, just it <laughs> it's going to take We're a little. So uh, walk it back. Walk it back. Up. Hear me out. Eighty million dollars for the cart trolley in St. Louis. <laughs> it only yeah. runs in the Schnooks parking lot. It has no other in purpose. Twin Oaks. <laughs> but it looks cool. It will be ridden just as much as the the one down in Delmar. Sure. Uh, Laura says on the instant feedback, used it. Uh, it was great. Way to go, Laura. That's cool. I like the bagging as you go. That's the best. I mean, that, that that's the yeah. time that I'm getting mm. nothing done here, going be, going between one thing to the next item. You know, yeah. it's like I may as well just be pushing and bagging, pushing and bagging, yeah. pushing, pushing, pushing and bagging. All right, let's uh, let's do a Scott. Come in here. Let's do a uh, let's do a little round the horn here. Here's how I know this car thing won't work while we're waiting for him. Lime scooters, bird scooters. Cool thing. Right. Great public shared. <clears throat> great idea. They have kickstands. Nobody uses them. Nope. As soon as they're like, oh, what a cool thing. This is a really fun time. I wrote it all over town. The minute the battery goes out, you're just like, no. Yeah. It gets, they gets had, thrown on the ground. When we first had that, the bikes, uh, half of them wound up in the river. Exactly. <laughs> We're troubled people. Uh, half of them no wind up there. in the river. The, we do not have... We do not have it in us as a society to take care of communal property. Right. This is why but we don't have nice maybe things. Maybe this time. This well, time we will. Maybe the carts. All right, so Moon's going to reach his hand into the bag. We kind of did this one before. Okay, but it doesn't... It, okay. Do so you want to discard it? I think we did this one last time. Okay, yeah, discard then. We need all new yeah. reasons to hate okay, each you other. Okay, you can You know what I'm saying? We did that last time. Okay. And I won. All right, so Moon is gonna <laughs> is gonna read the butthurt question. It's a good way to frame it, dude. <laughs> and then we'll go around. Okay. I won. You cannot explain why you're why you're choosing yeah, no whatever. Disclaimer or anything. And I, no disclaimer or anything. And I received all the awards for that one. Oh my god! Here gosh. we go. Go. Yo, we've been doing this game for a long time. I don't remember this card at all. <laughs> the question is. Who is most likely to make fun of a mentally challenged person? Okay, write your answer oh down. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're coming on. Get ready. Coming in yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you cannot explain why you're saying who. Okay. Everybody, everybody answer locked in? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, locked in. Okay. We'll start with Moon. Riz. 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 <laughs> Scott can't even get it Riz. Uh, okay. Rafe. <laughs> nice try. All right. Guys. I wrote my answer down. <laughs> All right. All right here we a, go. A light, lightning round. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> 
Who would be the first? <laughs> Damn. Person, who would be the first person to eat another human if their life depended on it? Ooh. Wow. Okay. Everybody locked in. Got to write your answer down. I don't want nobody changing it. Learn. Rafe. Rafe. Moon. I went moon. Moon. Rafe. Ah. Oh, nice. Checks out. You know what? <laughs> yeah. the board. I think, I think no, we're the first two. Yeah. Me too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's, who, who, gonna we be fight to the death and we eat the win, we eat the loser. The last two, yeah. last two on the island. You hungry? <laughs> Me too. We're fighting over the. First we know what has to happen here. <laughs> it was like uh, the old cartoons with the hamburger. They, yeah. they looked at each other. You look like a hamburger. Yeah. You look like a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> no, Rafe and I are both Am looking I, at you like a hamburger yeah, and you're a hot like dog. Like a big meatball. I'm mean, like, dude, he's been marinating his whole life uh, for us. <laughs> he's soaked in that five minute pasta sauce that takes thirty minutes yeah. to explain. <laughs> Rafe and I are doing it together for sure. All right. Who should be considered clinically insane? Okay. <clears throat> Rafe, learn. I went Rafe. Learn. Learn. Rafe. All right. That's also checked out. <laughs> Across the board. So far, I've got no, I really I'm, can't I am, argue. I am, I am. Don't say a word. I, yep. I know. Hey, I'm biting hey, my hey, tongue because hey. I want to know how Scott did not pick learn. Honestly. No. no. Hey, I, me too. Me too, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm over here just losing it, you know? Learn is the correct answer. <laughs> hey. I mean, just take okay, a good Okay, one. okay. But I am a close second. Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> pick a car. Oh, yeah. Oh, here you go, buddy. Scott, Sorry. Look at, look at you like, what? We're what? leaving these out, right? Mm -hmm. we yeah, yeah, don't okay. put them back in. Ooh, this one's going to be good. Feel it. Finally an easy one. Who has the worst temper? I was correct. This is the easiest one. Okay, worst temper. Scott? Mm. I'm going to go Riz. Learn. Riz. 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 <laughs> I have the worst temper. Yeah, Why did you pretend whoa, like whoa. you were thinking about it? <laughs> do you think it was that easy? Hey, hey. Hey. Okay. I thought right. this was just. Right. Who did you say? Learn. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm all fire. She is fire. She's second I've for seen sure. Flashes. That's yesterday with the printer situation. That's why I put learn. Somebody put my printed goods in the freaking recycling bin. I was about oh, to yeah. lose it, like Michael Douglas style. PC Logan. All right, here we go. Who would make the worst president? Oh. Who would make the worst president? <laughs> uh, King Scott. Learn. No, I'm, I'm saying my answer was King Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and proved your point immediately. Uh -huh. <laughs> Moon. Uh, Who'd you write down? Brave. King. King. Okay. And yours was learned. Learn, yes. Yeah. All right, one more time around. One more time around. God. It was hard. This is hard. So hard without giving... I like it. Reasons. I like it better, actually, because I, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to oh hear the God. excuse, man. Just well, on our World Compliments Day, we're playing the butt hurt game. Let's Who go. would not last long in solitary confinement? Oh, damn. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Moon. Learn. Rafe. Oh, King. Right. King? I went, yeah, I guess learn. You guess learn? No, I mean, I wrote it down. That's the right answer. <laughs> learn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love people. Too. Yeah. I th yeah, I Social think, butterfly. I think you pretty much said that. Yeah. I, and insane. I'm also clinically insane. insane. After, uh, after three hours. Dude, my worst nightmare. He would love it. All right. <laughs> you would probably kind of love it. I, yeah, would, love I would love it. it. You guys are both out. Yeah, yeah I think you I'm, guys I would would both love it. Fine. Love it at least for a while. And I think you'd handle it fine just because of the road stuff. I mean, that is solitary. Thank you. All right, who is the worst dressed right now? Take a good look around. Oh. Uh, oh. Hey, can I see your shoes, please, sir? Yeah, what kind of shoes King do you have Scott, on over you, there? Will you hold your, show me your feet? Give your Lake Michigan what's, what's hoodie from the... Oh. Okay, and uh, can I see your shoes there, uh, uh, Mr. These, Rizzuto? I got my Vans on. Okay. Can I see that one, one, one more time? One day I dress one more time. comfortable. Show me your slip-ons. We slip -ons. this dumb question. Okay, thank you. The one day I had too much maker's mark. We have I have this question. <laughs> okay. Oh Learn. god, I want to give an answer for king. this. King. King. I'm I also said king. Nice. I went Rafe. 
I went learn. I went Riz. <laughs> I went Riz. Is well, thank you shoes? guys. I can't tell you. I'm the I can't tell you, but I have a very specific answer. I can't tell you. It's, it's not a okay. Game. No talking. All right. No, no reasons. Talking. Dude. That was my turn. <laughs> yep. well, is it the shoes? Honestly, because I'm... Touch the butter even, button. No, yeah, come on, man. Is it the don't, shoes? Don't even talk. I can't tell you. He normally has on, like, cool wrangling shirts and boots that he picked today to wear like his dad wear. The day he was self-conscious about something, I mean... Normally, Scott is, like, the best dress on the show. I don't know what's happened to you today. He I'm phoned so it sorry. in today. Picked the wrong it's day. Right. Yo, can I say one? Nope. No, well, I know we have to change later. He picked me, which means I'm the worst dressed every, every day. day. <laughs> because I just <laughs> wear every day. <laughs> so, I got to go home with that on my conscience. <laughs> oh, we man. had this one last time, I we think. We were doing this twice. What, what was it? Because I won. Uh, who would sleep with so with somebody for money? Yeah, yeah we had that one last time. Yeah. I definitely won that one. <laughs> Rightfully <laughs> so. <laughs> Rightfully so. Okay. I, li I do like how we... We, we consider oh, winning damn. it. <laughs> damn, this one's going to hurt, guys. I don't Oh, man. Bring it. I don't care. You're not, you don't have to worry. We do. Who has the ugliest face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and no explanations. Oh, no explanations. Man, this, four, is gonna, this is going to burn the house down. Four five dude. letters. Four. Who has the ugly? The, the answer this is has gonna burn the house down. <laughs> this letter has four or five I think it's letters. For a commercial that's break. It. Okay. Okay. Can I? No. Who I has the ugly? Who disclaimer. has the ugliest face? Oh my Who God. has the ugliest face? And you, hey, hey, you need to look that person in the eye when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I like it. Damn, this is gonna this is gonna oh hurt. God. This is not yeah, gonna be fun for anybody. Here we go, uh, Rafe. Scott Rizzuto. Okay. I went Rafe. Wait, you got to look at him. You have a look You're at him. Look oh, at right him. at me. Oh, my God, no. Thank you. <laughs> King Scott. <laughs> Rafe. Two votes for the uggo. King Scott. Oh. Damn. Burr. Wow, the female on the show. <laughs> It's because I'm so jealous that of your hair. Hurt. Oh, that's no. 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 You broke the rules. No. It's because you think I'm ugly. I know. No. no. Broke you the rules. So no. Handsome. No. No, right, I love more. you all. One more from Scott. <laughs> Play fair, man. We got two. <laughs> two uggos. Yeah. Two uggos on the I'll show. Take it. The two ugliest, <laughs> unlovable <laughs> pieces of trash on the show. All right. Equally unlovable, unattractive. No. You both are very lovable. Let's see here. I hate this. Who is the biggest pervert? It's good to know. Everything I think oh. when I look in the mirror is Who's confirmed. the biggest pervert? Yeah. You also have to look this person in the eye. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like the looking in the eye. I think yeah, that really yeah. makes it more Yeah, fun. but then you followed it up with a rule break. The rule break. Hey, man, I'm mm. clinically insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, King Scott, who is the biggest pervert? I guess learn. Right on. <laughs> I think it's Rafe Williams. Mm. <laughs> I too believe it to be Rafe Williams. <laughs> I too believe it to be Rafe Williams. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Can I say myself? <laughs> no. 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 Uh man. Not you. Maybe secretly. Mm. He's pointing at I'm going to go you. I'm going to go learn. Oh. i got to go learn on that. Look me in the eye when you tell learn. me. Learn. I think you're it's closeted pervert Thank you. and not really that closeted. Yep. <laughs> All right. That was the last one? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't get to go twice. So let me go oh. one more. <clears throat> Here, this is it. This you're going to be end. ugly. you got to be kinky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Did we have this one last time? Let's see. Who would let you down at a time of need? We had something similar. Yeah. It's not that exact thing. We've Maybe had that. Other. I think it was who would take a bullet for you last time or who yeah, would that's, not that's take a bullet. Oh, yeah, that's a way. Yeah. Which is a very was, needy time. Who was most likely to steal something from you? Who was most likely to steal something from you? Huh. Learn. <laughs> yeah, again, again, this is a this is another tough one with Learn. That. <laughs> uh, uh Rafe. Lauren. Moon. <laughs> Rafe. Moon. <laughs> King. I'm going to change my answer now. Uh, I went learn. Look at me when you say I it. did. 
right. eye contact makes Look this at game me. so much worse. <laughs> Look at me when you say it. Okay. All right, that's it. Hey, we're. I feel like we're closer. I do too. That was great. Okay. All on the table. All right, uh, we have time for a couple emails. Uh, Rich at 1057thepoint.com or I gotta your instant feedback. Sorry, I got to dip out and schedule a part crest plastic surgery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you call one for me, too? Yeah, let's Thank go in together. Guys. See if they give us a, the, the deal. Uh, yeah. Emails brought to you by Kloss Furniture. Lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. With deepest sympathies to Riz, I want to inform him that the last remaining Chili's at the St. Louis airport says it's now permanently Oh, it's gone. Oh. Oh. No way. I know this was Riz's favorite Chili's, and I'm sure it will be missed. Oh, man. Bart. A, How the heck can As you... an amateur yelper, five stars. End of an era. Southwest egg rolls. Somebody I look into we that. upgrading the airport. Somebody this look into that. Help. Make sure. I lo Listen, I love microwaved airport food. Oh, yeah. So... That's that's a shame. At a reasonable I know cost. <laughs> one, uh, you know, one of those places turned into like the Blues Grill or something like that. It was a, now it's like Blue Steam Down. I think the one on the uh, in You're Terminal about Two. In the south, yeah, in the East yeah. Terminal. Uh, no, I thought that was something separate. You talking about like when you turn no, left? No, the Chili's in the Southwest Terminal. I think turned into like a Blues, like a Blues theme. Oh, so it's been closed a while. Eatery. Yeah, but I think there was one in the regular terminal. Oh, okay, I think okay, there okay. still is one in the regular terminal. Well, in, now it's gone, I guess. Terminal A, I believe. Yep. Uh, it was a good run. Indeed. Good morning, King Scott, Learn, Moon, and Rafe. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, everybody at Riz, okay. Oh, and yeah, Riz. Oh. Uh, I wanted to come on here and say that Action Figures by the 2SG is the greatest album of all time. It's the album of the year for sure. Is there going to be an album release party, King Scott? Riz, may I suggest the 2SG live at the Enterprise Center? It would sell out. How about we just do something small? In seconds. Well, let's, let's hear it out. Also, <laughs> to celebrate today, will there be a headline goo for the album release? I can't wait. Love the show. Three out of five stars. That's one thing at a time. Dude. <laughs> This is the best review. Thank you, Mother. Uh, this is very sweet of you. Yeah. Are you guys planning on playing a live show? Yeah. Benjamin. Yeah. We're working on that. So here comes the next tease, I guess. But yeah, yes. we have uh, nothing set up. No, we're working with Bert over there. In, uh, at, the, at, the, at the pageant. Yeah. So we'll or get Del something Moore. going. That's awesome. It's going to be big. It's going to be big. Enterprise, get ready. Okay. <laughs> Three or four nights, probably. Right. We'll, we'll see. On ice. Next. Good morning, team. Huge fan. I have an eight-hour layover at LAX on a Friday. I get in from Honolulu at 3.30 p.m. My Aww. next flight isn't until 1.40 a.m. Expecting oh, that I will get off the plane by 4.30. Is it worth it to leave the airport in L.A.? If so, what do I do? Eight Please hours. help. Yes. All I know about California is high taxes and inability to win a Super Bowl. Burn. Thanks. Team Riz member, Ben. That's a whole work day. Mm -hmm. I would say definitely leave the airport. Yeah, and we just talked about... The place to go to is Venice Beach. Go get in a sword fight or something. Take yeah. your clothes off and have get some in fun. a sword fight at, at Venice Beach. Yeah. So four thirty. He's that's traffic. That's, traffic. that's traffic -y time. LAX is not up by yeah, Hollywood. But it's you not got, up by Venice either. It's not far because you go. I mean, I guess there's a little bit. You have to do a little highway action. Figure but not out too much. Uh, you figure can take, out your math. You can take back roads. Yeah. Figure out your math that. and figure out your Uber times. If if you can, maybe hit a spot or two. There's a there's a there's uh, in and out right there. There's an in and out. Yeah, like yep. six blocks south. Del Taco's down there by the airport. At least get the food. All yeah. I know is if you sit in LAX for eight hours, you're going to be bummed that you're sitting in LAX. Yeah, yeah. and you're not, honestly, you're not that far from the beach. And you shouldn't have Manhattan's too much. Manhattan's there. You shouldn't have too much traffic issue coming back late at night. His flight don't take off till 140, so he's boarding at yeah, 110. Yeah, you got to be back. No, it'll be easy. You got to be back at the airport by midnight. Yeah, but, right. but, and, but it's not going to be issue. Uh, and uh, the Uber, traffic. there is an Uber lot. So you have to now take a shuttle to that thing. So that could be a little bit. But if I wonder if there's a if you have a buddy or something in town, I'd call them see if they can swing by and grab you. Math it out. Good luck. Don't miss your flight. Next, listening to the podcast from today, and you guys were talking about weird food combos. Try putting easy cheese, which is that's the spray, right? Mm -hmm. Easy cheese on an Oreo. It tastes like that cheesecake. Disgusting. It tastes <laughs> just like a cheesecake and has no business tasting like that's it. Do, disgusting. Do not knock it till you try it, Riz. Really? Brennan. I try it. Easy cheese on an Oreo. Yep. I'm a freak. Yeah. No. I'm into it. You just put it on sugar. It's going to be. It's gross. Taste yummy okay. probably. Next. Morning, fellas and learn. Morning. Loyal podcast weirdo writing in from Indiana. I had to get my wisdom teeth out a few weeks ago. When I got there, they placed the nitrous oxide or laughing gas on my nose, gave me shots of Novocaine, and left it to the Novocaine to kick in. While I was waiting, I had AirPods, so I decided to put on the Riz Shell podcast. I have to say, you guys are always funny, but with laughing gas, you are hilarious. I don't remember what you were talking about, but it was so great. I was trying not to LOL. Once they started working on my teeth, I had to switch to music to not laugh while they were working, just uh, just as they were yanking the first tooth out. And then a Goldfinger song came on. 
Thank you all for helping me through uh, the wisdom tooth extraction. And even with no laughing gas, you guys are great. Do they do the... Uh, great. I haven't had that in a long time. Mm -mm. I don't what? think I've ever had laughing gas. Oh, dude, it's the best. Nitrous? It's so... Yeah, it's is awesome. That the, I would like to have it. I don't know if it. I've had that. I had a couple times. The first time I had it, I was uh, like eight or nine years old, and... Uh, and they, they didn't want to give me a shot, so they mixed it with, like, Gatorade or something. Or not Gatorade, uh, grape juice. And um, they gave me something, like, loosening pill. Then I drank that stuff, and, man, I just remember the room started spinning. And my dad got this big old grin on his face, and he said that he was telling jokes the whole way, and I was just hysterically laughing yeah, up and I, down I, the my, hall. My uh, childhood dentist, Dr. Marvin, had the uh, the nitrous. And they mm. put the little thing over your nose. And yeah. I just remember they, they put the... Yeah, and you go, whoa! And I and just remember, gone. like, the, the, the dentist going, oh, he's loud. Look at him. He can't stop smiling. And you're, <laughs> oh, you're away from your body. That's cool. That's I have fun. no idea what's happening. It's, I'm it's, so high. It's an out-of-body experience. We need a dentist to come here so we can have a show like this where we try it during the whole show. Yeah. I'm, I'm down. Sign me okay. up. I want to live here at the dentist with this. <laughs> you guys get afraid this. of, like, going under for things, like a surgery and stuff. Like, I have a couple of friends who get, like, really freaked out. But I've never been freaked out. I don't know what my problem is. Well, I, for surgery? I, I just have to yeah. block it out because I start... Psychopath. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I start thinking I what, what happens saying. if the power shuts down in the building, everyone has to leave, and I'm... While you're this, under? No, no, but like before you start, you know, you think about those things like what happens during surgery if this was mm -hmm. to be the case? I like, don't think any of that stuff. Yeah, I don't... See, I need to that. quit thinking those things. Dude, I used to... Uh, generators. I had a bunch of surgeries as a kid, and I used to... I, it, it didn't phase me at all. I thought it was actually kind of cool. I was like, ah, whatever. Yeah. And the older I got, the last time I had a, what, what was a colonoscopy, and they put you out yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. And I will say that was the first time I got like kind of freaked out, and I think it was like a vulnerability thing. It was like a dude... Anything could happen, and I and I don't have a I bit mean, of control. And your butt's out. It, it, the worst yeah, thing is and already I'm, happening. Yeah, and you, I'm like, you know what's like happening. Yeah, going yeah. in, you know they're going. Yeah, it was no big deal. I, but I'm just like I'm, I'm admitting that it was it was the first time that I got kind of freaked out about it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. I freak out more about because I worked. I was a surgical tech when I got out of the army, and I've seen people wake up. I worry oh, about that's like that's a nightmare. Because oh, I'm like, you start, you start what kind of? Off. I'm a comedian, and if I'm out of my, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm scared of what outlandish trash I'm going to talk coming yeah, out of that. Yeah. yeah, dude. When I had coma. my when I had my nose shattered and I came out from that, I don't remember this, but the period in which I first came out, apparently I was screaming across the way yeah. about my vasectomy. Man, and I was like, <laughs> I was telling the doctor like, Hey, if you need a number for a good vasectomy, just text me. Like I was, I was, yeah. <laughs> and this is like a recovery room. This is like twelve people in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm screaming across the room. I had no idea. Johnny Venus told me I was just. Oh no! Yeah, listen, we've had screaming. stories of people waking up in the middle of surgery. Yeah. And that's and you can't move. No. Mm -hmm. We like would, You can't move. Yeah. And, we don't don't talk about that. What are you? Yeah. With yeah. the yeah. eyebrows. Yeah, put it in that's, the subconscious. That's a, uh, that's a uh -uh. think about this. No. With, whenever you get into cataract, some folks they, you know, they could try all the they want to go under, but they there's like a very mild. You don't actually go under for that, but you're pretty much there at yeah. that level. And, but some folks are completely awake the whole time, and they're talking, and they're like, "Hey, can you put on this song?" It's like, Dude, "What? Don't move? Keep listen." Still. As a redhead, you got to worry about that redhead dread. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Well, then it takes That's double. Pick my hair because it's super the, powerful. Uh, double the anesthesia <laughs> to put you guys yeah. out. That's so cool. That like triple it's if just you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, one more. Okay, you guys are all well traveled, and you have the best recommendation recommendations. Myself and a friend are making a road trip out to Branson in a few weeks, and we're looking for things to do on the way. While we're there, we're definitely hitting up Silver Dollar City, but I don't know. Uh, we don't have much else planned, and I don't know what to do. We're taking our time getting there, so anything cool along the route would be awesome. Leaving from St. Louis, can't wait to see you on Saturday. A. A. Ron. Yeah, right. I'm not your person for that. I go to the Bass Pro Shop. Well, remember we talked about the Fudge Factory. Yep. Uh, you got oh, the Uranus Fudge Factory. You got the Fudge Factory. And then that down. new gas station, Bucky's open down mm -hmm. there. Bass Pro, which is on... Uh, in Springfield. Uh, yeah, in, in Springfield. Was that a battle... Not, not Battlefield. Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely visit that. They yeah, got a music. sunshine down is to Campbell. Kind of. Yeah, because you go... It's like just, 10 minutes out of the way. You're going to go down 65. You'll see sunshine. You just shoot across for about 10 minutes, and you're there at Bass Pro. Yeah, you got a museum there. I mean, just the shop alone is, is yeah. cool as heck. Right, on the way to Branson, learn. I, I honestly don't got anything for you. I mean, I, I just I just get either. to Branson, and then I just, like, get a big cooler full of beer. I just got to Branson, and I go, why did I go here? Yeah. No, dude. So <laughs> okay. City. It's the best. Rules, dude. I've gone so often. Like, Tim's oh. family, they love to go. So, I mean, I'm privileged that I get to go all the time. But, man, I'm burnt out on Branson. Yeah, and go to Groupon and get a ton of... Uh, 
cheaper tickets for everything. Yeah, uh, you, you yeah. got the Titanic Museum. Rafe's gonna you give it to us. All that fun stuff. Yeah, I think the. I know when I drive down there, a fun. This is something that not everybody does too. It's kind of off the beaten path. Is right before you get into Branson, hang a hard right and drive to Las Vegas. <laughs> right there, you go. Yeah, that's a very good point. And maybe stop at a Taco John's. Yeah, we'll see you in April. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun in Branson. Have fun in Branson. Hey, dude. It is a good. It is a nice place. Have fun. We have. We only went once. We've only been to Branson yeah. once. I seriously go every year. And we we shack up at a you know VRBO and. We're, we get a, here's what you do. Get a pontoon boat and go have a really good time. Get an yeah. inner tube and just go tubing. What lake is it? Beaver? Beaver Lake. We were thinking about going up to Big Cedar. Oh, Heck yeah. yeah, man. Johnny, over, uh... Over uh, Johnny Morris' place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were thinking about going over spring break because we're not really going anywhere. And I've heard good Dang. things about that. If you're a golfer, a great golf course up there. Nice like places. <sighs> but really? Nice facilities. Uh, you know, we Save really seriously thought about it. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> like I... For the worst. We're ready to pull the trigger on it. And I, I seriously went, ah, Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. It's, there's a lot You could there. do the, um, what's the Bateman show? Um, Ozark. Ozark. Yeah, there's like tours. You can go see where they they took some of the Again, locations. No way. There's they didn't a, film a bar. It, did they? They filmed in Atlanta. They filmed in Atlanta, but they have like, um, they did some filming in Brandon. Yeah, they did the outdoor stuff, right? Because the, there's a bar there that you can go to that's featured in that show, right. allegedly. Um, Apple, it's called Applebee's? It's Applebee's. Yeah. About an hour away, for real, you could go to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, which is a cool little town. Ooh, yeah, haunted yeah, house. It's not that far. It's very haunted. It's got a lot of cool little... Uh, it's very... It's very... Uh, she would love it. It's very Wiccan. It's a very cool little town... It's got like haunted hotels. It's got like nice. And it's cool. It's, it's cool. Everywhere you walk, you're gonna bounce. It's got like all of these uh, all the springs. springs that'll. Yeah. Oh god. You know where you should go. I, that's it. That's where Scott Wings. He thought it was all trampolines. You should drive. I thought. <laughs> seemed cool. Two hours away. Go to the Ha Ha Tonka ruins. You no, know, three oh, yeah. hours. Dude, away. That state park is great. And just stay there. Yeah, it's yep. a great. And go see that mansion that burned down and the history and all. Trout that. is open this week. That has opened it up. All right. Let's Let's Bennett go Springs. Yeah, we got, yeah. you got plenty of options. Bennett Springs is cool, man. Yeah. They're going to have a good time. Cancel and just stay home. Right, we got to take one final break. We'll come back. We'll wrap her up. Thank you for your emails. All right, it's Riz. It's Jeff Burton backstage at Point Fest with Eric and Jeff from Stone Temple Pilots. All right, how you doing today? You Good, seem, how are you? You seem like uh, you're like a morning radio show. We're all a amped lot up of, on caffeine. Did you know I do a morning radio I show? Do? Yeah. All right. And a lot of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, good morning. Actually, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. It's kind of morning. That's why I'm to commenting me, yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, so how have the show's been so far? I mean, I mean, Jeff's the new guy. So, Mount Top Motor Company, MountTopMotors.com is where you should go right now and check out their incredible lineup of vehicles. And a thing that I do love about Mount Top Motor Company is uh, actually what I love about you all is that you guys keep going out there in droves. And yesterday, I had this amazing truck. It was a 2020 Ford F-150 XLT, and I got to drive it for about a day or two, and uh, people got wind of it, I guess, because uh, I got to return it, switch out vehicles, and this thing is absolutely beautiful. It's only got 49,000 miles on it, and it's only 34, a little over $34,000. It's absolutely amazing truck, completely loaded, and I, I really miss it already, and I only got to drive it a couple days, but I know you got to go test drive it. It's, it's worth your time to go out to Mount Top Motor Company because they have just an incredible lineup. If you're looking for cars, SUVs, TVs, pickups, vans, whatever you're in the, the mood for, go over there and test drive them. And they got a lot of great cars for under 15 grand. So head over to mounttopmotors.com, check out that incredible lineup of vehicles, and you'll find out why they have over a thousand five star reviews because they're the best of the best. That's Mount Top Motor Company, mounttopmotors.com. And if only you could make a deal with God I know what he'd places Been running up that road Been running in my heels Been running on the buildings And those places If only could That was Kate W. Bush running up the hill
All right, so uh, I got the uh, the gig of the day here today, like no doubt about it. We are here with uh, the guys from the Revivalists mm -hmm. and Becca, our grand prize winner. We are here at Music Record Shop, and what we get to do today, Record Shop. <laughs> to point out one of the all-time great record title names by Ween, 12 Golden Country Greats. Oh, that features there the are, song. Uh, uh, there, are features, ten, there are 10 songs on this album. But it features the classic <laughs> Piss Up a Rope, which uh, is like an amazing freaking song. That I have that record. That is a really, yeah. really great record. Good stuff. And I'm not even the biggest of Ween. I, and I don't get all the yeah. Ween stuff. Normally that's like my brother's thing, but that one I just I'm a I big love yeah. They, they they got some they got some great songs too. I love that this store has Angel Olsen and Roy Orbison together because oh. when I first started listening Should to Angel Olsen, I was like, this reminds me of Roy Orbison. Yeah. And I yeah I just love her records. I think I mean and in general and Roy Orbison as well. This is coming home with me. This is one of my all-time favorite records. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots by the Flaming Lips. It's a masterpiece. Do you realize one of my favorite songs of all time? I need this on vinyl. This is this has become a part of my collection. And that's one that you got at JewelryNinjabling.com, the exclusive jeweler of the wrist show. You know, we talked about yesterday uh, how this is um, this is an experience that once you once you see how it rolls, once you go in there and feel like how different Moritz Royce experience is than any other thing that you've ever experienced before with like mall jewelers or street level jewelers, you just go, wow, oh my gosh, this is this is something worth driving to. And that's why people come from all over the country. Oh, even like go, Chicago. Yeah, to go to go to Moritz Royce. Because once you discover that this is how you can uh, make sure that you have a unique piece, a lifetime piece that you and your spouse or whoever you're giving it to uh, absolutely loves, you don't go anywhere else. Yeah, you know it's funny is John, you know when he says, "Yeah, I, you know, I had a had a had a customer from Chicago come down." And it's so funny. You don't think they have jewelry stores in Chicago? Yeah, there's just a couple 2 3 up there and on the way down, but, I'm sure. But think about that. They come all, you know, 5 hours down to Yeah. to see John or Dan or any one of the staff up there more towards Cuz there's nothing else like it. Right. Nothing like it. The experience is like no other. Make an appointment. Go to ninjabling.com. Get the phone number. Get the address. Make an appointment. They've been around for 40-plus years now. It's Morris Rose Jewelry, the official jeweler of the Riz Show, where you get the jewels and not the shaft. Joined by C there. Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you, and thank you for being here with us. Uh, you know, the first thing I want to bring to your attention, and I'm sure that you guys don't keep track of this because you have way bigger things to do, but this is your sixth point fest, all right? Out of the 30-some-odd awesome. that we've done, you've done six of them. Not to mention birthday shows, Christmas shows. While other rock bands have kind of gone by the wayside, you guys have just been a constant core artist for us. I was looking last night, we have played like 26 different Seether songs in the history of our career, you know, and your career Thanks, and man. our career as well. You have just been such an important part of the station as the alternative format goes left and we stay rocking. You yeah, guys yeah. have been a really big part of that. And I just, as the music director of the radio station, just wanted to say thank you. And I'm sorry, Sean, if you're That's getting fine. eaten alive uh, by something I'm, I'm, over there. I'm making my acquaintance with the local wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, have, I mean, you guys are celebrating 20 years this year. Is it, yeah. that, that's a really impressive feat. How, you know, many bands that have been successful still don't make it 20 years. How have you guys been able to do that? I mean, heating, cooling, energy experts, world-class service, 40-plus years, by the way. And uh, they can do it all. They can do it all. And I've seen it. I've had them in my house to do repairs on my system. I've had them in my house to completely uh, replace uh, certain parts. You know, it was an older house, so the uh, water heater needed replacing. I became a hero with that. Thank you, Antons. Uh, and then uh, recently they were over on the maintenance program just checking out, making sure everything was good, just seeing if there was a tune-up needed and all that. And they found a big old crack in my old, outdated uh, furnace. And thank goodness because that could have, uh, it, it could have filled the house with carbon monoxide, could have burst into flames, could have done all sorts of things. Thank God I was on the maintenance plan with Anton's and they came over and they found that. So now I have a new furnace and it's making all the difference. Right now you can get a combined AC and furnace tune-up for only 129 bucks. Show your system some love. Go with the best of the best. That is Anton's. They are truly incredible. I know you see those beautiful green uh, trucks and vans out there. They're like warehouses on wheels. They say Anton's. So have them over to your place. Call them now. Anton's Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Energy Experts. You can even schedule your service right there at Anton'sHVAC.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-S-H-V-A-C.com.
So let's start off with an easy one. Okay. You have this incredible career with Everclear. Right. Made all of these records. You've had, I would think, multiple opportunities to do like a solo record. But you're going to put out a solo record for seemingly the first time in your career. For not seemingly the first time. The first time in your career. Why now? Well, I mean, you know as well as I do that Everclear has been my baby from the beginning. Yeah. It's my thing. So it, it, as far as doing a rock band situation, I never felt really a need to do a solo record. I tried to do one once, and it turned into an Everclear record. And... Uh, I wanted this to be different. I wanted this to be just me playing everything. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly acoustic guitar, a, a acoustic bass, some keyboards, some drums, not drums on every song. Uh, I play, sing all the vocals. I play all the instruments. Co-produced it with a friend of mine who's a great engineer, producer. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very raw. It sounds like almost, it sounds like an Everclear meets... Cat Stevens meets Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Oh, wow. But with uh, some Elvis Costello in there. All right. I like it. I look yeah. forward to that. One of the reasons that I've always liked you and liked your band mm -hmm. is because there was always this sort of punk sensibility yeah. on those sort of, and not only a punk sensibility in the music, but you as well sort of have a little bit of that punk rock swagger. Absolutely. I've always had that. I've always seen myself in the punk rock aesthetic. Well, but your you buddies with mean? like Jim Lindbergh from Pennywise and yeah. those guys, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We're I don't mean to name drop. No, no, no. We're all suburban dads, you know, right. that live in Southern California that all grew up with a lot of the same music. Um, you know, they, they went a lot more punk rock than I did. I'm older than those guys, so, you know, I, I there's more of a sense of melody to it um, as, far as, as, as far as I'm concerned. But, I mean, underlying, I've always looked at Everclear as a punk slash hard rock band with a singer-songwriter. That's yeah. what we are. Well, that, absolutely. And, and it's not, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel, but it's unique in its own right. Uh, and that's what we are. Yeah, agreed. There are some artists that we have that will play our Wayback show and will not want us to use the phrase way back when we're kind of speaking of them. Oh, okay. You, on the other hand, you do the Summerland Festival. You embrace that. Why not? Yeah, I, I, that's kind of more my question for you. You know what I mean? Like, why do you think some other artists have, like, a hard time? Like, just people like it. No, they're coming out to see you no matter what it's called. No one, a lot of people, especially people who feel a little insecure about where they are in the world, in my experience, seem to think that if they embrace any, any kind of, um, what's the word you want to use for it? Um, any kind of affection or acknowledgement of the old days um, that it, it me means that they're not relevant today. And to me, we, 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 de we define our own relevance as people and as, as artists and everything. I feel relevant. I go out and play to people who are singing the words and who are excited to see it and are paying money to see it and it's value to them. That's a big deal. It's not just the money. It's not making the money, but that people will spend the money and they feel like they're getting value for it. Are you a dad? Yes, I am. So am I. Yeah. I'm a family guy. It's not hard to have a. It's not easy to have a family. No sir. You want to find value wherever you go. I'll spend good money if I get the value for it. If it's worth what I'm paying for it, and if I feel that that's what we're giving to people, whether it's some sort of nostalgic trip or. It's connecting with a part of themselves that they haven't felt connected to in a long time. What the hell is not relevant about that? Right. That's how I feel. About Absolutely. It. And one question in closing, and I hope that it's all right for me to sure. ask you this, but how is your, how's your health uh, overall? You mean the MS? The, the MS, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm doing okay. About two months ago, uh, actually two and a half months ago, I got an offer from this doctor who writes these nutrition books and bestsellers, and he, uh, he has worked with people with um, autoimmune diseases such, and a lot. Entered by better help. Now, we wish, we all wish we had more time in the day. Just give me one more hour. Now, what would you do with that hour? What's important to you? You should be important to you. You know, therapy could help you find what matters to you. And uh, whatever it is, maybe you could do more of it. And as somebody who's benefited from therapy, talking to somebody can help and help you find the best version of yourself. And it doesn't matter if you've suffered from something traumatic or, hell, you just want to chat with a third party. Get something off your chest. 
If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp, it's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and flexible and designed to be on your schedule. And guys and gals, it couldn't be easier. Go to betterhelp.com slash Riz. You fill out a quick questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. Now, if you're not happy with who you're matched with, seriously, it's not a big deal. Switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Riz today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Riz. All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. Uh, hope to see a lot of you at Rish Show Live tomorrow night. We're going to uh, leave here and head down to rehearsals. Mm -hmm. uh, today's wrap-up, sponsored by... Sponsored by Jack in the Box, Jack Wraps. A little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence, only at Jack. Uh, all right, so what's uh, today's podcast title? Today's podcast is titled, A Guy, A Dog, and No Dong. Okay. Yep, uh, talked about that today. Yep. All right, what else for you? Uh, yeah, a new uh, Story of the Gear episode is coming out with uh, Dan Jacobs from Atreyu. Hell of a guitar player. Has maybe the coolest custom guitar collection I've ever seen in my life. He has one that was designed to look like a bento box filled with sushi. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's neat. amazing. You're not going to want to miss the uh, this episode. It's like an hour long, too, because we just talked about cool. everything guitar, and he Atreyu. nerded it out. He's such a good dude, such a good band. Uh, and such a good guitar player. Check that out. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, just pageant website or the Point website for Can You Feel the Punk Tonight uh, tickets. That's coming up May 11th. we got a 3 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. show, uh, and we were rehearsing for that uh, this week, and holy smokes, is it going to be fun. We added like four or five bangers. Nice. Disney bangers. All right. All right. A whole new world. <laughs> uh, learn. I'm just going to promote what my mom has texted me. <laughs> she says... Uh, this was earlier. Oh, my God. King Scott is the cutest. I am so ashamed of you, Lauren. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, wow. Jill, I love you. Hugs, hugs, She's hugs, right. hugs. And then I said, who would you have picked, Mom? And then she said, nope, not going there. And I go, Mom, you have to pick. And she says, I refuse. Wow. My mother will be on the at show, show Live tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, can I critique there. the game? Unless you play Unless the game. Play the game. Jill, That's right. Jill's on fire tomorrow. Anyway, I love you, uh, Mom. Wait till, uh, wait till you see Jill's part tomorrow on the show. Yeah, Ooh. just wait. Notice, didn't argue me getting picked. <laughs> <laughs> Equally amount of times. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Rafe, what else? Uh, I'll, you guys, I'm going to schedule my plastic surgery for next weekend, but... <laughs> I had to move it because I actually have uh, shows in Denver next weekend. Sweet. So if you're in Denver, uh, come out to the Comedy Lounge. I have a couple Don't Tell Comedy shows. You can go on the Don't Tell Denver website. I will be headlining uh, all of those. So uh, come out in Denver and try to look away. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Scott. <laughs> yeah, follow me on socials, King Scott Rules, because I just dropped a brand new album. And uh, hopefully, it's for some reason, we have Spotify issues, but it should be up on Spotify some point. But it's everywhere else, I think. So... Uh, check that out. It's called Action Figures from the 2SG. All right. Can't you Scott. call it? Can't you call it your label and like have him sort out that that Spotify stuff? Yeah. He's on major label records. Let me call. Hold on, my phone's ringing. Oh good. All right. Wait. Oh I wait. Get, I gotta get out of here. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. What I'm, time's I'm lunch? calling the label. Hold on, my phone's I got ringing stuff again. To do, and then we gotta leave. No, I know. What <laughs> time do you want to go to lunch? Is what I'm. Whenever thinking. I'm done with the uh, with the, once Scott is done plugging nonsense. <laughs> 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 hey, there's a download the new 2SG record. Here. It was called there's a new 2SG record, record right around the corner, 2028. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guys, keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we leave you with a selection from our teamers. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shot, St. Louis home for Blues Hockey from Dupo, Illinois. Nathan Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.